I'm actually somewhat surprised this is the first time this has happened. Well, it's not the first time it's happened. It's happened before, but in this particular way. So at the end of um, Assorted Ramblings, which you probably didn't see because it's seven, almost eight hours long, um, at the end of that video, I set up another video that was supposed to be this video, right? I set up uh, like, uh, oh, brand new arc incoming, but... Uh, well, I tried to film some stuff yesterday that was going to be that video, and it just turned out terrible, like it was just unwatchable. Uh, but, I mean, if it's... For a video by me to be said, <laughs> if I'm saying for one of my videos that it's that bad, just no. It basically, various things went wrong in the production of that video. I didn't plan it out well enough. I wasn't in the right... Things went wrong, let's just say that. So... The Adventures of Thaddeus Black is on hold. It will happen eventually, but it's on hold for a while until I get my shit sorted. I cut my hair for it and everything. Well, I need, I, need, I needed a haircut anyway, so I look much better with my hair like this. <clears throat> anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So that's so we're just doing more of this. <laughs> we're just doing more extreme lo-fi long form uh, for now. Which I think is a good way to do things. I don't have a problem with that. I don't need... I, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's fine. I, I think I was premature. I think I was premature with my abandonment. Premature abandonment. I mean, it will happen eventually. I just need to think my stuff through better and reshoot it and everything because it was, oh, it was just bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh... But yeah, that should be coming, hopefully. But yeah, so this is the this is one of the first, the only few times where I've had to say sorry. Thing that I said was see, like I I fucked up videos before, where like even back to the early days of the channel, I fucked up videos before, and then had to scrap them. But I've never done it where I announced a video was gonna happen and then it didn't happen. That's new. That's the first time, and I'm surprised it's the first time. Normally, I don't announce things before they happen. Unless they're already in the late stages of development. This is clearly on me. Shouldn't have done what I did. Uh, that's about all I had to say in this clip. All books should be named like light novel titles. Idiots like Gigguk like to make fun about how light novel titles are bad. No. They make the most sense when you're marketing to an autistic audience. Let's take a book, for example, of mice and men. That book isn't about mice. That book's about, that book should be called, that time me and my buddy were in the Great Depression and he accidentally killed someone. <laughs> or something like that, you know? Then I know what I'm getting into. Then I actually fucking, like, if I, read, if I didn't know what, if Mice and Men wasn't a famous book, I didn't know what it was about, and I just saw it in the bookshop, and it was just by a new publisher just came out today. There's no fucking universe where I'm picking that shit up. I have no idea what it is. I have no idea what it is. I'm not going to, oh, Of Mice and Men. I'm not even going to be interested enough to pick up the book and read the blurb, right? Because it's just got a nonsense title. And that's how all fucking books are. That's how all things are. That's how movies are, everything. But what is, you know, what's a movie? Uh... Avengers Endgame. If I don't know what the Avengers are, it's just nonsense to me. Avengers, that has nothing to do with Iron Man. Even just, like, none of it, it's all fucking nonsense. But, but, I don't know. Uh, I can't think of any titles right now. As soon as you have to think about things, you can't think about things. This is a, this is a well-known fact. I don't know. Moby Dick. I don't know what Moby Dick is, unless you already know what Moby Dick is. Like, it doesn't tell you anything about the book. None, none of this tells you anything about the book. How am I supposed to know what I'm getting into before I get into it if all these titles are nonsense? Neon Genesis Evangelion. Bruh, what the fuck? <laughs> Just tell me what the show's about. You know what's a good title? The result from when I time leaped to my second year of high school and confessed to the teacher I liked at the time. The, oh, I'm going to read about the result from when this guy time leaped into a second. Okay, now I know what I'm fucking getting into. Now I'm interested in the book. Now, I probably am not that interested in that book. That seems a little bit not that interesting. But 
at least it's got a title that tells me some information, right? Like when you read an academic text, all things should be like this, right? Like when you read an academic text, they're not titled nonsense that isn't related to the fucking content. You read an, like an academic text and it's called, like it's like, I don't know, I can't, like, you know, like, the title pertains to what's in the fucking document. It's not just random words. It's not just random words. Like, some of them is okay. Like, some books get halfway there. Like, I don't know, uh, Harry Potter. Well, it's about Harry Potter. It's about a guy called Harry Potter. But I would like... Okay, like, okay, the, the, this, this sort of title, like Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, like, stuff like that, or, like, uh, there's many type of things that are kind of written with a similar style of title. That's better than normal, because at least I know this book is about a guy called Harry Potter who enters a Chamber of Secrets at some point, and his relation to the Chamber of Secrets. That's interesting. Like, it's not that good, because it's not very detailed. I would rather it was a bit longer... Maybe fill it in with a bit more information. And you only need to do that for the first book in the series. Because after that, you know, you just... Everyone already knows. But if no one already knows, give me some fucking information in the title, right? Like, that's a that's a decent name. It's not a very good book, but it's a decent name, right? Most books, complete fucking bollocks. Let me see, what's this? What's this on the ground? See, this is good. This is a good book. The Quantum Universe. Everything that can happen does happen. See, that, I know, now I'm like, okay, this is the book thesis statement. It says it right on the front of the cover. I now know what that book is about. I'm sure I've got more books. What's this? I feel a thick one. Holy shit. What is this going on? Atlas of the Skies. I wonder what's in here. Oh, it's an Atlas of the Skies. That's how books should fucking be. What's this, though? <laughs> The Emerald Atlas by the Book of the Beginnings. Bro, what the fuck is this? The Emerald... This is a kid's book from when I was a kid. Look, you can see the font's really big. This is what they do when they want to entice kids to who want to seem smart. They make big hardcover books that look thick, but their font's really big. So it makes you feel like you're reading a real book, but really you're still a child. Um, like, that's a bullshit name. All of those are bullshit names. Just have a name that describes what you're, what you need. Have a name that describes what's in the book, and don't make fun of light novels for being the only people who have fucking figured this shit out. There's advantages and disadvantages to being. Uh, maybe that's not the best way to start this thought. Um. Hmm. How do I begin this? I'll try. I'll try this again. When me, me, no, thank you. Doesn't have a consistent identity. This is one known fact about me, right? I am only defined by being in a state of flow and flux and movement. This is something about me that can be framed as a positive, but is also framed as a negative. Even my mental illness is bipolar, defined by switching. I can't even be dedicated to being depressed. <laughs> like, you know, like that sort of thing. Like, if there's a one thing I am, it's completely changing. And this is positive in a number of ways, but it's also negative. It means that I have no dedication to things, that I can't stick with something for a long time. Um, like, there's a million examples. I can't make music in the same style for a long time, or even listen to the same genre of music for a long time. I can't dedicate myself to a craft over many years. It will After a few years, I just move on from it. It starts to lose its appeal, no matter what it is, pretty much. Um, I am just constantly 
not solid. I'm not a solid thing. There's nothing about me as solid, and it leads me to be very confused about who I am. Um, but instead of caring about that, I just essentially cope by being hyper aware of the fact that there's nothing solid about it. Sometimes I get a little, sometimes I'm, I have a little existential about it. Like when I'm like, who am I, man? Who am I deep down? But then whenever I start thinking about that for any length of time, I always come to the same conclusion, which is that it doesn't, it either doesn't matter or doesn't exist. It's just, or like basically the idea that the problem, the, the question doesn't make sense in the first place. Um, maybe from like a later Wittgenstein type of type of position. Uh, but sometimes that rears its head in strange ways where I'm like, yeah, just just completely inconsistent as a human being just go through weird phases but never there's nothing stable the only stable thing about me is my room really even that sometimes changes but this is the most stable thing probably in my life and it's not that stable yeah nothing about me is static and yeah I think maybe that's possibly the biggest, I don't really know how other people work, but maybe that's the biggest thing that's different about me compared to other people, is that I have very little about me as static. And this is not, yeah, this is definitely not, like, it has its positive sides. It ha definitely has its positive sides. I think I don't even need to come up with examples, because you can probably think of them yourself. But, um... It also has its negatives, and I'm not sure if I like it right now. Sometimes I feel like it's good, but right now I'm not sure if I like it. I'm not sure if I'm enjoying being me's, being the collection of fictions colloquially called No Thank You. I just had to dig through my fucking skin. I just realized how much of a terrible idea this was. But I didn't have a choice. Look, you can see how inflamed. No, you can't. Only I can see. Only I can see. I had to dig through my skin. I had to literally dig through my skin. I had to get tweezers and dig through my dig into my skin to take take out something that was under there. But I did it. It took it out. But now I have a hole in me where I dug. I had to do that. I had to peel off epidermal layers and such like. But it didn't bleed. There's no blood. Only a dead outside of my skin. I can feel all the bacteriums rushing in. They're all. They're all like, oh shit. Guys, it's time to it's time to um time to go in, and they're all heading in there now, and that's that's where it all goes wrong in the beginning. I wish I was cool like everyone else, but instead I'm just someone who wishes they were cool, which is one of the main disqualifiers from being cool like everyone else. Everyone else is cool effortlessly. I'm not, I'm I'm only stuck here wishing I was cool. Uh, that's what bans me from being cool. It's like how in real life, it should be that as soon as you want to be a politician, you should be banned from being a politician, right? Like, that's how real life should work. In real life, when you're cool, you're just, that's you. Unlike me, who's not. I don't know if I experience emotions anymore, I just simply have flow states in various directions. Not really concrete enough to notify sadness or melancholy. I think there's cats fighting outside.
They're not meant to be here. They're supposed to be back in the savannah. Just like me. Just like my spine. Supposed to have never left. Maybe best never to have been. Much like cats. I actually don't think cats live very good lives. This is something that I've thought for a while. I think being a cat is basically torture. I, like, I don't think cats have... What the fuck is going on, bro? Why are they so loud? It's like 4 a.m. I'm fucking still tired, but I can't sleep. And now I'm never going to be able to sleep because of a screaming cat. This is a classic no thank you moment. Cats screaming when you try and sleep in. <sighs> now I've got people trying to do things. What's people trying to do? I think cats live a terrible life because their brains aren't, aren't working. Do you know what cats spend most of the time doing? pretending to hunt they just go around doing the first little like basically miming hunting this isn't the case for adult cats of any other species except for domesticated cats they just spend their whole time dem like pretending to hunt because they still have all these instincts like hunting instincts but they don't need to hunt anymore because they're domesticated, so they just go around pretending. And they probably don't know why they're doing it. It's probably really fucked up for them. Plus, cats aren't really supposed to be social animals at all. The, the cats that, that we domesticated became less territorial and more accepting of other cats nearby. But not by like still not enough not like dogs are like two dogs meet each other they'll just become friends if you have to introduce a new cat it takes like weeks for them like cats don't like each other they're not social animals so they're always getting in fights and apparently there's these really complex cat gangs essentially cat street gang mafias where who, who are just extremely violent and territorial with strict higher up, like, anarchists love the idea of cats because they see them as independent. They don't realize that cats are literally fascists. So yeah, anyway, I don't feel emotions anymore. <laughs> Earlier today, I accidentally clicked on a YouTube, um... Uh, I guess it was like a compilation, like an official compilation from the TV show Porn Stars, the one about, uh, you know, the one, uh, it was a meme a few years ago. I've never actually seen it, so this was a fascinating experience for me, because it's, it's I was like, wow, this is, this is like avant-garde cinema <laughs> it's so fucking weird why would you watch I don't understand well it's not that I don't understand I understand how it's entertaining that's the thing but I don't understand how it's entertaining to, m to most people how is this how is this what has wide appeal you know you know Right? There's things I say too much. Right? You know? How does it, how does it have white... Like, how is the concept of watching people... Okay, so there's a suspension of disbelief, right? That's when you... You know that fiction isn't real. But you pretend that you don't know that. So that you can enjoy the story. And experience an emotional truth to the story. Right? That's a suspension of disbelief. But with reality TV, the acting is so bad and everyone knows it's fake, right? 
but there's an extra layer of suspension of disbelief. Not only do you pretend that you don't think, not only do you pretend that you think it's real, you pretend that it, you don't know that it's a story, but you also pretend that you're not pretending, which is, that's like a next level. You also, like, you, you, you really are trying to believe that it's real, even though you know it's not real, but you're just, layering suspensions above each other hanging in some sort of delicate pattern and this is what's so interesting is you think oh well if it's such a delicate balance to have such a complex layers of suspension of disbelief then then that must mean that that it's really hard to to keep that consistent and so they just don't bother they're just completely okay with the, all of your suspension of disbelief collapsing at any moment. There's this character in in the the porn stars video. Porn stars. Is that what it's called? Porn stars. Porn shop. There's a character in that. Who's like the granddad, I guess. He's the dad of the dad, so I, I, I assume that's who he is. He's old as fuck. And at one point, he just... He started slow clapping in the most strange way. He also seemed like maybe drunk or maybe perhaps... <laughs> I don't know, very strange, just very strange. I would have... I feel like if I saw it out of context, I would have believed it was a mentally challenged person, a, a developmentally challenged person. But um, I don't think it it's supposed to be, at least. It might be, but... Um, what a strange experience to see that. I was watching it and I was like, and people think, people think Japan is weird? <laughs> Have you seen this guy doing his slow clap? This old guy doing his slow clap or trying to deliver any line? The way he was speaking, he was speaking like a like a a, a new man, as in like like someone who had never been a person before with language, who had just suddenly been introduced to the concept of language and instantly understood it all. That's how he was delivering his lines. Like like an like like a a new regeneration of the doctor who hasn't gone used to his mouth yet. Or, or like a gorilla that's been taught sign language and then suddenly can is given a human voice box. Something like that. He spoke like that. He spoke like that. Like what would you you but in a worse accent, like you'd imagine that gorilla would have a cool voice, but this guy doesn't have a cool voice. He just sounds normal. Yeah, what a weird fucking thing. It's reality. Yeah, yeah. That's so. This is what people are about. My mum watches reality TV from time to time, but mostly she watches murder, murder porn, like like NCIS and CSI and and like Nordic um, crime dramas, Scandinavian crime dramas and stuff, which I think is kind of neat. Like they seem at least, at least the Scandinavian ones seem more competent than the American ones. Like, they're shot better, for example. They have less terrible editing. Like, shot for shot editing. So that's nice, I guess. But uh, it doesn't really matter. Everyone's just wasting time until they die. It doesn't matter what... If you choose... If you're... What matters is th that you're invested in it, I think. What matters is that you... Um... You don't let it mm, sweep over you. 
Like if I was like, okay, well now I'm gonna become a is it called porn stars? Is that what the show's called? I feel like is that too that's too vulgar, right? There's no way you could call a show that porn stars. Is that what it's called? Did they just do that? That's the most obvious possible pun, right? You know what? I'm just gonna assume what's called that. If you became the number one fan and you were on the fucking porn stars forum subreddit talking every day with other fans and you were you bought merch and you were just super then that's good. Do you know what? That's good. Good for good for you. Rather than just mindless sit and let it all wash over you. I think being active is what is well I don't know what it is, but it's something. Probably it's probably important. <laughs> just like most things now most things are probably unimportant well then being active is probably unimportant as well most things are probably unimportant oh shit I'm asleep now goodbye I'm ready to metamorphosize and metaphorize. I'm ready to uh, metamorphosize and metaphorize. But what? Don't tell me my quality has been high. Don't tell me my quality has been high. Terrible thing, really. Terrible thing, really. I'm ready to metamorphosize and ready to metaphorize when I rise. I'm just going cocoon. I must jellify in order to metaphorize my heteronym. I must do that. I was to sum summarize the problem. Uh, I have a few too many propositions, but I'm not in the proper positions. I have too many propositions, but not in the proper position. I need to major tom myself, so I can then white duke myself, if you know what I mean. A little bit of that would wake me up. Speaking of wake me up. There we go, let's wake me up. Speaking of wake me up, where's my wake me ups? Where's my wake me ups? Wow, my wake me ups gone. Oh, they're down there. They're wake me downs. What day is it? What day it do be, though? What day it do be, though? Sunday. Then that should be the only one. This is my makeshift. This is my makeshift. Pillbox. Do you see me? My makeshift pillbox. Look my makeshift life.
Now, speaking of life, let's breathe some life into me. Let's breathe some life into me. Oh, yeah. Why is this wrong? What's, who, who's done this? No, it's no wrong at all. Actually, everything's perfectly fine. This is my morning routine. I think I'm going to set up an SXHKD bind for... Well, I would like to. The only problem being that as more time goes on, I like the element client less and less. I mean, I like it. I would probably keep it on my computer purely for the cool functionality. That's very useful. Very useful for one-on-ones. However, it's very bloated because it's a web browser. It's just like Discord. It's just a web browser that points to one specific web page. And uh, that is the worst possible thing you can do in your life. There is other ways. Just about to check the harvest, but I tabbed away as fast as possible because I thought, let's check the harvest together, you know, let's check the harvest together. So, let's see what we got. Sharp no mix, TV2T stream, that's okay. New Kyra Sand video, that'll go on my watch later. What else have we got? Esma, nah, this is not that good. I don't care about that. Oh, that's good. That's what I'm talking about. That's what the fuck I'm on about, Bo. Yeah. Spooks and shit. I completely forgot about this channel. This is like a, an old Lefty Pole channel. What the fuck? So that's from back in the day when Lefty Pole was a thing. See what's going on here. My favorite product in the world is people. <laughs> okay, this is a good video. <laughs> slavery. <laughs> slavery bad. Jago has it. 100,000 special. Nice. Zexy Zex scooter. And that's it. And that's it. No, that was a shit harvest. Two, three, three videos, barely. Don't worry, it's, it's okay because I'm watching, I'm watching Prisma earlier, which is also not very good. This is why I don't like anime. It's because I just watch bad anime, and then I'm like, but I'm stupid. I also have a bunch of... I don't know why I haven't watched these three Asmongold videos. They've been in my watch layer for ages, and I just have never watched them. Also, I'm never... Let's be real. I'm never going to watch this. I'm never going to watch this. Let's be real. And I've finished this already. Uh, probably never... Actually, I might listen to that at some point. This is bad. There's no reason for that to be there. I'll finish that at some point. That's kind of neat, but I don't know if I'll watch it. Uh... I watched this already. I watched this already. And I might listen to this at some point. I still haven't fucking watched this Dotes My video. Um, I've seen this already. I've seen, yes, I watched bad ASMR. Okay, I actually only watch good ASMR. This is the the thing about me. It's just the good A sometimes the stuff listen, okay, how do I explain this in words that make sense? I I watch makes sense. 
that's making a watch make sense. Let me get my watch to make sense. 1248, is it? Seems right. Seems right. Seems right. Let's make me some sense. No. That doesn't make sense at all. No, this is not easy. This has never been easy. Ever since the day I was born, this has never been easy. There we go. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do, yeah. But, okay. It just so happens that a lot of the ASMR that gives me tingles, because that's what I'm about. That's all I'm about, man. Some people about other things. I'm only about tingles. That's all I care about in life. Because tingles is just watch a YouTube video get a small high. It's just getting really minor high from watching a video, which is crazy to me. And so I'm all about tingles. And it just so happens that a lot of the things, like two, it's not even a lot, it's like two, two channels, which I find to be particularly tingly, also happen to be quite lewd. But I don't even watch the videos. I got my eyes closed or tapped out almost all the time, so I'm never even seeing the lewdness. I'm just experiencing the, the sounds of, like, microphone scratching and stuff. And that's what gives me the tingles that, that I need in my life to fall asleep to, right? Or to relax me. But people will see... As they always do, only the surface imagery. <sighs> my harvest today. Anyway, my harvest isn't that bad because I still haven't watched this two and a half hour RuneScape history timeline. That'll be, and I still haven't watched this one and a half hour Dotes my video. So that's a that's a lot of of money. That's a that's a lot of money. And then add on to that. Nothing else. <laughs> Add on to that nothing else, and then you got yourself a question. I don't know what just happened to me, but my monitor's turned off. I'm going to turn the computer on and off again, and hope that this fixes the situation. It, it, I clicked something. I moved the mouse down to the bottom right corner and clicked something. Okay, well, that's good. I wonder what the fuck I just did. My only thing I can think of is that... So, I have a... Um... In the bottom... Like, in the, what is in the bottom right of my screen? That's, what, like, my polybar... Stuff. Like, and one of the things in my polybar... Is the butt screen brightness. So, all I can think is that I accidentally clicked the polybar... And somehow scrolled down the screen brightness. I didn't even know you could control that by scrolling. I don't I don't I didn't even know that was a thing that I had functionality for. I don't remember doing that. It must have come pre packaged in my my polybar module. Let's find out if that's what just happened. So we go to brightness. It works. You can scroll it. So that must be what I did. I must have just done that and scrolled it all the way down. Holy shit. That's it. That's quite convenient, I guess. Not that convenient. I mean, I have keybinds for my brightness. I need brightness, you know. The only two brightnesses I ever really use. 15% for most daily use. I have 5% with flux. Or it's not flux, it's blue bone. For nightly use. That's pretty much the only... But it's quite, I guess, if I just do that. Ah, so if I have it on, for some reason, that. Oh, no, wait, no, never mind, because it's middle click. Okay, that's kind of, um, that's something. Well, they, now I can, well, I figured something out. I learned something today. You can apparently scroll that. I guess you can scroll the volume as well. I already knew that, though. Did I? I guess I knew that.
Well, I need something. Anyway, let's get back to what I was thinking about. Sorry about that. Just thought it was something interesting worth documenting. Didn't even know that about my own damn computer. I recorded this segment before, but it was not applicable back then. So we're doing it again. Live and pre-recorded. I'm trapped. Here. In anime. There are certain things that I need from media and art, right? Art is undeniably an incredibly important part of the human disposition and the human uncondition, condition, human condition. Art is a very valuable feature in my life. I couldn't live. If I didn't have art, I would probably have killed myself by now. I think that's a fairly reasonable assumption. Not, you know, both making it and consuming it. There are albums that have changed my life. There are TV shows, books, anime, visual novels that have changed the way I see things completely. Right? Very powerful things, art. And so, as a human being, for me, the only human being, there are certain things that I really look for in art, right? Being able to look at art is very nice to me. Being able to consume art is a very important part of my life. You can't just not consume art, not in my case at least. I think most people would be pretty, um, live a very unenriched life if they couldn't consume art. I think everyone appreciates art on some level. I'd say that's pretty accurate. Um, <clears throat> so, there are certain things that I, obviously every person has different things they want from their art because different themes and elements will speak to them differently. Now, for me, there's a whole collection of themes that are really important to me. There's a whole collection of themes that really speak to me on a deeper level. And the only place to find those themes is in anime. There are some themes that you don't find in anime. For example, sci-fi. I don't think that, I don't watch sci-fi anime because I already have Star Trek and Star Trek is much better than any sci-fi anime. So all of my sci-fi needs are, are, are taken, like more utopian sci-fi. Maybe when it comes to cyberpunk, there's good cyberpunk anime that I watch, right? There's three of them, <laughs> maybe four, depending. Uh, but with with utopian sci-fi or classical sci-fi, everything I need comes from Star Trek. I don't need I don't need anything else because that already contains all of the stuff I want to explore in sci-fi. So that's fine. And Star Trek is a good show, so I'm never complaining about that. But for most of my other artistic needs, let's take an example. There's stuff that you can only find in anime, but it's stuff I can't live without because it's really important to me. But the problem is that most anime does these things really badly, really badly. The stuff I really like is also the stuff that is found in the worst shows. So I'm trapped because I need this stuff in my life. I need to consume art that has, I need to be involved. I need to be thinking about these things. These emotions are very powerful to me. These themes and aesthetics are very powerful to me and very important to me, but they're only located in a place full of bullshit. <laughs> Let's take the example. There are certain things. If you watched my video a long time ago, I believe it was called, what is the appeal of anime? Pretty much everything I said in that video applies here, but in case you haven't seen it, I'll just do a quick example. Moe. Moe is an incredibly powerful emotion to me. It's one of the most powerful emotions in literature can evoke, right? In my personal opinion. And yet you can't find it outside of otaku media. It only really, I mean, you can, you can put it onto other things, you know. People put it onto other things. I, I put it onto other things. I, I, I moe over certain things that aren't necessarily otaku, right? But the only media you can find that is specifically made to be moe is otaku media. And so if I want that powerful emotional high 
that that into in complex emotion from my stories i have to watch anime i don't have a choice or you know read manga or visual novels or whatever and most of it's bad most of it i don't really like that much but i don't have a choice because if i i need that stuff in my life so moe is one example comfiness is another example there are very few comfy things that have effort put into them there are great comfy youtubes for example there are great ones and some of them have high effort but what i mean rather than effort maybe a budget and narrative a most comfy youtube like there's a great channel called cruising the cut for example about a guy who just he's a he just vlogs himself as he's riding around in a barge in the canals of the uk great comfy channel super comfy but it's not got the like it's not a narrative you know it's not a narrative in the same way say aria or mushishi is a narrative there's and it doesn't have phil philosophical themes like mushishi or aria it doesn't have that stuff because it's not it's a vlog it, you know most of them don't really that's not really what they're for i mean some of them do but most of that that's not the point of this one in particular so if i want narrative and i want comfy and I want characters, that's the other thing, a vlog is really just him. So, uh, you know, that's an example. So if I want Comfy, my only option is Iyashi K. And I like Iyashi K. I like pretty much most of Iyashi K shows. But they're very slow and patient. You have to be very patient. And I'm not a very patient person. My mind wanders. If I'm not being actively engaged intellectually by a show, if my brain isn't already having to work on full power just to process everything I'm seeing, then my mind starts to wander. Next thing I know, I've clicked off of it and I'm doing something else. Right? This is why I love Horizon. I don't even like Horizon. Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere is not a very good show by any standard metric. It's got really bad directing. Well, it's, the directing is average. It's got flat, kind of bland directing. The sound mixing is sometimes atrocious. The writing, the dialogue is oftentimes awful. The character, like the stuff that's supposed to set up certain characters and give them personality, it's awful actually. It's some of the worst I've ever seen. Like it's no, there's no depth, there's no subtlety, there's no, um, you know, attempt to make these characters believable or anything, relatable, nothing. So none of these features that, and the narrative is obviously completely confusing and all over the place and you can't follow it. So by all these standard metrics, Horizon is a terrible show. But it's one of the only shows that has enough going on that it keeps my brain 100% occupied. It, that you can't not, you can't afford to blink because you'll miss something. Same with Take You. Although I think Take You is an amazing show, like in every way. I think Take You is just consistently hilarious through every single season but the one of the main things about take you is that it's so fast paced it's so fast that you can't look away from the subs because you'll miss two lines of dialogue and that's a joke that's a punchline so you have to be 100 percent focused that's the stuff i need in media so that's why take you and horizon are in my top 10 most anime isn't like that most media isn't like that but the themes in anime, Moe, Comfy, those are two examples. Another thing is all the weird postmodern shit that anime gets up to that you don't get in other other mediums. Like this, these guys, these guys, weird postmodern shit. Like that doesn't exist outside. Like that doesn't exist outside of anime in regular TV, and it only vaguely exists in movies and books. It will. It exists in movies and books, but in a different, in a very different way. It, and it lacks the other elements. You see, that's what's so great about Monogatari, is that it, as well as being an intellectual, like a weirdly, surprisingly intellectual, and experimental um, piece of art, it's also incredibly. It's also very much not high art. It's very much low art with a bunch of fan service and weird uh, sexual fetishes and moe in it, which is all the stuff I also like. 
See, that stuff is great. I love that stuff in anime. Like, you don't get fan service. If, if you do fan service with real-life 3D women, it just comes off as creepy. I've seen Transformers, right? Megan Fox. It just, it's weird. I don't like it. I don't like watching that because it makes me feel uncomfortable. But it's fine when it's an animated character because that is no longer exploiting a real woman. That is uh, some Japanese guy, or maybe woman, who's just really passionate about drawing and probably loves drawing char this character and has just spent hours meticulously. Like, that's a, a, a craftsman, really, that you're enjoying. And so when you watch fan service, you, it's guilt-free fan service. It's great. It's basically the ultimate thing. Although sometimes fans... But this is the sort of thing. Fan, both fan service anime and, like, postmodern stuff in anime are both mostly awful. Like, awful. Like, really bad. <laughs> like, like, I don't enjoy them at all. But I can't get it anywhere else, so I have to watch anime. You've seen anime is getting lazy with its meta, the Digi video. We've all seen it. We know that there was a time with Monogatari, Haruhi, these sorts of things, when the anime meta text game was really clever for a very brief short period of time with about four shows. And then it just became ridiculously oversaturated and terrible. But there is no alternative because nothing else exists that even tries. So you have to watch anime if you like that. If you like Moe, you have to watch anime if you like that. If you like, um, I don't know, if you're a shonen guy. Well, actually, there's lots of other things that hit the same beats as shonen. But uh, I'm not really a shonen guy anyway. Uh, if, you, if you like certain concepts and they speak to you, like the I okay, let me give you an example. I have watched a good chunk of the Nanoha franchise. I've watched Nanoha, the f I've watched half of the first season before dropping it. I thought it was terrible. I watched all of Nanoha A's. I watched the first two movies. I would give them both sevens, maybe. Maybe first one a seven, second one a high seven, right? And then I watched uh, the first two episodes of. Uh, Nanoha Strikers, which I thought was really bad, and I dropped it after two episodes. I watched, and then I just finished uh, Vivid Strike, which is the most recent series, which is kind of a spin off. I just finished that yesterday. So I've watched a good chunk of the Nanoha franchise, and all of it is mostly bad. The first season was bad enough that I dropped it. A is, is like a six, maybe a high six. Strikers is like a, a four, because I don't like the characters. And Vivid, I, I, uh, Vivid Strike, I gave uh, a five, because it was just average. The movies, like I said before, like maybe sevens. They're pretty good. Sixes or sevens. Um, so most of this franchise I didn't like. But do you know what I do like? The concept, the idea of two magical girls just beating the shit out of each other with ridiculously giant beam attacks, just so absurdly giant. And, like, the aesthetic of that is so cool to me. Like, like they're weird weapons that all have these weird mechanical things to them, even though that sort of stopped being a thing. Like, that was the, they sort of went in that direction, but then by the time you get to Vivid Strike and uh, Nana Have Vivid, like, it's basically just a show and it's just a tournament arc. And they kind of forget about all that stuff. But the first two, like the first two seasons and uh, Strikers, although I didn't, think, I thought Strikers was bad, right? And I, the first season is also bad. The first season is like a, a three or four, like it's bad, it's shit. Don't watch it. Just watch the movies. The movies are the best part of the franchise. The first two, I haven't seen the third one. Because the third one's not part of the main canon. Um, it's mostly a bad franchise. Like, no, no actual, none of the actual media in the franchise is bad, but if you want those aesthetics of magical girls fighting, at, fighting each other and then becoming friends with giant beam attacks and uh, the aesthetic of, like, Nanoha's character, oh, and, like, Yuri overtones, you know? That's another important thing about Nanoha is the Yuri overtones. They're, like, by the time you get to Vivid Strike, Spoiler alert for Vivid Strike, it's Nanoha, you already knew this was going to happen. After the two main characters who have been like the enemies the whole show, 
uh, finally beat each other up to the point where they become friends because it's Nanoha. They're basically a couple. Like, it's very blatant. They never actually say it out loud, but, like, they're, like, holding hands and cuddling. Like, it's so obvious. What are they? No, they do say it out loud. They literally say, I love you. They literally say Daisuke to each other. Like, it's it's just canon. They're, they, they're fuck. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, that is cool, man. Like, that is just someone who just wanted to do lesbian magical girl fighting anime beat the shell of each other weird mechanical magical girl weapons sci-fi weird ob like obscure sci-fi concepts that don't really make any sense and aren't really very interesting or good but like fuck it we're putting them in there anyway um that just don't fit in the anime at all um weirdly dark subplots like the way fate was like tortured by her mother and like the way um in in vivid strike the best part of vivid strike is there's a whole se there's an episode where um, the the main enemy girl, I forgot her name, Rene, um, like you'd see her backstory in this one episode, and basically there's like a whole episode of her, how she transferred to, like how she was like an orphan, she joined a rich family, she um, went to a new school, she started getting bullied, and then there's like a really satisfying scene where you see like, you see long sequences of her being bullied. It's kind of like... Well, there's a lot of anime that do similar things, but you see these long sequences of her being bullied, you see, like, a, and you really feel for her, right? And then um, they finally go too far, and she just snaps and just fucking murders them. Like, she just... They, I don't know if it, it actually implied that they're dead, but, like, she, like, brutally smashes their faces against lockers, like, breaks one of the girl's arms. It's fucking sick, right? It's, like, the by far the best moment in the entire... Sh they probably... Not the whole franchise. The best moment in the whole franchise is the fight in the middle of uh, Nanoha A's movie. But it's one of the best moments in the franchise. It's fucking sick. It's so satisfying. Even though it's a really simple plot, I will always find bullies getting their comeuppance to be um, a fucking awesome moment. This isn't a magical girl show, bro. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, so none of this show is good, but it has moments where you get little nuggets that speak to me, that I need in, in art. I need art that has these things. And so despite none of it being good, I have no choice but to watch it, right? That is my experience with most of anime. Almost all of it is bad, but I need the little nuggets that only anime and otaku media contains. I need them in my life. I can't, like, my life would be significantly unenriched if I didn't have these little um, emotional beats and narratives in them. They're powerful, powerful things to me. Um, there's, a, there's other examples, you know, there's there's definitely many other examples. But um, I just, and I, I always like, the problem is that I don't like kids shows, right? If I liked, if I was like Plunder, I would be happy. Because Plunder is just really into, like, kids shows both western and japanese and so for plunder there's 20 billion episodes of magical girl shows to keep you entertained for the next 20,000 years you're never going to run out basically i mean you will eventually but like and all of it's exciting because you genuinely enjoy all of it i don't genuinely enjoy most of it i find it mostly boring and repetitive magical girl shows i've only seen Really, the only like pure magical girl show I've seen is Card Captain Sakura and the first three episodes of Sailor Moon. I thought Sailor Moon was rubbish, and I've seen about half of Sakura, and then never finished it. Why? Because it's firstly too long. But why is it too long? Because every episode is the exact fucking same episode, just over and over again. I like episodic content sometimes. Mushishi is a good show. Star Trek Next Generation, 100% epi uh, episodic, pretty much. There's some canon like there's some there's some narrative stuff but jet the show itself is, is episodic right but the thing about star trek is those episodes those self-contained storylines are 100 percent fulfilling like they they keep your brain intellectually stimulated by for example let's take a random star trek episode i don't know something easy to talk about like measure of a man measure of a man is a great episode um, where uh, there's a guy called Bruce Maddox and he wants to experiment on Data uh, and to do that he would have to like that dis disassemble him but Data's like this is a dangerous procedure if you disassemble me I might die 
Um, and then Bruce Maddox is like, well, it doesn't matter because you're an android. You don't have human rights. You don't have the right to refuse because your property is Starfleet. And so then various uh, weird contrivances happen to where they hold a trial with basically Picard versus Riker. It's kind of awkward, weird contrivances. Um, everyone's seen Measure of Matt. Basically, Picard and Riker have to debate over, the, over whether or not Data is a living being or property of Starfleet. And the whole time, even though it has bad stuff in it, like the weird contrivances and stuff like that, um, you're intellectually... You're you're now thinking about oh so who huh what is the nature of property what is the nature of humanity what is the nature of consciousness can an android ever really be conscious do I I believe Data is conscious because I've seen him in all these episodes but if I was Bruce Maddox and I knew that my entire life had been spent studying these positronic nets and my final study you know it's all been leading up to this moment where I take a look at Data's brain and suddenly I'm being denied, that would be hard. Like, I can imagine how that, coming from that perspective, if you've never met Data, you might not understand that it's a, uh, that he's, uh, you know, a living person. You, you might genuinely, like, I can see how you would believe that Data doesn't have rights. It's just, prob like, I can understand. I can empathize with the, the bad guy, even, like, you know, and I can, I can put myself in his shoes, and it's like, oh, it's an, it's an interesting little nugget of thinking. So... Uh, and the, the, the way the debate happens, it's, it's an intellectual battle. It's like, yes, Riker makes some good points, right? But, oh, but Picard also makes good counter arguments. And like you can see, and Riker's like, oh, I don't really want to do this because I, I like Data, he's my friend. I can't argue against him, but like I have to because of the law and I have to argue emphatically. So it's like the emotional turmoil going on in Riker's head as he's being forced to essentially argue that his friend doesn't deserve the basic like all of this stuff is going on plus like man it's just such a good episode all of star trek is like this by the way <laughs> if i watch nano not nano if i watch sakura the only thing i'm the only thing that happens is she fight the monster she get the card that's the only thing that happens in every episode there is no interesting little nuggets of philosophy to think about there's nothing to keep your brain interested and that's fine i like sakura like sakura is good because it has great aesthetics and the characters are endearing but i can't watch a million episodes of it because it's just it requires too much patience my brain starts wondering i start getting distracted because there's nothing to keep me engaged right and i can manage that when it's a short series or when it's exceptional. Like, Hidamari's sketch is exceptional. It's so good that even though very little happens, um, the char just, just based on the characters being so endearing, I will watch all of it. But Hidamari's sketch took me, like, I watched it over the span of a year. It took me ages to watch. Whereas, you know, Plunder can just sit down and marathon a 100-episode Magic Girl show like it's nothing. I don't know how. In the, in the same way that Plunder can just listen to an hour-long album and do nothing else, was I can't. I, I, I can, if it's a really good album, I can sit down and listen to it for... Uh, maybe I have ADHD. <laughs> I just realized. Hey. Do you, do you guys think I have ADHD? Is that what I'm describing right now? Because I just realized that I, maybe it's because I have difficulty concentrating on things for a long time. Maybe I'm not autistic. Maybe I'm ADHD. And after all this time, this was the revelation. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's just difficult for me to concentrate on things like that unless they're very stimulating because my brain starts wondering. And most anime is not very stimulating. But I don't have a choice to watch it because I need... So right now, I'm watching Prisma Ilya. I don't think I'm enjoying this show at all. I'm five episodes in. It's been all right. But I've already dropped this show before. After two more, I dropped this show on episode seven before. Because these three episodes that are just coming up are just full of um, melodrama. And uh, so it's one fight over the next three episodes. I remember it being uh, pretty boring. Uh, and I don't care about the fate universe at all, of course. Who does? <laughs> uh, but I have to watch it because the idea of an otaku-oriented magical girl show is just the most interesting thing in the universe to me. That's what I'm doing right now is trying to watch all of them. Moe Time was really good. I liked Moe Time. And I like the Nanoha movies. 
um, those are basically what I've watched so far. But the idea that there was this genre of show made for little girls to watch in the morning, but so many adult otaku fans were interested in it, despite, you know, all of the stigma against it, that there was enough of a market that someone decided to start making otaku, like making a version of that genre that was for adults or for like otaku fan base, not the, for an otaku male adult fan base that it spun off into its own little micro genre. That is such an interesting little thing to happen. That's so cool. That doesn't happen in the West. Like a lot of people really like um, cartoons. A lot of adults like Adventure Time, for example, and SpongeBob and regular show and stuff like that. And they did it a bit. They're just starting to do it a bit, right? So like, like, Regular show has the guy who made regular show made a new show. I don't remember what it's called. I don't care about it. There's there's aimed at adults, right? And it's not. And you know, there's also stuff like I don't think that really counts. But so, for example, regular show has such an, a, a strong adult fan base that the guy who made regular show can go off and make a, another cartoon that is targeted at adults, and people will watch it, and he'll get funding for it, and blah blah blah. But that show, the key difference is that show is t- is is white audience marketed, not niche otaku oriented uh, audience, right? It's it's marketed to a wide audience, and so it, it's non it's non specific, and it's also not very good. Like it doesn't have really any of the features of a cartoon. It may as like, I mean, it has a bit. Uh, Pendleton Ward made Bravest Warriors, which I believe is supposed to be adult targeted. I don't know. It may as well be a kid show. It's pretty much the same. Adventure Time is more of like a family thing than a, than a kids thing. I guess it's a bit of a kids thing, but um, uh, again, it, it's it's that's not niche otaku marketed. You you're not doing weird shit that most people will find weird in in uh, Bravest Warriors, for example. Like Bravest Bravest Warriors is a wide audience show. Uh, I like Bravest Warriors. Don't get me wrong, um, but Prisma Ilia is. A, a lolly fan service show and, and a magical girl show and a spin-off of the fake franchise which is already a small niche of the market uh like this is a niche fucking object right here this is a niche object this is this is a punk object um like that's that's what's different about it is it can it, it can it can be sp- super specific which those the wide audience shows can't be at all. They they are wide appeal shows, and I don't really like anything with that that is vague enough to be wide appeal. Even though, you know, there's some bits about Prismalia that I find cool uh, or interesting. Most of it I find mostly not very good and boring. Uh, and but I have to watch it because if I want, I, that is such a, an interesting artistic concept that I need to I need to have it in my life. And so I'm going to watch all four seasons now, just because fuck myself, just because just because I'm 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 a piece of shit. The thing about it, I just, I just want to make sure I'm clear here. When I say otaku-oriented magical girl, I don't mean the other slightly similar genre called dark magical girl. You know, your Madokas, your Mahou Ma- Shoujo Sight, um, these things. That's a different genre. There was a see, the magic dark magical girl shows are mostly mostly marketed at tuny edgy teenagers. As Prisma Elia is a bit as well, but stuff like Moe Tan, stuff like Natsuhiro Drops, uh, not Natsuhiro Drops, um, like these aren't dark shows, but they're also not kid shows. They're marketed at otaku, not just edgy tunies. And I like some of the edgy tuny stuff. But listen, I like some of the edgy tuny songs. What the fuck does she know about cameras? I don't dislike going to the dentist. Like a lot of people, they don't like going to the dentist. They find it really bad. I don't really, never really minded going to the dentist. But I don't trust dentists. And let me tell you the story of how I learned not to trust dentists. I went to the dentist and this woman was there doing my teeth. And she was like poking around with a mirror and the dental pick thing. And she was like, you, you need to brush your teeth better. You got, see, you got a big bit of food stuck right here. And I was like, really? And she proceeded to pick away a bit of my gum from the inside, the inside side, the inner side 
of my of one of my teeth right next to to it. She just picked away a bit of my gum. I could feel it happening, and then I felt myself bleeding afterwards, and she saw it bleeding as well. So she just picked a bit of my gum out. Also, remember, gums don't bleed. But gums don't grow back, right? So I can still feel that there's a tiny section of my gum missing on the inside of my mouth here. Um, so she just picked this bit of my gum away, right? And then she held it up in front of me on the end of this dental pick, and I could see it now. I could, firstly, I could see that it was pink, right? Not food. It was clearly a bit of my gum. It was bleeding a little bit. I could taste the blood, like a very tiny bit, but I could taste the metallic taste of blood. And it was clearly a pink blob of my fucking flesh that she just ripped off of me. And I could also tell in her eyes that she no no she knows she fucked up. <laughs> she clearly knew she fucked up. And so what did she do to me? As a ch I was probably maybe thirteen at this time. She said, "See, look at this food." She just lied, bold faced to my face. She just lied. She just look at this big bit of food. Clear, bold faced lie directly in my eyes, looking me in the eyes, lying to my motherfucking face. And I don't think dentists know shit. I think there's one person who's a professional dentist who goes around these places and just oversees everything and just takes off little things and does the important stuff, basically like a doctor. But all the people you see on a regular basis are essentially nurses, but they're even less skilled than nurses. Like, dentistry takes... I'm sorry to all the dentists watching. It takes very little skill to be a dentist. You might think it does, but it doesn't take much skill. Um... So I'm supposed to trust these people because they spent they spent three years going to medical school, going to uni, getting drunk and, you know, doing whatever the fuck people do, going to parties, smoking a bunch of weed, barely studying, scraping by medical school, and now I'm letting them rummage around in my teeth and pick out parts of my gums. They don't know shit. Then maybe a year ago, two years ago, uh, I went to the dentist again, and I can tell that I had a receding gum on one of my teeth, like I can see it in the mirror that it's gone down over the past, like it, it's it's lower than the rest of my gum line. And I pointed it out to her and she said, looks normal to me, just brush your teeth less harshly there. And so of course I listened to her and it just got worse and worse and worse until I looked it up myself and I found out if you have a receding gum line, you have to buy a special mouthwash, medical mouthwash, and that mouthwash tastes like shit. And then I started doing that and the, the receding didn't seem to, like, it stopped, because it was hurting as well. Like, once it got to a certain low, lowness, the gum line, it started hurting. She didn't do shit. She just looked at it and was like, it looks normal to me. Fuck off. You don't know what you're talking about, dentist. I can see my own teeth. Clearly, you're just making stuff up as you go along. Fake as dentists, I swear. They don't know anything. Mouths are the worst thing. The human body's full of terrible decisions. The spine is the worst one. But the mouth is definitely up there. It's terribly organized, full of bacteria, right? First of all, you have to clean it. That's ridiculous. Your teeth will fall out occasionally if you get punched or fall over or something. They don't grow back. Uh, your gum line don't grow back. Your teeth, if they, they start rotting or something, they don't grow. Nothing grows back. If you fuck up, it's permanent. Plus, it's not like... Oh, well, my spleen don't grow back. Oh, no, I have to get my spleen removed. No, it's literally in front of everyone's face all the time when you speak. So if you're like me and you have a missing tooth, everyone knows, everyone looking at you weird all the time. Everyone looking at you weird. Everyone looking at you sus all the time like you're among us. <laughs> They're trying to vote you out because you're missing a tooth, right? I don't care about that. Like, I like the missing tooth. I think it made me look... Look... Stupid. I think it made me look goofy, but I don't care. It doesn't affect my life, really. Like, it, it doesn't really matter to me. But I can tell where I got a little looks when people see, oh, he's missing a tooth. There must be a crackhead. I just find that funny, personally. But imagine if you were someone who didn't find that funny. Well, good luck paying. you got to pay £2,000 for a replacement tooth, by the way. That's the truth about me. That's the truth about me. Cause me... Uh, money to get my tooth replaced because the dental service non-emergency like if, if it's not going to literally kill you 
then any dental surgery is is not covered by NHS. It's not free. You have to pay for it in the UK. Is it like is ridiculous and stupid because it's considered plastic surgery because it is plastic surgery really. It's considered cosmetic surgery rather. Like it's because con- it doesn't really a- missing a tooth doesn't really affect my life that much. I can still eat perfectly well. Like it's it's not a health concern. It's just an aesthetic concern really. And so it's not covered under the NHS, like health, free health stuff, because it's not health, it's cosmetics. And so it costs a lot of money. Now, I don't care about my cosmetics, so I don't, I'm not going to bother. But, you know, what if you get fired from your job because you look goofy? Like, that's the thing that could happen. People actually, other people genuinely care a lot about aesthetics, cosmetics, and those sorts of things. It's very strange. It's a very strange system we have going on here in our mouths. I feel like we should do away with it. I don't like teeth. I really don't. I really don't like teeth. I don't like it. I just want a piece of metal in my mouth that I can use to chew. And I never have to do anything with. It just sits there forever. And it just does its job. Not something I have to take care of your whole life. Didn't even sign up for it. I have to take care of these little bastards in my mouth. Didn't even sign up for it. Didn't do nothing. They just they just grow on you. You didn't even ask for it. And you, now you've got to take care of it. It's like someone just handed you your baby. Handed you a baby. Said, that's your baby. Now you got to take care of it. If it dies, it dies. And it's, you can't revive it because it's a baby. And then they put the baby in your mouth and it was your teeth. And it was all your teeth. And that was the baby. It was your teeth in your mouth. It's like that. Why would that happen? I didn't ask for this. Bastard teeth. Bastards. Some days... Some days all my energy decides to be sapped by certain individuals. Not in the sense of like, oh, I had to deal with this person and it was tiring. I just have no energy all of a sudden. I woke up, I took my caffeine. You heard me ranting about whatever anime I was just ranting about, and I had energy then. But all of my energy has seemed to left me. Almost comically so. Almost comically so. This is why it's hard to do anything when you're not thank you, because randomly this just happens. I might have actually... I got two things to do. But I'm gonna go on Amazon and I'm gonna order myself a multivitamin. Multivitamin. What we got what what have we got here? What does this have in it? One day multivitamin and mineral formula, that sounds alright. Shipping. Free shipping. This seems legitimate. What is this? Nature's aid. What has it got in it? Did it, did it say free shipping? Or am I blinded by the light? Primarily got iron in it. That's probably a good thing. Sunflower oil, gelatin, glycerin, lecithin, distilled monoglycerides, natural colors. That's the main part of it. Okay, that's sick. Iron, niacin, B1, B5, B2, B6, B12, B, uh, C, D, more iron, more B6, B12, and niacin, and iodine. I don't know. Oh, folic acid, biotin, calcium. Ion. You know what? This one's good enough. I don't really care. How the fuck do you buy things? What? Deliver every three months? There's no one time purchase. What the fuck? What the fuck? One time purchase. Can't even use the website. The website's broken. Got it. Oh, you serious? Little bitch boys, little bitch bitches. Fuck it, okay. Just 
touches. By now. And it will come by tomorrow. Sign in. Don't even have no... Look at these dark ass patterns. The worst. The worst dark patterns. Have you seen me? I'm made of nothing. Free premium delivery. Oh, I have to go. No, I don't want to get Prime. They keep doing this. No, I don't want to be Prime. No. Fuck off. Fuck off. Get me out of Prime. Fucking bitch. I'm just trying to buy something. I hate. Why am I using Amazon? Why am I using. Now you can't undo it. It just signed me up for Prime and now I can't undo it. No! Delete, 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 delete. Four pound ninety nine. Fuck it. I don't care. I don't care about money anymore. What am I doing? Not gonna subscribe. Nothing. Ten pound. I don't care anymore. Just give me the fucking the vitamins. I don't care anymore. I bought it. Fuck it. I don't care anymore. Okay, that's number one. I have to do. Now I have to go pay my fucking rent. care anymore. Gotta go pay my shit. This is my job right now. What do you think about me being floor pilled? Okay, yeah, this is my new flow pilled position. It's quite nice. Over here is a secret. Well, not secret, it's, it's too damn, damn secret. Make me close the video. We got this laptop, the NetBSD. We got it over here somewhere. I'm not doing much. Don't know what to do with it. Well, I'm just going to put it back under there, because I ain't helping no one right now. Okay. Pay and get paid. Send money. I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. One hundred and... Yep, that's good. Uh, that's good. Too much damn money to be spending. But there you go. Don't give a fuck. Can't do nothing about it. Now, my final part of my job. Patreon.com. <sighs> Patreon. Login. Login. Gonna send me a text. No, no text. Okay. Post. Did I remember to download the thing I was supposed to download to post it? Or did I remember, because the track's on my Mac, did I remember to put it not on my, is it, hold on. It'll be in music, right? Uh, no. No, okay, well, time to download that. onto this because I can't I would have to stand out to go get my Mac so I have to find the person I sent it to the track that I was going to upload it should be somewhere around here 
Yep, got it. Download. Save it in music. I'll go back over to Patreon. Audio. Select audio file. 12 string split dot mp3. How am I going to call it? Right, let's make sure this is the right. Yeah, this is the right one. 12 string split. Select tier, not the good, sorry, good people. You have to be in the music club or above to get, get my music. What the fuck I'm saying? And now it's up on patreon.com forward slash no thank you, rolls zeros. As I was saying, some days I just get no energy, no goddamn at all energy. And sometimes, normally, it will just happen, and then I can't do nothing about it. It seems to happen for no reason. I wonder if this is known colloquially as depression. I don't think so. I don't know. Something interesting. I don't I don't I don't get hungry. I don't really understand hunger. I, um, something happened to me. What happened to me? Something happened to me. Something happened to me. I forgot. I forgot what happened to me. Um... I I think I I stopped eating for a while or something strange happened to me and that caused me to forget what hunger feels like I don't remember it seems to be school but I don't remember and um, ever since then I've just been very vague on on how hunger works. Sometimes I know when I'm hungry because my stomach starts hurting. I don't feel hunger. Like there's no there's no feeling within me that is you need to eat. They're just unrelated they're just other feelings that I have learned to associate it with, oh this is a this means you're hungry. So for example my stomach will start hurting or sometimes I start feeling nauseous. Sometimes I start feeling lightheaded or sometimes I start feeling like lack of energy like I am right now. I think I'm hungry. That would make some sense because I, I had a very small breakfast and that was many hours ago. So that makes sense. So I'm most likely hungry. But like, I don't, there's no, I don't feel like a particular feeling that is hunger. I just feel other feelings that are unpleasant and they don't have anything to do with the any particular, like, they could, like, maybe I'm low energy because I'm hungry, but maybe I'm low energy for a completely different reason. It would feel exactly the same. Or maybe I, you know, it would feel the same being nauseous because you're sick versus being nauseous because you're hungry. Like, all of that, it's all, it's all impossible to ever tell. I just never feel, I don't have an emotion that is hunger, but I have other emotions that are really unpleasant, and that makes it relatively difficult, I guess. To, like it's not like that makes it easier to um, eat less, for example. So like, yeah, but I'm supposed to be. I shouldn't eat too much anyway, so it's all good. I just saw something. I just saw something. I just saw something incredible. Look at this exclusive interview. Beeple explains what is an NFT. I don't think I've ever seen a YouTube video I want to watch less than this. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen something less appealing than this image. I think this is the least appealing image that humanity has thus far created. That's my personal current opinion. Beeple explains what is an NFT. Yeah, this is this is this is definitely the thing I want least in the world right now. I would probably rather d swim across the Kalahari Desert with a paper cut on my dick than 
but then have anything to do with a thumbnail that looks like this. How, who thought this was a good idea? Who thought that? Who in their right mind does this? In case you don't know where I am, <clears throat> this is where I am. This is where I normally am. This is where I am. This is where I am these days. By these days, I mean right now and probably never again. Because it's not quite as comfortable or versatile as my bed. Maybe with a pillow, that would improve things somewhat. Maybe a pillow would improve things somewhat. Pillow, improve things somewhat. Let's go with two. Let's bring two. One is it going to be a continue a contingency pillow? Um, what's the plan here? What's the principle? Okay, so first principle. <coughs> first principle. First principle. <coughs> Get everything squared up. Principle. Actually, this goes over here a bit. This goes over here a bit. That's some principle right there. That's much better principle. And then, put the pillow behind me. Put the pillow behind me. Now, we got ourselves a principle. Doesn't really let me slouch so nicely. It's all right, slouchy. Um, I'm a little less the pillow. Verticalize. That's louchy. Now that's what I'm talking about. Then we simply realize the virtual lies of my virtual lives. Good. Been breathing lately. been breathing lately <sighs> been a bit crazy <sighs> special breathing <clears throat> breathe some life into me <clears throat> when I eat a meal sometimes I get all phlegm in my my throat <clears throat> you never know when it's gonna happen Being a floor pilled um, wasn't as cool as I thought it would be. It's not as cool as I thought it is. Because it does slightly hurt my tailbone a little bit. So after a lot, I was just get the. I was trying to fight the yawn. I was trying to fight. I was trying to think, can I just speak? And then the yawn will stop. But no, it didn't work. The yawn would never stop. So being floor pilled. It's not as not as based um, because my tailbone starts to hurt after a while. Um, but it's quite a nice place to be. I have to say, like there's all sorts of floor down here. <laughs> it's not as it's not as, it doesn't. How do I how do I explain this in a way that makes sense? The bed is nice, but it feels like you're in bed all day, which is fine. Like, how do I how do I do this? It's like, oh, on your turn. Um, how do I how do I put this? It's it's like you're more grounded. It's it's a it's more comfy in a in a particular way, basically, just by being lower to the ground. I guess I don't really know how to. I don't know if I'm. Maybe it's just because it's different from what I'm used to, and that's why it's interesting. Oh, new shit on my desk yearly. Let's fucking go. 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 
Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. New shit on my desk. New shit on my desk. Yearly number five. Let's go, boys. We did it. We made it another year. Oh, shit. Suffering is over. I can't deal with the suffering anymore. We have no longer been floor pills. The fruit fuck. We have been drop the phone pills. We're fine. Got a good case. This is why you get a good case for your... Look at me. Look at me. Look at my case. Can you see it? Big ass case. No longer being floor pilled. Never being floor pilled for right now anymore. Any more floor pilledness. Not anymore. Anymore. That's part one of the suffering is over. Part one of the suffering is over. Part two of the suffering is over. Is I finished Prisma Ilya season one. It had some good moments, but overall I would not recommend it. Actually, I gave it a six, which is probably too high. I should probably lower that to a five now that I think about it. I should probably lower it to a five now that I think about it. Because they're. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh. Maybe uh, if you. No, I don't think there's really many people I can recommend that to. I'm going to lower it to a five. I don't think... I think it's a five, not a six. My power! No, returned from once you came. Let me fix that. Five. Eh, maybe it's a six. It's somewhere between a five and a six, because there are a few good moments, but the, 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 I'd say it's balanced out, so I'm gonna put it as a five. Yeah, five is five is good. All right, now let's watch the second season. <laughs> hmm, I wonder why I don't like anime because I just watch terrible shows. All I do, <sighs> anime is a form of self harm for me. Just like everything. Why is my phone? I never film like this because I hold the cam. I always film like this, you know? You know what I'm trying to say here? But which one's upside down for you? I don't remember which way I started recording. I have to say, this is objectively better to be here and no longer floor-pilled. Although being floor-pilled has its advantages, it also has its disadvantages. In the, the comfort side, maybe if I had a nice, a nicer chair to sit on on the floor rather than the, that little tiny cushion thing that I was sitting on, it'd be better. Also, I said I have low energy, and then I said maybe it's just because I'm hungry because I don't know when I'm hungry or not. I was hungry, but I have eaten food and I still feel kind of low energy. I just don't know why. Didn't cure me that well. I still have my low energiness. So my multivitamin should come tomorrow. That'll be nice. I did my stuff today. I feel like today's been good. Not over yet, though. Unfortunately, days, they keep going. They keep going these days. Days are never over until it's over. Did I unplug my... Okay, it's plugged in. It's nine o'clock. I could get away with having a cup of tea. <sighs> if it's seven hours till I sleep, I could get away with a cup of tea and not die. But I don't know if caffeine would help me. There's been very few times when caffeine actually helps when I'm tired. That's not true. No, it's true. It's about, I'd say, 
it's a it's a not the best bet. It's it's like maybe a a twenty percent chance that caffeine actually helps me when I'm tired post wake up because I take caffeine to wake I take two hundred milligrams when I wake up right, but and that helps me wake up a lot of course, but there's a you never know when you drink caffeine post wake up. It's about twenty percent of the times if I'm tired like I am now. And I take some caffeine, it helps, and I stop being low energy. But the other times, it makes everything worse because now I'm low energy and my heart is beating really fast and I feel, like, all tense and on edge and stuff, you know? So it's about a 50-50 chance. You never really know what's going to happen. Uh, instead of a cup of tea, I will have a soft drink. That is my plan. Yes. I'll have a soft drink, and I'll see how that I'll see how that does me does me in. I'll see what damage that does. Hopefully it does some good damage. A mission. A mission. We're going on a mission. We're going on a mission. We're going on a mission to find the bottle opener. Where is it? It's somewhere on this table. It's somewhere on this thingy. I found it. I found the fucking thing. I found it. Mission complete. Mission successful. The operation mission complete. Big ass bear. Look at this big ass bear. I don't play around no motherfucking games. You seen this water bottle? It's a big ass bear. You know I don't play no games. I don't play. Let's see how this see how this video turns out then because this will be this will make something interesting happen. This will make something interesting happen. So, why is it so hard? What the fuck? There we go. Okay. See, this is what... This is some... That was physics. That was why it was hard. Because I was grabbing it right in this end. I was trying to do it like this. Whereas you got to do it like this. Okay, let's keep this... I have to get rid of this in the world. Because... I stopped drinking beer. Because beer makes you fat. I'm not gonna enjoy any of this, but I need it to deal with a certain a certain a certain prisma. Because I need to I need to watch it for my own reasons. As you all know by now. But it's not very good. Something like that's happening. Something like that's happening. And I don't know about you guys, but around here, around these parts, around these parts, we ain't immune to propaganda. Which is why I'm gonna go make myself some toast. And it ain't gonna be disguised. thing I came in here because look at this what the fuck the fridge was left open damn it's warm and damn good thing I came in here to notice that the fridge was left open otherwise I w that could have gone awful that could have gone terribly wrong could have had the fridge left open that definitely wasn't me I didn't go into the it might have been me I did go into the fridge fuck okay well I hope everything's okay let's keep that closed That seems to have a crust taken off of it. Let's take out a normal slice of toast. Honestly, you can't beat. Vegemite on toast as a classic moment. You gotta love a bit of Vegemite on toast. Those Aussies, they know what they're up to with their Vegemite. Mmm. Nice. 
I don't... Wait, did I... Oh, no, I just said I wasn't immune to propaganda. Um, so, basically, I'm doing intermittent fasting, right? And the point of fasting is that when you don't eat, your body goes into ketosis. So, it's like doing keto every night on and off without having to actually change your diet, just how much you eat, pretty much, is the idea behind it. Or And also the idea is just to input more, ca I mean, less calories, right? But there are certain benefits from fasting for a certain period of time, right? And in order for your body to activate those benefits, it's about not consuming any calories for that time. And I remembered that beer has enough calories that it breaks the fast. It breaks the fast. If you drink beer when you're or beer or wine, not not spirits like vodka because there's no calories in it, but like beer is very calorific. So if you drink beer when you're fasting, it breaks the fast. Um, and therefore, my logic is <laughs> there's no point in fasting. It's just an excuse because I'm hungry and I want to eat. I didn't eat that much today, so I think it's okay. Um, but I, obviously it's not ideal. I thought it shouldn't be. Why do I have this book out? Fuck off, back under my bed. But um, one slice of toast is not really enough for a, a growing boy like myself. <laughs> so um, I'm going to be making a little... I'll, I'll put a little thing I have in the... A little frozen thing, Greg's, in the oven and have that. It's not particular. It, it's a bit... Fuck it, I don't give a shit about anything. This beer is not doing as much as it listen, look look how much I've already drank and I'm I'm I mean I might I may seem kinda of quite drunk, but I'm not actually that drunk. Like I guess it's just it's probably the equivalent of like three beers, so I guess I shouldn't expect to be that drunk because it's it's only beer. Um, but yeah, I kind of thought I'd be I'd be a bit sloshed by now, but I'm really just maybe the same feeling you would get when you're two and a half beers in, which is pretty much what I am. So I don't know why I'm surprised by that, but for some reason I'm surprised by that. I might have to dig into that 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 whiskey I have. Um, the, the the nice whiskey. I have to give myself a little bit of that to help me out over here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. down a bit, 10 more minutes, I would say. I think I just had a bit of an autistic meltdown. <clears throat> I think I just had a meltdown. I just started screaming, and I hit myself, and I hit the table very hard, and it hurt a lot, but I didn't stop. And I start hitting my head, and I was screaming about stuff, really loud. All the windows are open. Everyone on the street definitely heard that. Well, it was like I wasn't in control. It was crazy. It was like I wasn't expecting it to happen, and then it instantly passed. Like I went a bit, I went completely nuts for about ten seconds, then I ran away into the bathroom, shut the door, and within another 10 seconds I was completely back to normal, except now my hand was hurting a lot more, and I had some adrenaline pumping through my system.
I just thought that was really fucked up. It was literally like I was not in control of my own self. I didn't make any... It wasn't like... Like, sometimes, when I, if I get angry, right? If I was to get angry, it's like you hold it in and you hold it in. And then if I was to shout at someone, it's like, okay, fuck it. I've made the decision. Fuck it. I can't... I can't... I don't have the energy to hold it in. Any, that wasn't what it was like. It wasn't like I... I made any decision to shout or to to have a freak out. It just happened to me. I wasn't expecting it to happen. I didn't feel like it would have happened. I just felt like suddenly I was doing it. Or maybe someone else was doing it to me. So I'm like, I was... Comp- I was definitely not there. I felt really bad. I showered at my mom for basic. I mean, I had a um, a reason to like there was there was a triggering event, but I re- I overreacted a lot. But it wasn't like like normal. Like if I if I was like. Oh, this is five years ago when I was a teenager, and it's like, oh, well, I'm having an argument with my mom. I showered at her. Like that's that's one I've done that before. I don't feel good about it, but I've done that before when I was a teenager. I think most people have, right? This is different. It wasn't at all like that. It was like I was completely normal having a conversation with her. Then suddenly she said something about my mental health, and then it was literally like I had no. I just started screaming and just slamming the desk and sl- slamming my head, and then I and then it was back to normal completely. And it was literally I can't describe the sensation. It was like I, it was like I suddenly someone else inhabited my body and just started doing it. Like I completely was not in control of myself. That's really scary. That's really not something. That was not a good time. That I got problems. I need help. But no one can help me. What are they going to do? Take the monkey out of me? No one can do that to to a person. <clears throat> I think the only explanation I can come up with is that I was, in a, that I was just overstu- like incredibly overstimulated and, and then whatever happened was like the lot. I don't even remember exactly what happened. But then whatever happened was like the last little tip over the scale and then suddenly I just had a meltdown. But then it, it lasted very it ended very rapidly, which is that's what makes it so wild. I literally walked out the I literally ran out of the room to the bathroom, closed the door, sat down for like ten, twenty seconds, and then walked back in and said, Don't know what don't know what got into me there and she just was looking at me like I was a fucking nuts, which I am, clearly. What's on? What's going on up there in my head? What's all that about? Why did that happen? How can I never have that happen again, please? I don't want to shout at my mum. She's a lovely person. I don't want that to ever happen again in my life. Please stop. What the fuck do I do about this? What if that happens again? I have to make sure that it never happens again. I'm a cat and I'm gonna make sure that it never happens again in my life. There's no way I can let that happen again. I don't know what, what I would do if that happened. I wasn't in control. I couldn't have stopped it. There was no, there was no me involved. There was no me there to stop it because it just happened. And then I, by the time I was back, it was over. I was like I blacked out for a second. But I was I, I mean it was like I was it was like someone else took control of my body. I had no input. I had no input on that. My conscious mind had zero input on whatever just happened.
Now my head hurts and my hand really hurts. I slammed my hand so hard. What the fuck was that about? That was very strange. That's definitely one of the stranger things that's happened to me recently. <sighs> Fucking shit. There's shit in my brain making me do things now. That's good. That's a fun new development. I got my fucking CIA making me do things now. That's great. That's great. That's a great new development. That's just what I needed. That's just what I needed, really. <laughs> just what I needed. I mean, I guess, I guess that was just a meltdown. I guess I was just overstimulated and I just had a meltdown. I mean, it, I don't know when the last time that happened to me was, if ever. But, well, maybe since I was a child. I mean, it's how, like, I... No, no, I wouldn't say anything like that has ever happened before in that specific, particular way where I don't feel like I'm in control of my body. That's a new development. Hmm. Well, that's fun. Just when you think the mentals can't get more healthy, they just do it. Ain't no mental, ain't no health. Ain't no mental, ain't no health. I mean, I immediately... I just want to make this clear so, so people don't think I'm an asshole. I immediately apologized. I, I, I helped my mom out with some stuff. Up. Like, I... She was just shocked. I, I think she understands that there was a mental health thing because then she was trying to tell me, you got to go to therapy or <laughs> whatever, right? So I think she understands that I didn't do it on purpose. But I still feel really bad about that. I don't, I don't know what to do about that. How do I make it up so that it's like I didn't do that? Because I don't want that to have happened. Uh, it's time to contact some lemurs. It's time to contact some lemurs. I need to be more into the Murian time sorcery, to be honest. I'm I'm flapping on my time sorcery. I have to be real with you here. Don't I? Yeah, whatever. Who's there, Ray? Eh? Who's there? Who's there, eh? Who's watching me? Who's watching me? You a bunch of sex perverts? You a bunch of sex perverts? Who's watching me? Why? Why are you doing this? Why are you, why are you watching me? Just because this exists. Bunch of sex perverts. There's something horrific about this. It's kind of disgusting, and the, it's, it's it's very disgusting. It looks like something that shouldn't happen. look at it. The more you look at it, the more bad it is. I don't know if you can see all the details in this slow resolution, but I can see all the details, and it's not good. You don't want this. It's an orange, by the way. I think that's going to not be in my mouth. I don't think I want that anywhere near me. I watched a... 
I watched Justice League, Zack Snyder Cut, and uh, I don't really have that much to say about it. I thought it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Um, I wasn't bored by it, which is good. Like, a four-hour movie that isn't boring, uh, like, that's impressive on its own. So, that's pretty much my opinion. Oh, the other thing is, it, I'd say it's the only time I've ever actually enjoyed superhero fights. Like, I thought the, I thought the, I thought that was done pretty interestingly. But, eh. Uh, Anyway, I don't know what the fuck today has been. Just a wacky day in the life of no thank you. I can't not drink. But I only have... The only alcohol I have is this expensive whiskey. Right? I mean, I have enough of it, but it's a shame, because I don't really want to be drinking it. Like, I'd rather be making this last than drinking it. As much as I am drinking it. the alcoholism has kind of played out I haven't really been drinking I mean I've only recently gotten back into drinking every night I'm not drinking that much but I feel like I don't know is it played out and boring to even be like look at me I'm drinking alcohol on YouTube aren't I so cool like I feel like it's a holdover from the digi stuff you know It's a bit of a holdover from the Digi stuff. But also, I mean, why lie? <laughs> why why not show it? If it, if it, if the point if it this if this, as I said, is a series of documentaries about me. Well that's me documenting me. Cheers. That tastes so good. Definitely highly recommend Lefroig if you get a chance. Lefroig. 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 You'll know what it is. That's definitely a high recommendation for me. The reason I've been struggling to make music recently is because I haven't had any emotions. I've just been an emotionless husk. I finally experienced emotions today, and and what do you know, I made a bunch of music. Uh, But I don't know how to have emotions again, consistently. Maybe I just need to have more input, and that will just translate to more output because I uh there's very little conflict in my life I mean there's the co- all the conflicts that are in my life that aren't emotional conflicts oh well I'm I'm making steps in directions to be honest I'm I'm stepping in directions so that's fine actually I'm stepping in directions so I'm dealing with it. Yeah, I'm stepping. I uh, well, you know how they got Poe's law, and they got Murphy's law, and and stuff like this, right? 
I I thought I I'd add my own um my own chip. Uh, no thank you's law. No thank you's law. Wherever there's an extreme or heavy genre of music, someone will try and mix it with death metal, and it will always suck. That's the no thank you's law. Wherever there's an extreme or heavy genre of music, someone will try and mix it with death metal, and it will always suck. For example, trap metal. Dark trap was an extreme heavy genre of music. Trap metal, the worst thing to ever be made. Rap music. Rap was a heavy genre of music in the 90s, like Boom Bap, Wu-Tang, Horrorcore, you know, Grave Diggers type stuff. Rap rock is terrible. Everyone knows this. Although I still, I have to say, I've got a little bit of a soft spot for um, Limp Biscuit. For some reason, I kind of don't mind Limp Biscuit. Like, I don't think it's good, but I can I can kind of get behind it in a goofy way, in a bathos kind of way. Ba- bathos, bathos. Rap rock is bad. Breakcore is a um, heavy genre of music. Igor is the worst breakcore producer. Right? Do you, are you following me? Are you following me? What are the hell? When does this happen? This just always happens. It just happens constantly. I'm not saying there's anything problem with metal fusions in general. Right? Like, there's some good metal fusions. Normally, it's best when metal is incestuous. Like, for example, Blackened Doom or something like that. Like, that's cool. That shit's sick. Or when, you know, Metal and Punk fuse. Like, actually, I don't like Flash that much. But, uh, um, uh, Sludge Metal is cool. Like, that sort of thing, pretty neat. But when it's like, the, for example, the, the way that Hardcore developed into just, um, like a bad form of metal. What do they call it? Slam, yeah, awful, awful music, the worst type of music. Um, it, you you can find this case for pretty much any heavy or extreme genre of music. Someone somewhere has tried to fuse it with metal, and I guess there are like, but the thing is, it's death metal specifically. If you don't do it with death metal, if you choose another type of metal, or you just take various um, features of metal in general and apply it to other genres, sometimes that can be good. For example, there are people who mix like, um, like uh, what's the word? I guess digital hardcore. I don't really know. Or industrial, like did, like I'm thinking about. Uh, I don't know what I'm thinking about, but there's like, or for example, um, what am I, I just had, I just woke up, so my brain is not really in it right now, um, what the fuck was I just thinking about, okay, so like, like sun, like drone music is pretty intense and heavy in a, in a different way, and it's pretty extreme in a different way. And they fused it with doom and black metal, and that sounds good. I like Sun. I like Earth. I like those bands. Or Boris. Well, Boris is more doom than drone, but yeah. Or noise music is pretty extreme. Uh, like Endon. That's a great band. Endon. Noise and metal fusion. Um. Or uh, there's this one guy. I always forget his name. Who does like weird fucking grindcore free jazz that shit's fucking sick I mean it's not really that much of my thing but it's alright um and I like cyber grind I like I, you know hot take I, I like cyber grind I think it's a fun genre I made a cyber grind album I made a my, people don't know this about me I made a Mario 64 themed cyber grind album called um killing cops in 0.5 A presses it's out on x forty nine sounds dot bandcamp dot com if you wanna if you wanna listen to it it's terrible <laughs> it's just an excuse to have a bunch of my sixty four speed running memes in a in an album for no reason <laughs> yeah it's called uh, killing cops in zero point five a presses by insurrectionary scuttlebug jamboree uh check it out
You know the No Thank You lamp? I'm not too much of a big fan of it. I've always kind of wished that they had a... I don't know. It's all right. But I I feel like I could have a nicer lamp. There's a cool lamp over here. Let me show you. That's a fucking lamp. Look at this. Look at this motherfucker. It's nice. It's like industrial design. That's, that's a fucking lamp, you know. My lamp is like a little pussy bitch lamp. I mean, it does its job, which I guess is what matters the most. But uh, in terms of design, the red fabric, uh, it's not too much my style. Jesus, God, you're good. Oh, no, thank you. You're not supposed to toast a bagel. Firstly, um, fuck you. I cook how I want. And secondly, these bagels are, uh, they were in the freezer. So I have to toast them. I don't think I'm going to use these eggs because they cracked. And for some reason, I'm paranoid about that fact. So I'm just going to not do it. I have some three sliced chicken. Smells good. Why is this one done, but this one's not done? Maybe this one's warmer? I don't know. Guess I'll never know. But yeah, got it. Got to slice it up. Ain't the, e ain't the easiest to do with one hand. I'll tell you that much for free. No charge. All right, that's definitely done by now. Yes. Gang shit. Okay, here's the plan. Here's the plan. Now, while it's still warm, shit. Shit, drop the phone, drop the cheese, everything's still It's fine, we're still going. We're still going. While it's still warm, we've got to put the cheese on. There you go, cheese is on. Hopefully that's warm enough to melt the cheese. Yeah, the last thing you want is unmelted cheese. Maybe I even put it in in here for, for a minute, just to melt the cheese. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. While I'm doing the chicken, I'm going to turn the oven on. See, you would think I would do the grill or the broiler for you Americans, but no. I'm going to put it in the oven because the grill would be too harsh, I think. Call that a knot. Uh, let's just put it here. I think that's a, that's a good idea. You know what? The classic no thank you cooking angle. This is just pre-cooked uh, roast chicken. It's quite dry, but it's not bad. I think what you want to do though. Put a salt, put a pepper. Mayo. And English mustard. That could be a little bit more than that, come on. We'll play no games around here. Okay, now we mix it all up. That's pretty much, that's pretty much it. It's not the most complicated thing in the world.
cheese hasn't melted that much, so I'm not really sure what to do about that. By much, I mean really at all. Um, maybe I should have done the, the, the grill. I'm not sure what the best idea here is, to be honest. Um, maybe we just say fuck it. The cheese doesn't have to be too melted. Chicken goes on the bagel. And then as an extra little treat, let me make sure this is all on. Oh no, my face. Don't worry, my hands are clean. It's fine. Make sure it doesn't move, because if it's not if it's not positioned properly, then as soon as I pick it up, it will just all fall out. So just gotta make sure it's spread nicely. I don't mind getting my hands dirty for the sake of good food. Okay. Now there's one final little trick. Two slices of salami. Maybe even three. Because you know what? I'm just feeling wild today. I don't feel like I need to obey anyone's rules. So I'm going to do three whole slices. A little bit of extra pepper. And that's it. That's what you need in life. Now that, my friends, <laughs> is a bagel. Chicken, cheese, mustard, mayo, salami, bagel. Drugs don't exist. They're just an externalization of consciousness. Now, when I say that, I don't mean in a sort of Terence McKenna mushroom godhead, oh, the mushroom has a consciousness. No, 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 none of that. No, don't believe in that. What I'm saying is, they are simply an extension of your own mind and will. Uh, what is a drug? It's something you put into your body that was well, uh, something that you put into your body in order to to change it in some way, right? To get some sort of desired effect, and uh, you know, possibly a psychoactive drug is one that you is is something that you take that changes your mental state um, in some way. Okay. This all makes sense, but what what else could like? Well, what are the limits of this? Okay, I'm I'm trying to find the, the best possible way to go step by step through this argument. What are the at what point do you draw the line? So, uh, let, let's say for example, uh, uh, there was there's a you you could take a certain drug to feel better, right? But there are also other things you put into your body to feel better. For example, food, um, in multiple ways. If you eat a really nice, delicious burger, that's also something you're putting into your body in order to make you feel better in your mental state. But that's more like closer to art, I would say, than drugs in that sense, because it's more like something that your senses appreciate and that makes you feel better. Um, so that might be a bit of a, you know, maybe, maybe you'd say that's closer to art than it is to drugs. Well, maybe art is drugs. They're both extensions of human consciousness. But even if you want to say, well, that doesn't count, okay, but there's another way you, you can eat things which make you feel better, and that is by eating healthily. If you eat a bunch of healthy foods and you exercise every day and you do all of this stuff, allegedly, I've never seen evidence of this in my life. That's not true, actually. I've done it. If you eat healthy, it's crazy. If you eat healthy, you just start to feel a little bit better. It's very strange. Um, but there you go. Or the opposite. You can achieve some sort of desired effect by not eating, by fasting. Many cultures, like indigenous cultures, go through um, trials or uh, shamanic, shamanic, sh shamanic, shamanic, I don't know what, shamanic uh, rituals which involve long fasts. And, for example, the Aborigines in Australia, they didn't, as far as we know, no, 
there's one plant that might be psychedelic, but some of them never had any the psychedelic plants or anything like that, but they still had very similar shamanic traditions to cultures that did have those sorts of things because they would enter uh, delirious or altered states of consciousness not through drugs but through dreams and through um, uh, uh, fasting for a long, long, for multiple days at a time. And you, you go delirious and you have visions, right? So through controlling the food you put in your body, you can also change your mental state. And yet no one would say that starvation is a drug. Why? Very strange. Uh, really, a drug is something that produces the desired effect. It's when you want something to happen in your mind or your body, but you don't have the power internally to do it. You need to externalize your will. If you, If I was going to go on stage and give a, a talk or something, do some public speaking. I am relatively okay with public speaking, but some other people get very anxious and they might have to take one of these, a beta blocker, to calm them down before they do public speaking, very common. Now, I can, dis I can calm myself down before public speaking by just thinking about it. But other people, their brains work in different ways and they would find it more effective to externalize their will and use a drug to do that. In another way, other people might um, roll themselves to learn something internal and do this via uh, maybe therapy or talking to a friend or meditation whereas some other people might want to learn something about themselves and do it via a psychedelic experience. They're basically the same thing. What do drugs do? Drugs, are almost, there are only two categories of drugs, recreational and medicinal, both of which are actually a very blurry line. In reality, we take drugs to feel good or to feel better, whether it's to feel better from being sick or to just feel happy which happens to be the things that most people desire in their life, is to feel better. Most people don't... The drugs that most people take are drugs that make them feel better, whether it's getting high or getting cured from an illness. Both of those things are drugs to make us feel better. We don't develop drugs to make you worse. That would be ridiculous. We have a name for those drugs, though. We call them poisons. They're not drugs. Um, and people generally, unless they're committing suicide or for some other uh, reason, don't willingly consume poison. There are ex exceptions. But generally, people don't willingly consume poisons without a reason. Um, whereas people willingly consume drugs to change them, their interior, interior state. Uh, it's an externalization of your own will, of your own desire, of your own consciousness your desire for change. Desire is change. Desire and change are married concepts. In the same way you can change your perception by thinking in a certain way or behaving in a certain way that produces a certain hormone, you could also take that hormone or a molecule that fits into the same receptor as that hormone or neurotransmitter and experience a similar or same emotion and a similar or same physical change or mental change. You could, on the one hand, be happy for any number of reasons and secrete dopamine, or you could take a drug with a molecular structure that crosses the blood-brain barrier and binds to your dopamine receptors. As far as your brain is concerned, it's the same functional thing. Drugs don't really exist. Happiness itself could be a drug. And if they could, they'd ban it. They're damn trying. Broccoli is a drug because it changes your internal state when you consume it into your body. But obviously that's a ridiculous thing to say, right? Or is it? Is what what there is no, there's nothing, there's nothing. Sometimes drugs and poisons are the same thing. This guy, that's full of poison. 
I read about an ancient Chinese drug uh, called cold food powder. It was made with like mercury, sulfur, and cyanide, but they take it in very low quantities and have a somehow delirious and euphoric experience. Although no one knows the exact recipe or quantity, so no one's been able to recreate it. Because it was in ancient China. Poets would take this. Holy men would take this. In the same way that if I want to relax, I might take a warm bath. Is a warm bath a drug? It's changing your external surroundings in a way to take advantage of some loophole in your body's programming which makes you feel better. Now, when we didn't evolve to take warm baths, and yet I don't think people would argue that warm baths are a drug, but they could be classed as one. I don't think people would argue that broccoli is a drug, but they could be classed as one. In the same way that changing even just the way you think could be a drug. Ideology. Narrative stories. If you read some philosophy that changes, or fiction, or anything, that changes your worldview, is that not the same as a drug? Some external factor influencing your state of mind? If I listen to a sad song and get sad, or read some philosophy that changes my perception of the world, what's so different about that compared to taking some sort of drug to do the same thing? There is very little that's different about it. And you don't even necessarily need to listen to music or read philosophy. It can all happen internally. You could have an internal revelation which changes your worldview or mindset. You could remember a sad memory and become sad, or remember a happy memory and become happy, or any number of things. This is just consciousness affecting itself. That is how it works. It's how consciousness works. It affects itself. The brain is the only organ that consciously changes itself. Drugs are just an extension of the brain constantly, consciously changing itself and most likely have been used for majority of history, even pre-human history. Animals also enjoy uh, drugs. Many documented cases. Animals aren't conscious. I don't believe humans were conscious for most of our existence. <coughs> this is an interesting, this is another tidbit. If you read ancient texts and epics such as the Iliad or that one Indian one that I can't pronounce, the characters never have an internal understanding of why they do things. They never talk about it in any of these ancient epics. Great works of literature. I've read the Iliad, I've read the Odyssey, I haven't read the Indian one, but I've seen a, uh, and I, like I know what it's about. I know the story, even though I haven't read it. Um, the characters never internally question why they do things, or never express understanding about themselves or their place in the world. This has led to the theory that consciousness is a relatively recent development in human history, at least to the level that modern humans have it. Dated to around 3,000 years ago. Before that, human beings may have been more conscious than other animals, owing to their usage of language, but they would be quite different in their mindset from modern humans. Now, based on my knowledge of evolution, I say it's unlikely this was a physical change, 
given that the time scales are too short and the uh it is a non localized phenomenon. Almost certainly this was mimetic rather than genetic. Something in our environment caused us to ascend to a higher plane of consciousness than we were on before. And once again, it's happened now. The internet has changed consciousness in the younger generation where our perception of time is completely different. People no longer think of events as happening in the present. We think of events for many, maybe not me, people who document their lives on Instagram and Snapchat and such like platforms. Imagine the events that they're experiencing as if they're being looked back on from a future self. This is unprecedented in human history. In addition to this, the internet has changed our connections with other humans to a uh, closer to resembling a network rather than a circle. The way we experience time is different. The way we experience location is different. The way we experience interpersonal interaction is completely different. And the way we intake information is different. Lack of information is no longer an excuse or rather a factor. Excuse is not the right word. When everyone carries a pocket Navi, any question, there's a mega corporation willing to answer. You just don't know whether that answer is true. That said in the Middle Ages that people knew inherent truths to objects' existence. Every object contained within itself a metaphysical reason for being an explanation. Ancient people weren't stupid, although I did just say they weren't conscious. They weren't stupid. They just thought differently. If you look in English and Irish folklore, there is mentions of elves constantly. And yet, somehow, no one had ever seen an elf. Why did no one ever think maybe these elves aren't real? Well, to them it was self-evident. If your horse got sick, that was evidence that elves had been there meddling with your horse. Because why else do horses get sick? Well, horses get sick because of elves, therefore the elves are real because my horse is sick. These things are self-evident. These things are known. After the Enlightenment, this level, of, this type of thinking became less prominent in Western civilization, but it's still very prominent in other places in the world. And not that exact type of thinking, but similar types of thinking. And now, Enlightenment thinking in the 70s and continuing was replaced with a, well, is in the process of being replaced with a, a new type of thinking Sometimes it's called postmodernism. Oftentimes it's heavily related with capitalist realism. But I propose that this is only the early stages of this type of thinking, and really we are becoming wired people. This is just the very first foray, the first centimeter of our step into posthumanism. And by our, I don't mean our, because we're not, it's nothing to do with us. In our war against time, we have become our own drugs. Somehow just earlier in this very video, 
I was talking about, I picked a random Star Trek episode out of nowhere. I could have picked any Star Trek episode to talk about. But I was like, uh, what example do I think of? First one that pops into my head was Measure of a Man. I walked into the fucking room today, the other room, to go get food. And what do I see on TV? But Measure of a Man, the exact precise episode that I was just talking about. Hmm, very suspicious. Someone, someone's doing something to me. Someone's heading for me. Someone's coming for me. Hmm. Could have been any Star Trek Next Generation episode on TV. They're not airing in order or anything. <clears throat> They're airing random episodes. Didn't even know it was airing at this time. Don't know. No, no clue. No clue. Happened, happened to me pick Measure of Man. Happened to go into the other room when Star Trek is on TV, of all things. The, and they happened to be playing the exact episode that I randomly picked. <clears throat> all the other times... I've gone in there, and there's been star. Every all the other times I've been airing Star Trek recently, it's been random episodes from TNG, and like most of them were not like not just the best known ones. You might think like, oh, well, I guess it's not so bad because they just maybe they're just playing like a highlight. So if they're just playing random episodes and, and not in in order, maybe they're playing like highlights, like the, the most popular or best known stuff. No, they're not. They played a bunch of random episodes that no one cares about. It's been going on. And today it was just happened to be the one I mentioned earlier. How strange, how strange. Someone, someone's got something planned. Considering making another mistake. So, no anime seems to appear. I, wanna, I need to watch anime right now. Like, I need something that the YouTube harvest today, not good. Not good. Two videos, not good. Um... Not enough. I mean, I'm going to watch this Dodes Might video. Actually, I, I technically have a three and a half hour or more harvest because I have this Dodes Might video and then I have a video about the history of RuneScape that I still haven't watched for some reason, even though it's probably going to be good. Um, but uh, besides those two videos, maybe... Basically, I need to fill the void of my soul with anime girls. I have I, I have a desire. But... There's no anime that I can think of right now that fills the desires that I need. Like, no, I was just going through my, my list, my my anime list. Where the fuck is it? Here. I was going through my uh, plan to watch. I'm just looking at, just scrolling through, and absolutely, there's like 100, 230 things on here, and nothing seems interesting to me. I, I mean, Aria was actually the only thing that I thought maybe I should watch, but you can't binge watch Aria. Like, I need something that I can just binge watch, and none of this seems like something I can binge watch. Mm, nope. I don't like. I don't think I'll, I can binge watch any of this stuff. Pretty much. Uh. Like, m most of it is either too slow or too, in, like, interesting to just... I don't know. None of it seems very binge... Maybe I should watch Natsuda Drops. Nah, I'm not really in the mood. Maybe I should watch Neo Ranga. Hmm, maybe I should watch Neo Ranga. Hey, look, Digi reviewed it. Oh, hold on a second. Anyway... I don't think I'll watch Neo Ranga because it seems a bit too brainy for me right now. I'm not really in a brainy mood. You know, I had a lot of fun watching Doctor Stone yesterday, season two. That was that was great. Um, uh, like you just, I just watched it all in one go. It was easy to watch. Every episode ends on a cliffhanger, so you want to watch the next one. That's that's what. Uh, maybe I just want to get into Shonen, but the problem is most Shonen aren't. 26 or 13 episodes. Most of them are like a billion episodes. And that's not really what I want right now. In addition, I can't think of any that I would be particularly interested in right now. Oh yeah, by the way, they started working again. Like, do you remember ages ago in the old No Thank You arc when they were always doing work? Like, the, the neighbors were always doing drilling and banging and stuff. And it would always wake me up and I'd be mad all the time. 
Uh, they stopped doing it because of COVID, but now they're back. So that's fun. <clears throat> Great to record music with that happening, isn't it? Yeah. It's crazy how this is just acceptable. How this is louder than anything in the natural world and everyone just accepts it. Stupid. I don't think anyone should ever be able to allowed to use power tools unless they have like some sort of setup where it's not gonna bother people. <clears throat> I mean, not that I actually mind the noise of power tools. Like I like I like noisy. I like I like noise music. That's a stupid sound. I don't know if you can even hear that. It sounds like someone's farting. It's not good. It's not a good sound. Like at least make it some you know, type of noise, not just wet fart sounds. Anyway, don't think I'll watch uh, Neo Ranga because it seems too too brain heavy for me right now. What else have we got? Noragami? Actually, maybe Noragami would be good for me to watch right now. Because I don't think it would be particularly good. It's very normy, which means it must be very easy to watch. But I don't, maybe that's also the problem. You see, this is the thing. This is the thing, right? Like, like I like, I like thing. I want something that's easy to watch, but I don't want something normy because normy things are generally boring. Like, I want something that keeps my attention by being interesting. You know what I'm trying to say? Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is there's not much here that looks particularly good to me. Like, everything that I go through, I just have this whole thing where I'm like, eh, do I really want to watch this, though? And the answer is just no, basically, in general. Uh, I, I, I'm so far that I'm thinking about watching Toloveru. Toraburu. Maybe I actually should watch Toloveru. Like, that's kind of a good idea, to be honest. All right, well, I might watch To Love Lou, but basically because I was like, no anime on my anime list is look on my plan to watch is looking particularly appealing to me right now, um, maybe I'll just go for a visual novel because both of the visual novel type things I was reading is Doraku Riot, which I started to find really boring. And, um... Yeah, like, uh, I I read a spoiler of the plot by mistake, but I'm glad I did because the spoiler made it, like, it, the, it revealed how stupid the plot gets. <laughs> Apparently the plot, like, according, uh, I won't tell you exactly what it is. Maybe I should. Basically the spoiler, yeah, no one no one who watches my videos is going to read Dracuriot. So, uh, essentially, Dracuriot is set in a city that's sort of, like, off the coast of Japan, a little island city um, where like gambling is legal and prostitution is legal, um, and that's like. But it really, it's a front because it's actually like that's just the, the way it makes money to sustain itself. And the real reason for the city's existence is like a containment zone for vampires, right? Like vampires are real. No one knows they're real, but they live and like occupy this city. And then there's like. The, the, there's there's a stupid crime force. It's like it's an, oh, but it's technically not the police, but they act like the police, and they like stop crime in the city, and they stop like they deal with vampire crime basically, and that's the the plot of the visual novel. Um, I started playing it because I saw cute vampire girl, and I like cute vampire girl. I'm just you know, I'm not immune to cute vampire girl. As you well know, the only poster I have in my room, Shinobu, right? But really, her personality isn't that great. The main girl, none of the girls are particularly great. Um, and the plot is, it's, it's a very long, so it's quite a slow plot. But anyway, I read the spoiler that it's just stupid because the entire plot revolves around drugs and like how evil drugs are. Because there's a new drug that affects... Because drug vampires are immune to drugs, right? They can't get drunk, they can't get high. Pretty standard vampire stuff. 
but there's a new drug that that is super evil because even vampires can get addicted to it and um and then there's some I read a plot that like somehow someone starts like a a vampire revolution and there's like it just turns into an all out war that's stupid I don't fucking care about that I mean there's intrigue a bit about the main characters um the main character has like every vampire has a special power this is a bit unique um but uh and the main character is like uh he seems to have multiple powers and you're not supposed to have multiple powers and it's like oh why does he have multiple powers that's kind of interesting and i kind of want to know but not enough to read it for 50 hours <laughs> no enough to put cuz i don't like I don't want to see these characters be in a vampire war. The action parts of the, the Vienna are the worst parts. And so if that's where the he- it's heading, then it sounds like something I don't care about. So I don't really... There's nothing really that's keep, that would keep me coming back at, to that story. So I think I'm going to drop it. Um, just like I also dropped Prisma earlier, by the way. Also, I think I might have to come back to this video because I think I'm gonna go eat now. It's been like ten hours since the last time I fucking uh, recorded the last bit, so I barely remember what I was talking about. But I think I was talking about Dracula. Uh, so the other visual novel I was reading was um, Shari no Kuni Himawari no Shoujo, uh, but I accidentally deleted my saves <laughs> and I don't care about the care about it enough to um play through it even if it's just on skip mode to get back to where i was also it's been like four months or more since i played it so i don't know if i, I mean i actually i remember the vo- the plot vaguely well it had some interesting world building for the characters like i'm i'm so surprised that i haven't other than Subahibi i and cross channel uh and actually magical marriage lunatics was generic but okay like basically i'm surprised at how poor the standard is for characters in visual novels as far as i've read so far like none of them uh, again outside of those two like none of them have really had any characters who i thought were particularly moe um which is interesting uh so yeah, that was another one I was reading that I, uh, you know, I would actually recommend it. I probably shouldn't drop it. Like it was good enough that I didn't really have any particular problems with it. Um, but I'm just going to drop it anyway because I I don't like it enough to care enough to think. I basically I found myself not wanting to read it, and that probably means it wasn't that good. So that, and then I was also for a brief period playing. Um, Sengoku Dance, right? Which is a visual novel slash strategy game. Um, but I rapidly lost interest in that because the gameplay is very repetitive and I also fucked up early game because there's no tutorial. I just didn't really know what to do. I didn't know how to play properly. And so I fucked up early game and that meant I was basically fucked for the whole game and I don't like the gameplay enough to want to go back and replay it from the start now that I know how to play. So I guess I'm not finishing that either. It's also really fucking long, and it also doesn't have a plot, really. Like it, I mean, it has a plot, but the plot doesn't matter. It's just a, more like an, a nuki gay. Like, it's more about just the gameplay and the sex, and the sex isn't very... Like, the etchy scenes aren't very good. They're, they're very brief, like, they're more like, I don't really know who they're there for. <laughs> like, they're too quick to, to you know, d- do what you got to do to them. You, like, they last, like, not long enough. And there's only, like, a couple drawings per scene. So, it's yeah, not that great. But the gameplay is fine. Like, it's, there's actually some depth to it, but, um... I think you would need to be a different type of autism than I am, I am in order to really get, if you want to, like, actually get good at the game. And I don't have that type of autism. 
like it, I would actually say that the gameplay is very that it's very stat based and I generally don't like games that are very stat based like I like games that are more about the skill of performing an action rather than the skill of knowing a bunch of s stats and stuff uh, but it was fun while it lasted I was having some fun playing that but yeah I don't really I, I ended up deleting after not playing it for like a month I was just going through my computer clearing up space and I was like eh fuck it I don't think I'm going to pick this one up again because I hit a wall where I, I couldn't really progress any further because I would just consistently lose this particular battle and the more times I lost it well I would be sometimes I mean I would reload saves you can save scum relatively easily in the game but like it, basically the, I got my I, I, I essentially soft locked myself <laughs> Pretty much, and I would have had to, unless there's some mechanic I'm not aware of, I would have had to just restart from the beginning in order to actually play it properly and not just uh, get to the point where I can't win because I didn't put enough stats into certain things early game because I didn't know what they were and what they did because there's no tutorial because you're expected to have played the previous Lance games, I think. But the previous Lance games aren't like that, I thought. I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to have re just read a a little man a document that comes with the game that do, whatever it doesn't matter it's not it's not I'm not missing out on that much by not playing it um although it was quite fun for a while I would recommend it if you're into strategy games even if you don't care about edgy stuff I would recommend it as a decent strategy game um so those were the three visual novels I was playing all three of which I dropped oh and the other one I dropped was uh, Rubber, which I already talked about ages ago when I dropped it. Um, and now we get into the thing I was actually going to talk about. The reason I dropped Rubber was because it had the, the thing that visual novels do where they're way too long because they their Japanese audience expects, well, if you pay full price for a game, you expect it to be long. And so they're always way too long and drawn out. And that means that the plot is just fucking stretched so thin and the characters are stretched so thin because they really should be half the length that they are. It's like the fourth vision, like the third vision novel I've played like that. So anyway, today I was thinking, uh, what the fuck was that game called? Um, oh yeah, Wagamama High Spec, right? Wagamama High Spec. I thought, maybe I should download this one. And I read the reviews and they both say the same thing that I thought, that I said about For Another, which is that the common route is great and then the character routes are way too long and not very good uh, and not very funny. So there is an anime of Wagamama High Spec, but it's terrible. It's like three minute episodes, whereas this is a 50 hour long visual novel. So obviously it's not going to be good, but I don't know if this is even good. I kind of like the very otaku -y art style. Let me turn off the explicit real quick. Safe only, I think. You, like, I kind of like the the way it's, the sort of sh shameless modern otaku-ness of it. Uh, I like how they're in made outfits, and they all have just just the biggest bazoingas possible. Look at these things, man. Look at them. I like the shamelessness of it. I, I, <laughs> look, that's not how clothes work. That's just not how clothes work. This is impossible. It's physically... Uh, the one with small tits that has bigger tits than any woman I've ever seen. <laughs> It's ridiculous, but that's kind of like that's what appeals to me about it is the attackiness, the schlockiness of it, right? Because I'm not in the mood. I tried to watch a video about philosophy today, and it just completely broke my brain. Like I just couldn't, I couldn't process it. It was like trying to do a difficult math problem just to understand sentences. It was fucking, yeah, my brain not in the mood right now, so I needed something schlocky, and I thought, should I just torture myself because I'll I'll stop playing it, enjoy the common route. Uh, and then, once I'm invested, go into a character route and then hate it. Uh, and I thought, yeah, I should do that. <laughs> I also thought, maybe I should watch To Love Roo, which I already talked about previously, I think. But I don't think I'm going to watch To Love Roo, because I don't think I would enjoy it, or really get anything out of it. Um, so I'm going to... Do you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm going to throw in Wagamama High Spec, and... Also, the thing I'm going to do to fill up my time until that finishes torrenting is I'm just going to watch every single Casey Neistat video in order. Because, I don't know. 
I don't know why I'm going to do that. Why go? Mama. High spec. There's a restaurant in the UK called, called Wagamama, right? But it does Chinese food. Like, it actually, it just does vaguely Asian food. <laughs> like, it's not... Spe- like, Wagamama is a Japanese word. It means selfish, right, if I remember correctly. But the food there, they just do generic Asian dishes that don't really taste like anywhere. They don't taste specifically Japanese or Chinese or Korean it's not very good and it's overpriced. I wouldn't recommend going there ever, really. Uh, English fixed. That sounds good, right? English fixed. Seven gigs. Well, fuck it. Four cedars. See, this is what I deal with. The other day, I was having a conversation with Dotes Mate about torrenting but I forgot that if you torrent things see this is the thing if if you're a mate and you're torrenting whatever fucking Marvel movies you watch right there's like I like I, I torrented um, uh, Zach's the Snyder Cut right and it downloaded in seconds because it had thousands of people seeding it but I, that, that was a novel experience to me because I'm used to torrenting anime and visual novels which have like maximum 30, normally 10 or under. And they're also big because it's like a whole series or a whole game. So it takes forever, which is why my opinion on torrenting was that it's shit because it takes like an hour to download something before you can watch it and by then and the impulse to watch it might have gone so I was stream anime these days I used to talk but these days I mostly stream also the fact that my laptop my ThinkPad doesn't like 1080p video uh, it just likes the shit anything over 720p um, which is fine because I think it's because the screen isn't 1080p or whatever. I don't know why that happens. The video, however, whatever goes on inside computers, no idea how they work, but it doesn't like it. Uh, and a lot of torrents, the point of them, accidentally pressed the record button with my finger. Whoops. The point of a lot of people, like one of the things they say about torrenting is, oh, well, then you can get it in 1080p in great quality without streaming out of X and stuff. Yeah, but. Firstly, I can't. <laughs> I ha- I have to tone a 720p version. Sometimes there isn't one, um, and even then, I don't care. I'm I like watching anime. And, like I I like watching things in low. I don't watch YouTube in HD half the time. I watch it in like 480p. I I'm not a, a video file. Is that what the, I know? Audio file is a thing. I'm also not an audio file. Like. What's it going to do? Ruin the experience? I'm watching on a small screen. It's made for TV. Most anime isn't even... I don't think anime... Like, I'm used to watching standard definition anime because I watched a bunch of shit from pre-2010 when most things were two th- were um, standard definition. So, I don't really understand... And, like, a lot of my favorites are that. So, I don't understand what the appeal of high-definition anime is unless it's, like something that like unless it's like a Ghibli movie or something then I'm like okay I want to see this in the best possible way because it's like a masterful animation but most anime is shit animation um uh, most anime looks like shit TV anime unless there's some special even the one like even Ghost in the Shell standalone complex has moments of it kind of looking a bit like shit um and that one's like unusually well animated so there you go. Basically, my point was, I'm just about to torture myself because I've already played through three different games that had the same problem where the common route was good, which gets you invested, and then the character individual routes are way too long and also way worse than the common route, and I got mad and dropped them. And I'm currently downloading another visual novel that has the exact same problem, I guess just because I hate myself. Um, Wagamama High Spec... 
even with Japanese locale, just gives me this error. Um, I'm pretty sure I have Japanese fonts installed. Do I not have Japanese fonts installed? Do I not have Japanese fonts installed? I should, right? Hold on a minute. Do I have wine tricks? No. Okay, well, I'm going to try installing some shit and see if I can fix this. Just remembered that uh, so I spent ages trying to make Wine run Wagamama high spec on this computer. Wouldn't work. And I was like, fuck, guess I can't play that. Just remembered, I have a fucking Windows computer. <laughs> I completely forgot I had a laptop with Windows on it. But now, I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but I accidentally installed 32-bit Windows. And so now I'm like, well, if I'm turning this computer on again, I may as well install 64-bit Windows because there's fucking no reason to use 32-bit, and it's just stupid. It breaks half the fucking things I use. Um, I am going to have to redo TeamSpeak on this, although I don't use it that often, as you can tell from the fact that I forgot I had it, because I switched to Mumble, which runs on my Raspberry Pi over there. Uh, I can't get to that, anyway. Um, so... I guess I'm installing Windows 7. See how this goes. English. Yeah, I guess this is a Windows 7 install video now. Uh, not the United States. Estonian. Dis that's the most disgusting thing I can think of. I don't think... Yeah, I think this is... Yeah, that's fine. Install now. This is a jank ass fucking install process. <laughs> I guess it's more Nomi friendly than a command line interface. Oh well, this is gonna take ten fucking hours. So I don't know if I'll even get to play this. What am I doing? Windows Seven Ultimate. Sure. X eighty six. That's thirty two bit, right? X sixty four is. No, I mean, x86 is 64-bit, right? Let me make sure I did, because I have x86. Just make sure. Just make 100% sure. It might sound stupid. I found it. What the fuck? Okay, well, I don't know what that means, but I'm just going to press OK, because that seems fine, right? I accept the license terms. I wish I didn't, but sadly I do. Um, yeah, I'll keep, I'll just do that. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, it's okay. Overwrite everything, nothing important. Just a couple of visual novels and um, a TeamSpeak client, and all we'll, that's about it. Damn, this is the loudest disk drive in the universe. Uh, well, I think I'll just set this up over here, and meanwhile, grab my water. This video's been a bit wacky, hasn't it? Bit of a wacky video today. A little wacky video today. We've had some wacky moments, haven't we? We most certainly have. Let's get back, let's come back home to my baby. Well, this is going to take forever, so I'm just going to watch um, Sound Magical Index Season 2 because I watched um, Index and I watched. What's the, what's the other one? Is it Railgun? What is it? Railgun, I think. Yes. I watched Railgun. 
So I watched Index One and I watched Real Gun Season One, but I never finished. I never continued after that, mostly because it's not that good. <laughs> A whole Windows install for this. I haven't bothered to set up Wi-Fi. I just copied the files. I did a whole Windows install for this. If this don't work, nothing's helping me. Microsoft. We got, we got sound. Sound, but no picture. Oh no! Oh no! Run as administrator. This is what you always do when you when something doesn't work on Windows. Microsoft. A different voice this time. Full screen. No. Didn't work. Fuck! What the fuck? Is this is this torrent just broken? Do I need to torrent torrent another one? That works? Is that what I need to do? Why is this not working? Now it just don't even start. What the fuck? Oh, that was a bit of a strange little thing that came out of me. Now it don't even start. What the fuck? Let's try this one more time. Ma what? Wait, but it said... Oh, fuck. I don't know why I'm just keep keeping trying this, because I don't want it to be true. <laughs> I don't want it to be true. See, something's happening. What? I just pressed new game? Where is it? <laughs> what the fuck? Explain? Something is clearly not working. Now this is stuck. I was trying to alt tab. Right, well, clearly this ain't working. I guess we set up Wi-Fi and download a different torrent. I'll just torrent it on this computer and put it over. I think that's probably faster to do than... So, explain this. <laughs> I, I shouldn't... If it's... Fap for fun, right? That's, that's a... Fap. No, that's a translation group. I assume... Maybe it's a fan. Maybe it needs Japanese locale. I always forget. Oh, but you need to install Asian fonts to do a Japanese locale. And that requires internet. So I'll have to do the internet first. All right, we're gonna set up internet on this computer. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set up internet on this computer. We're gonna try installing Japanese locale and stuff and switching to a Japanese locale. That probably won't work, after which we will simply torrent another version, which also may not work, after which we will give up. <laughs> Alright, I'm now installing a virus, or whatever the fuck this is, because I don't have the Wi-Fi drivers, so... drivers... Uh, which came on a disc, with the Windows disc, but it's... Apparently, it, I mean, I looked it up to make sure it's nothing too dodgy. I did this before without looking it up, I didn't notice any, I mean, I ran malware bytes, of course, on the computer afterwards, and it was fine. But I feel like I shouldn't be wasting this much time just to play a visual novel I know I'm not going to like. That seems a little bit silly. So we're going back through my wish list, and we're seeing what's good. The problem is it can't be too good. I want something trashy, you know? I thought about playing Little Busters, but I don't really like key stuff so much. Um, and we're going to do it by sorting by uh, rating. 
This is my plan. If we sort by rating, we can find the good ones. Maji de Watashi ni Koishinai. Oh. Oh, this is very long. Um, has a good rating. This woman. Mm, mm, let me make sure there's no. I, I, let me turn off. I, let me get. I'll, I'll take a look at that while you're not. You know, people such as yourself shouldn't look at such um, uninnocent images. Uh, this looks somewhat trashy. Let's see. But this is very, very long. Kawakami City is famous for its strong dedication to its samurai ancestors. A strong... Hold on a minute. Let me just do this. This computer is very slow. We need to make sure to not download this. And install. Good. Alright, what are we doing? Kawakami City is famous for its strong dedication to the samurai ancestors. A strong fighting spirit is always valued and it's even an important factor for succeeding in school here. Yamato, a second year student from Kawakami High School, is always with close friends, four boys and three girls. They've known each other since they were young and have done lots of things together. They have many other friends, but these seven people are a close-knit group. They even have a secret base where they meet. With a new semester, they welcome two girls into their group, and shortly after, things start to change. This sounds like uh, shit. Uh, <laughs> let's see what else we've got. Aono Kanatano 4 Rhythm. Is this the one about flying? In a world where flying is a... Yeah, that sounds retarded. No, thank you. Sengoku Rants, why is this on my wish list? I already dropped this. Get it off my wish list. Boulder Sky, one. Boulder Sky seems decent. But Boulder Sky 2 is the one that's supposed to be really good. Also, this one's really long. I don't know if I'm ready to be dedicated to something really long. Uh, Mako is asleep in his bed. The scream of a girl wakes him up. He realizes the bell of gunshots. He leaves the virtual world with rain. He says she is his. What? This is definitely written by someone who English is not their first language. Great Christmas. This might be actually pretty interesting. That woman has very large breasts. Oh, I don't really like the... Oh, it's got gameplay. It's got gameplay. Guys, it's got gameplay. Oh. Mm, what sort of game is it? Is it like a... What does this look like to me? An RPG? Oh, it's a real-time RP, like a real-time... I don't know what this is. Let me just make sure the explicit is off. Um, okay. Does it say what sort of gameplay it has? Technical only. Few choices, other respect, ADV. Action game. Beat him up. Oh, okay. It's a beat him up. That's a. I guess this looks more like a beat him up than. Oh, it's a mech beat him Okay, that sounds stupid. Symphonic Rain. Oh, I forgot this one. Well, Symphonic Rain. I already know I don't want to play this because it's. You know, this is from like 1998, so I don't want to play that right now. Uh. Rewrite, that's key. Oh, wait, I, I accidentally went to the top of the page. Okay, stuff's happening over there. Uh, Dai Sudai, I'm not going to play right now. Kara no Shoujo. I'm not going to play that right now. That requires thoughts. 
Kimito Kanajo to Kanajo no Koi. Oh, this one. Um, this is like a big love triangle thing, right? I don't think I care about that. Uh, Dai Toshokan no Hitsujikai. I know why I had so much trouble saying that. Dai Toshokan no Hitsujikai. And he was young, wanted to read magic books in the world, but they were all in the magic library. Someone told him to get there. He must be kind to everyone. Text from the shepherd, Hitsujikai, who told him the fate was going to change. He had a vision of an accident. Soon, okay, I don't know. None of that means anything to me. Is the art style good? Um, let me hold on. Let me turn off explicit just to be safe for YouTube. Um, that seem, these seem like cute girls. That's an old Joe Sama, right? Hmm, it doesn't really give me too much. I mean, I can see the art style, I guess. Now let me check out the the stuff that you guys aren't allowed to see. That was that was a struggle. That was a real struggle to sneeze there. Oh, that doesn't look too good. I'm gonna be honest with you there. Okay. Well, I don't think we're gonna play this. Okujo no Yurei san. Oh, oh, that's. Yuri goes on the roof. I don't think I'm going to play that. Son of a Witch. Now, this one looks relatively interesting. It's the same people who made Draki Riot, but it's about witches instead of drac uh, vampires. It's Yuzusoft. But this is the this is still quite long. Yuzusoft also made uh, well, a bunch of other shit. Wait, I want to make sure there's no... Okay, I think we're safe there. Fish. I mean, it's usually soft. They're, they're, they're like a, they're an arrow, they're hardcore arrow gay shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this seems cute. I like the art style. The girls seem cute. Why not? Okay, we have a Wi-Fi driver now. <laughs> we can connect to my fucking internet. Maybe we play Son of a Witch. Maybe we play... Sorry. Getting distracted reading about different fucking brands, companies. Or Noble Works, you could read Noble Work, Noble Works, Cafe Stella, no, oh, this is not in English yet. Maybe it is. Let's see, Cafe, it's not out in English, because it just came out recently. Oh, no, it came out. Two years ago. Hey, never mind. Well, then I'll, okay, Son of a Witch is looking relatively promising. We might go with that. Sokoku no Arterial. This is from my wish list, by the way, so everything everything here I should already have seen, but I've just forgotten about. Also, give me one second. I'm seeing some good tags. I'm seeing some good-looking tags down here. I'm seeing blood-related brother-sister incest, and I'm seeing uh, anal rape. So this sounds good. This sounds like... <laughs> and it's over 50 hours of blood-related brother-sister incest and anal rape. See, that's what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, what? Are, oh, it's got gameplay. It's a card game. 
Maybe I... Maybe I play a stupid fucking card game. Just because it has dumb anime bullshit in it. Am I that... Am I that retarded? Is that the level we're on here? Let's see. Let's take a look at the stuff you're not allowed to see. I I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I care about this at all. For some reason, it says this is violent. Is that blood? I I thought it was just magical power stuff. I guess that's mildly violent, but it's dragons and shit. Dragon these nuts are going to place. There's no way I'm gonna be able to fucking find this. It's gonna. It's all right. Fuck it. Do you know what? Fuck it. I don't care anymore. We're doing it. We're opening Firefox. Am I downloading this dog shit? That is not the right program. That's firewall. That's a Windows firewall. We meant pin this program to taskbar. Oh, everything's in Russian now. Oh, that's nice. That's great, isn't it? <sighs> okay, so everything's in Russian. I read that this could happen. I read that this could happen. Uh, clock language region. Change display language. Change system locale. It says I'm in English United Kingdom. I guess install or uninstall languages. Install display languages. Okay, hold on. I need to... I don't know why everything's in Russian. Why is everything in Russian? Oh. Oh, no. It's installed whatever dog shit virus. What the fuck have I done? How do I how do I not have this be a thing? Oh, fuck's sake. I don't think it's a virus. It's just bad, like because it's a fucking I don't know I don't know what it is. I'll fix. Hold on. Installed Windows. Instant adware. <laughs> I have adware on my fucking computer. Instantly. So I've installing malware bytes. Hopefully I can fucking get rid of it. Just from this fucking, which I knew was dodgy, this fucking thing which they told me to use. Well, I don't know what it was. I bought it on fucking Amazon. I knew it was dodgy anyway. I told you. I even said, I'm installing a virus right now. As a semi-joke, but also I knew, I kind of knew that that was what was going to happen. Now, I will say, last time I, I, I installed drivers from the same disk, and uh, it did work, so it's strange, but... Also, this touchpad is just real dodgy. Let's scan it with malware bytes and let's see what we get. Shall we? This might take a while. Oh yeah, here's this visual novel. I was just going back through. Now the only reason I wanted to play this one is literally just because it has a character with heterochromia. That's that's how that's that's how that's me. All I care about is the fact that her eyes different colours and I think that's cool. Um I don't know if I'll actually play this though, because I don't know if it looks very good. There's only um, five types of visual novel. There's five different types. Type, I think it's five, yeah, five different types. Type five is quite rare. So, type number one is, um, uh, like, uh, nakige, right? Nakige, as in naki, like, Nakimushi, like crying. Uh, I'm talking key visual novels. Um, anything that's just melodrama all the way through for no fucking reason because it's bullshit. That's tab number one. It's just crying. It's just it's just melodrama. Bullshit high school melodrama. 
type two of visual novels is like Die I, like or or um, Marvel Love Alternate. Like it's just, it's a good, big story probably with Max in it and probably military shit, um, action stuff. Type three is uh, like just it's essentially just a harem. Wait, hold on a minute. Am I getting confused here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so type three is like basically a har- like a harem show. So like uh, the, the user soft games would go in here, like Magical Magnetics or uh, Son of a Witch or th- those ones. And then type four is Nuki Gay. So just games that are mostly just entirely focused on sex um, with very little story. And then type five is psychological horror or damper um so obviously your um your higurashis go there your um fucking what's it called not occultics nine not robotic notes not stein's gate the only one i haven't said chaos head chaos head goes there <laughs> stuff like that those are the the five types of visual novels and type five is quite there's only a few of them and most of them aren't very good um and i've read i've i'm pretty sure i've read all of the good ones already except for higurashi because it's so fucking long and i got distracted oh look it's finished uh let's let's quarantine all of this i believe we should quarantine all of this like quarantine all of it Done. This is this is so bad. The fucking the bullshit fucking touchpad on this computer is just shit. It's just so bad. All right, now let's see if I can browse the internet without dying. Um. I don't know what this... What is this? I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. I should never have installed Windows. This is all a terrible idea. should never have given Windows a fucking internet connection. Oh, well. I'm not going to... It's not like I'm going to link this to my real identity in any way. I'm just downloading fucking Japanese weed porn games. That was a dumb card game. I couldn't even find it. (laughs) So... We're downloading Son of a Witch, which is probably going to be terrible. Also, dealt with the virus, hopefully, a little bit. It tried to put a virus on this. It tried, but it doesn't work when you open it in GNU slash Linux. Okay, oops, doesn't matter. So I'm just going to try and ignore that. I just want to ignore this. I want this to never have happened. I don't want this to exist. I don't want this to exist. I wonder if if this will even work. No, as suspected, the, the, the brightness buttons don't work. So it's stuck on full brightness. So that's sick. Uh, because the fucking laptop is fucking completely broken. This, this is just a piece of shit. Like this... This is just a piece of shit. This doesn't deserve... This doesn't deserve... And do you know what? There's a better way to put this. I don't deserve this. I deserve better than this, okay? I have better than this. I have better than this. You're a fucking joke to me, you piece of shit computer. And wouldn't it be great if this didn't work even then? It would be. It would be fucking just hilarious. This is also going to take four hours, apparently, to download, so let's just say fuck you. Let's just say fuck you. Like, actually, you know what? I won't say fuck you, because I'll just keep it downloading, and I'll find another fucking game to play, piece of fucking shit game. Fucking computer. Fucking piece of shit. Fucking dog shit. Fucking bitch. What are we playing? What are we playing? 
just pick random things, just pick random things and be like, yeah, I'll play that. Uh, Fatal 12, what's this? Mm, looks tuny. Looks pretty tuny to me. Uh, we're going, we're going, oh man, we've ended up right down the, at the bottom in the sevens. You're also going to sort that. Isn't that supposed to be good? No, never mind. Noble works. Maybe we try noble works. Let's try Noble Works. Maybe that has more speeders. Fucking bitch, computer. Chinese? Fuck you think this is? Oh, yeah, one... Yeah, yeah. No cedars, no leeches, nothing. Fuck off. This is why I don't play vision novels. Vision novels, no one... It's, you just can't get them anywhere. You just can't fucking get them anywhere. Anything good, maybe? Anything to actually that exists, maybe? Maybe anything that exists, is that possible, perhaps? Something maybe that you could actually, you know, play because it's real, maybe if you wanted something like that? What's this? Summer Pockets. This has a good rating. Didn't I already look at this? Didn't this already happen? Isn't my life just happening over again? Naki gay. That's going to be a no for me if it's tagged with Naki gay. Um, there's fuck all to do here. There's fuck all going on. Everything's bad and nothing is good. Windows is just a terrible fucking place to be. No one should ever have to deal with it. If you still use Windows, just please, why? Explain. It doesn't make any sense. It's just bad. I just want to play my fucking dog shit harm visual novels. That's all I want is to just fucking have a cute girl in my life that I can pretend is real so that I don't fucking die. Lover able, maybe. Is that a thing? Is this something I should care about? Lover able. There's no way that exists on here, right? There's absolutely... Yeah, there's no way. Oh, I typed it wrong. But there's still no way. Okay, we got something with one fucking cedar. Yeah, fuck off, mate. Fuck off. It's four gigs at least. Yeah, you're gonna fucking kill yourself immediately. Skitoski to de sankaku denai. Skitoski. Love triangle travel. This is probably in there because it's got a little sister character in it. I've already fucking dropped this bullshit. No, I haven't actually. Never mind. One. Kagayaku kitsu e. Now this is this is not that. This is an old vision novel that I'm playing because the art style looks really cool. And it has a blind girl who seems cute. Um I don't know if I actually want to play it though, because it uh I don't think so. I need something more trashy than that. I mean I'm sure that's also trashy, but I need something more you see, I can't can't be dealing with something that's only mildly trashy. I need to be on a on a fucking top level of trashies. Trashiness. You see, like do you see the capo? I want to play it one day, but is that top? See, this, this looks pretty top level trashy. Let's let's look this up. Ski. To. Is that a shortened title? I guess if I just type in ski to ski. Okay, we got something. Why does malware bytes feel the need? Hold on, I'm sorry about this. You've been exposed this whole time. Why does the malware bytes feel the need to show me a pop up every time it blocks this? Every time it blocks some fucking whatever adware has been showing up on my computer. Every time it happens, it decides to block my entire screen with a giant pop up. Fuck off. Look, what is this? One cedar, one cedar, one cedar. Fuck off. This. Is, uh, fuck it. Well, well, download. Let's just see. Let's just see how long this would take. Let's just see how long this would take. Uh, 
oh, fuck it, I don't care. I'm just going to keep looking. I'm just going to keep downloading more and more shit because I don't fucking give a shit about anything. Fuck you. This is how I'm going to deal with it. This is how we deal with our problems over here. We pick them up. We pick them up. And we put them somewhere where we don't have to look at them. We pick them up and we face them down here. We face them down here and we face them into the wall. And then we forget and then we throw something at it. Throw something at it. This is how we face our problems here. You pick them up. Throw something. Throw something. Throw something at it. And now no one will ever know. And now no one will ever know. And now I just realized I forgot to fucking put a VPN on my computer before I started torrenting shit. Which is probably not a problem. <laughs> Oh, God, for fuck's sake, why am I sneezing? Why am I even sneezing? Okay, listen. Anyway, that's just bad OPSEC. But well, I don't know why I'm so frustrated. I feel like I've just had to do a fucking Herculean task. All I fucking did was install Windows. All I did was... It was not nothing that happened was difficult. It was just all annoying. and the, It was just all... Everything about it was just the fucking worst. It was just, everything is just the worst it can possibly be. I don't want to do any, I don't, I would, I'm so tempted to just stand up and just snap that fucking laptop in half. Because I don't need it. I have a bunch of laptops. I can install Windows on a different laptop. I, I'm tempted, but I'm not going to, because who knows, maybe one day I will need it. And if the, you know, Windows doesn't deserve a good laptop. Anyway. Thankfully, thankfully we have a benevolent, smiling God who looks down upon us in glee, uh, who provided a solution for times like this by creating tiny microorganisms which convert sugars into ethanol. And thank you very much, God. At one point... This was a, a a video that I was happy with. I was like, yeah, this is nice and fucking delusion. This is nice and like schizoanalysis type, you know. I was like, I, I, I was like, I need to make my vlogs more schizo. And then I made a great vlog that was more schizo. And then I just destroyed it with a bunch of terrible bullshit. And now you're watching it still. And I'm so disappointed in you. And I'm so disappointed in myself. And everything's terrible. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why. I felt that there was also a point to me, it was time recording, that wasn't just that, and I don't remember it, so fuck off for it now. I remember the point was, uh, why am I suddenly so mad and frustrated? Is it because I had to install Windows? Windows then immediately got a virus. I had to install a bunch of drivers. I had to set up the wife because the Wi-Fi wasn't working. I accidentally installed a virus along with those drivers. So I had to install Malwarebytes. I had to run Malwarebytes to scrape the virus. Now, Malwarebytes is a giant pop-up every time I use the internet. Also, I had to install Firefox twice because the first Firefox was in Russian because it came from the same CD that had the virus on it, and it also had AdWord built into it, and that's probably where the ad where it came from, I can probably just refresh Firefox. You see, Firefox does, doesn't give you the option to do a clean install on Windows 7. It does on Linux because I've done it before. Um, you can even install Firefox twice on Linux it's, or five times or it doesn't matter because Linux is a good operating system made for use by people, unlike fucking Windows. Is that why I'm annoyed? Also, I'm doing this all on a heartbroken laptop where the touchpad breaks every five seconds, and it's not like a ThinkPad where you don't have to use the terrible touchpad because it has a lovely ThinkPad dot Think dot TM. Uh, no, it, actually, it's not what it's called. It's called a. I forgot what it's called, but it's very good. Everyone should. I don't even use the touchpad is disabled on a hardware level, um, just like me. I'm also disabled on a hardware level. <clears throat> What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Um, is that why I'm frustrated? I say, no, no, that's not why I'm frustrated. Your, the brain is just a completely random series of just events. The subconscious is just a ran, or the unconscious, sorry, the unconscious mind is this completely random number generator up here. You, you, you should see what, this is what I'm doing. Completely random number generator up here, right? And then it feeds it all into the conscious, which just generates patterns out of that randomness. And so it's only my conscious brain that has decided 
that I'm frustrated because I tried to install Windows or whatever the fuck. Like, that doesn't actually matter. What really happened is my brain, due to some external factor, possibly radi- uh, electromagnetic waves or fluctuations in the Earth's magnetism or um, any number of factors, bad air or um, uh, the wrong nutrients in my food or the fact that I started taking a new multivitamin or the fact that uh, I don't know. Any could uh, I didn't get enough REM sleep. Could be any number of things. Uh, probably a combination of a bunch of things. Possibly radio waves targeted at me, but via various government agencies. All of these things have culminated in a feeling of frustration and anger, which my brain has interpret- interpolated into installing Windows. I'm the world's weakest human being, and so I made myself a sandwich. What does this mean? Hey look, something's happening. It's all in random letters and numbers because I haven't installed a Japanese uh, thing. Because this doesn't work. Because nothing works on this fucking... Let's see, shall we? Nothing's happening. To my desktop. Nothing. I know what nothing looks like. This is what nothing looks like, right? I think I'm never doing anything ever again. I think I'm dying. I think I'm killing you. I think I'm killing you. I think I'm killing you. I think that you're dying. I think you're dying. Can't run without it being plugged in. The battery doesn't work, so I think it's dying. There was a brief moment when I was making some artistic statement, but now this is just my external monologue. No, thank you. Do I play CS? Don't smite. Do you want to? I have never wanted anything in my life. I don't know what want is. I don't know what I am. I don't know what I want to do. I've never known. I Nothing is real. Nothing exists inside of me. I'm an empty husk of a human being. I don't exist. I don't exist. I'm not real. I'm not real. I've never been real. Nothing about me. If you could name reality, it would include a definition that doesn't include me. So uh, therefore, nothing, nothing can want to. Do I want to? Who knows? Who knows? I don't even know what I have basic instincts, for, such as hunger. I don't experience hunger. I just experience pain. I don't experience hunger. All I experience is pain. How am I supposed to know if I want to play Counter-Strike Global Offensive if I don't know if I experience hunger? All I know is I experience pain. The only things I know are base, the most base things, such as addictions to nicotine, caffeine, and alcohol. That's the only things I know, the most base things. Because I am based. What it means to be based is to experience base instincts. Only, exclusively. The base instinct to see large anime booby. The base instinct that when it doesn't work, you get mad because of government rays. And apparently the base instinct to play Counter-Strike, because I seem to have opened Counter-Strike on my computer. So, let's see how that goes, shall we? I ranked up too far. Do you know, maybe I should play some, maybe I should play some other maps. I was supposed to be fasting and I ate a fucking sandwich because I was hungry. But being hungry is the whole point of the exercise. But I thought I didn't experience hunger. 
but apparently I do. But only when only when it's only when it's not useful. I thought it would make me feel better to have eaten. Basically, my idea was, I feel like shit right now. I'm such a person that is very affected by like uh, blood sugar. If if I uh, a lot of times I feel like, oh no, why do I feel like shit? Am I depressed? Oh no, blah, blah. And it turns out I'm just hungry. This happens all the time because I don't feel hunger. So I just have to guess. But so a lot of times I'm like, why the fuck do I have no energy? Why do I feel like I'm sick? Why does everything feel terrible? And it turns out I was just hungry the whole time. And then I feel better instantly after I eat. So I thought, oh, I'm really frustrated and angry right now. Maybe I'm just hungry. So I was like, fuck it, I gotta eat, right? But it turns out I was hungry, but I still feel like shit. It didn't help with anything outside of being hungry. I'm no longer hungry. I had a lovely chicken sandwich, but I still feel like shit. I still feel like a, 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 a I don't know. <clears throat> How am I supposed to know if I want to play Counter-Strike? I don't know anything. I don't know anything about myself. I don't know my name. Anyone who says my name will be arrested. Anyone who says my name will be arrested. What can I say? I enjoy the finer things in life. What can I say? I just enjoy the finer things in life, such as a sandwich, such as the cheapest available vodka, such as free internet. That's not what I meant to say. Free Fuck it. I don't care if people think I'm pathetic or whatever. Softly Galoshes deserves credit. Softly Galoshes deserves credit for making for making things like this. It's okay, you're safe, ASMR. Face touching, breathy whispers. I love you, it's okay, you're safe, ASMR. Uh, Softly Galoshes is the only uh, high-tier ASMR person who makes quality, lonely ASMR for lonely people. Other people, they either make sexy ASMR or or just nothing ASMR, it's just sounds. Softly Galoshes is the only one that makes wholesome ASMR for people who just are really lonely. And she deserves credit for it. And she basically is like the greatest person to ever exist. And I would never patron an ASMR person, but if I was to patron one ASMR person, it would be her. And I would never do it, but if I was to do it, it would be her or Latte. Probably her, although Latte is also based. Latte wins for being Asian. That's a joke. Welcome to my joke factory where we make jokes. Softly Galoshes deserves credit for making because she understands that the loneliness is a real thing that affects people. And that sometimes you just need something to help you out. And she is there to help you out sometimes. And that's very nice of her to do. So she deserves credit for that. And honestly, I, uh, shouts out. I mean, I know she's making money from it, but um, unlike other people who do similar things, I wouldn't say she's exploiting people. Like, I think some people, ex- for example, Twitch streamers, well, female Twitch streamers, they they often do this where they, like, exploit lonely men for money uh, by sort of pretending that you can be friends with them or type of situation. Or, you know, they bait lonely men into giving them money. Uh, It's a disgusting practice, and I hate them for it. But I wouldn't... I don't think Softly Delicious does that. I think she genuinely just wants to help people. Um... Because there's no bait here. What is she baiting me into doing? Nothing. Um, I I think she's just a nice person who just wants to help lonely or scared people. 
um, and not just men. And I think that that deserves credit. I think a lot of Twitch streamers are some of the most. I mean, maybe this is a, maybe maybe this is a bit of a, listen. I've had a bit to drink, so maybe this isn't as logical as I think it is. Like I think, but I think this is true. I think most people can agree with this. Like a lot of female Twitch streamers basically get their entire income by baiting um, lonely men and of often neurodivergent men into sort of thinking that they can have some sort of relationship with them, whether it be friendship or romance or whatever, they, they essentially bait them into a parasocial relationship on purpose. And parasocial relationships are fine. Like, I'm not one of those people that's really against that. I, I think it's fine. Um, I'm talking about the sort of thing where only one person knows it's parasocial. Like, one... It's, it's, it's essentially a scam. It's just, it's just taking advantage of people who are of vulnerable people. That's all it is, is taking advantage of vulnerable people and then somehow sleeping at night. I mean, those those have to be some of the most hor- horrible people in the world, right? Those sorts of people, those sorts of females, Twitch streamer people who take advantage of lonely men. Like, those have, that has to be some of the most disgusting, despicable human behavior, right? I mean, there's there's also lots of other disgusting, despicable human behavior, but that's definitely that's definitely a bad uh, like those are those are bad people. Those are awful, disgusting people who do that. And the thing is that it's a very vague thing, right? They know they're doing it. We know they're doing it, but you can't prove that it's happening, and therefore they can they can never get done for it you know you can't like you can't prove that it's happening and you can't prove the psychological component so you know from my perspective it's like oh they're taking advantage of lonely and neurodivergent people but they can always make the argument like oh well you're not entitled to any of this you you knew what you were getting into Maybe they didn't know what they were getting into, you know? They're, they're fucking... They're not neurotypicals, or they're desperate. Like, maybe they maybe they knew on some level, but they didn't want to believe it because they just want a friend, or they just want to be have someone to talk to, you know? And they 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 just... Like, something's twisted about that. If you... If you're so... It's like... There's something very fucked up about that to me. I don't think soft, but that's what's so great about softly galoshes, in my opinion, is that it doesn't seem like she does that at all. Like she, she certainly does show her Patreon, right? Because she needs to make enough money to live. I assume. Like I think that's acceptable. But, um. Firstly, she doesn't actually even make that much on Patreon compared to some other ASMR people that I've seen because she doesn't do anything particularly lewd, right? That's like that's one thing I, I appreciate about her. She doesn't pretend. Like, for example, Pelagi ASMR, she pretends that there's a bunch of really lewd stuff on her Patreon, but if you actually buy her Patreon or find a way to pirate her Patreon content... It's not lewd at all. It's just like like very slightly more risque than the stuff that's on YouTube. But like it's not you like it. You could upload it to YouTube safely and not get not not have a problem. Like it's it's only slightly like it's nothing basically. Um, but she advertises it as if it's like super adult content, you know. So people want to see her titties or whatever, and they're not going to see that. I mean, I guess that's just false advertising, but also it's it's like I don't really have a full amount of because, like, who cares? If I, I mean, the advertising is a bit weird, but it's not that important. The stuff I don't like is where it's like 
implied that oh if you pay money you can sort of be friends with me but that's that's definitely not implied with softly galoshes patreon and her content i feel like is very important like i have literally watched her videos when i was having a panic attack and it's helped me calm down um genuinely like i feel like that's a I feel like she's genuinely doing a service. Here's me being autistic about ASMR. But, um, she's, I mean, her, her mic quality is always consistently good. Her, everything she does is just consistently good. She, it's good. Like, most other ASMR people won't, do stuff like, for example, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say about this. I'm not saying, I just think she does a good service for lonely people or scared people or anxious people or lots of other sorts of things to help people like that. And I think she deserves some credit for it because a lot of other people would hide either hide this content behind a paywall or the, the content itself would be bait to try and exploit people. But I've I've looked around like I've looked I've looked and that doesn't seem to be the case here. Um Yeah. I'm reading her Q and A. Hold on. Yo, she hope she made a whole ass RPG maker game as well. She made an RPG maker game. Oh, of course it looks like this. This is the most Tumblr thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, she's very Tumblr. I'd say that's a bit of a negative about her. She's definitely listen. It's not for everyone. Um. But I'm glad that someone's there to help me out. I think if you're skilled, if you... The thing about loneliness is we have the tools to cure it these days. Not totally, but it's sort of like AIDS. <laughs> you can you can live with it. You We have the tools that you can live with it and you only suffer slightly. Um, with regards to ASMR, anime, visual novels, parasocial relationships via YouTube friendships, online friendships, Discord calls, all of these things. You can, you can, you can, you can't cure it necessarily, but you can counteract it. You can keep it manageable um, if you know what you're doing. <sighs> yeah, that's nice. I'm not sure what the fuck I'm talking about anymore. Just to clarify, I don't think all... Listen, I'm sorry, I just have to make clarifications so I don't get cancelled from for overgeneralizing, because that's not what I'm trying to do. It's not just so I don't get cancelled, it's because I, I don't know if I made my point very well. Like, I don't think all female streamers or female YouTubers are trying to bait lonely men into giving them money. That's obviously not true. Like, I, I think I'm just talking about a certain subset. And, like, I think even people who are often accused of it, like Pokimane, I don't, I think she just wants to be a regular streamer. Like, I don't think she does. Like, I think a lot of people don't do that. And everyone is made to look bad by the few people who do do that. You know, it's just that the, the ASMR, uh, like, people are kind of heavily in that segment because ASMR is kind of an intimate experience because it's like someone whispering right into your ear. So it obviously will attract that sort of crowd. But, like, uh, yeah, but when, when I say, like, oh, there's certain female streamers who, do, who bait lonely men into giving them money, I don't mean all female streamers are baiting lonely men and, like, are just exploiting people. I, I think people, like, 
I think women get accused of this a lot. Um, but I think there's a distinction to be made. I just think the line is kind of blurry. Like there's sometimes when it's hard to distinguish what is like exploitative of uh, like your neurodivergent audience who who don't who are like lonely and mentally ill or whatever versus like what is just like oh these people are just showing up without me baiting them at all like it's it's hard to tell i think there's a blurry line but i think there's definitely some people who are really harmful in that regard i i think sometimes it's ignored because it seems it's um I think it's often uh, neurodivergent men are uh, people seem to like people like to pretend they don't exist. People like to pretend that they don't exist or they don't have it tough or anything. Um, yeah, but we do exist. There's a site which I'm prepared to see. That's the site. The site right there. Is this? What the fuck? There's a site which I'm prepared to see. That's the site right there. The sun rising. That's the site I was prepared to see. I need to sleep. But sleep does not come naturally to a person such as the the main four background ponies are more interesting. I don't even like it. Something has to be done. Clearly there's something wrong. This is supposedly... Yeah, look, it's fuck. There's something wrong with my computer. It's not rendering stuff properly with the fucking Windows shit. Okay, no. So it, the problem was, see, like it. So this is the Windows, by the way. Uh, as you can see, like when I move it around, it does the cool wiggly thing that Windows does. <laughs> but when I full screen it, it goes into a tiny screen over here, and it doesn't. Act, oh no, it doesn't. It is just lying to me. I don't know what's going on, but. It's clearly, like, it's there, it's just not rendering properly, and I don't know why. Um, so I'm going to close this. Yes. That, that was, that, that was it saying goodbye, right? Okay. Um, well, I don't know what the fuck I've done wrong, because... This computer works before I reinstalled Windows, so maybe I should never have reinstalled Windows in the first place. Maybe I should have just left things as they were. But what happens if I take this, put it on here? Oh, for fuck's sake. We're, we're very floor pilled right now. I'm a floor pilled ground cell. Oh yeah, I do want to do that actually. Um, which one is that? It's one of these is blue. I can't really see because it's dark down here, but I think it's this one. Okay, now here's what we do: is we close out of everything here. I mean, I have a Japanese locale, by the way. Oh, by the way, that's a different game. That's Kitoski. There shouldn't be anything. I don't know why it's telling me to scan and fix. God, Windows is just the worst software. It's just so bad. Nothing works. You have to manually... Linux just works. You don't have to manually install drivers or anything. Oh, fucking terrible. Oh, yeah. Control N, I assume, is going to open a new one. Okay. Now we go to computer, web machine, and now we're going to drag Skitoski Love Triangle, Labutorayanguru, over to the web machine, and then we'll plug that into my, li wouldn't it be just a great moment, epic moment, 
if it works on my Linux computer in Wine, but not on native Windows. Something's broken with this. I don't know what's broken, but it won't update, even when I re I think it's just a dodgy copy of Windows. I don't know anything about Windows, so I don't know why it wouldn't be working. And most people don't, because you can't... Like, it's a scam, right? Like, you could, it's, it's closed-source software, so no one, no one can know. All right. Now we go over here. Uh, let's just open that. Now we'll plug this in. We open two instances of Nautilus. One of them this, one of them this. And then we drag this over to the ends. And then we wait till this takes place. I can, the fact that I can't play Wagamama High Spec makes me really want to play it. I'm just one of those types of people where if you tell me I can't do something, suddenly it's the only thing I want in life. Maybe I should triple reinstall. Maybe I should just pirate Windows. Or maybe I should do pirate Windows 10. I don't want to have to use Windows 10 because even Windows 7 is bad enough, you know. I don't really know what to do. Um, I don't know why that one game doesn't work in Wine. That's one strange thing. Like, wait, I should check something that I know works in Wine just to make sure I didn't accidentally break Wine when I was fucking with some stuff. What, what do I know works in Wine? I know Live Split works in Wine. Can I run Live Split? Install one of the follow dot oh okay. Yes, I would like to download the dot net framework. This is it's a bit strange that this didn't work before. I mean, this worked perfectly fine. The live split worked perfectly fine like a week ago when I was using it to time myself playing a bug's life. So it's strange that it's now requiring dot net framework, which I thought I already had. But I did fuck with I did fuck with my wine a bit to try and get the visual novels to run by installing wine tricks and stuff. So I don't really know what I'm doing right now. Well, this is this is done. I wonder if I can open it now. There you go. And there you have it. Doesn't work in tiling mode, but it will work in floating window mode. And there we have it. Labu dabu triangle toraburu. Wait. It's better not be. It says tr love triangle. Oh, I guess love triangle trouble is the English translation of whatever the the original was. Um, maybe we, if I set it to full screen. Oh wait, I don't really want to play it in full screen anyway. I like windowed mode. Uh, yeah, you always have to turn the sound down because it's always way too. The BGM is always way too fucking loud. Everything's always way too loud in visual novels. By the way, that's a fact. Um, second thing is the dialogue. Oh, it's all that's nice. It's on max by default. That's uh, it's on instant by default. Thank fuck. I don't know why anyone would play a visual novel not on instant text. Like just waiting for the fucking text to go by is the worst. Why would you ever do that? It doesn't make any sense. Um, this seems all legitimate. Oh, we can. Oh no, that's the maximum window size. No, it's not. We could increase the window size, but there would be no reason to. Um, also, I heard it's all good. 
Yep. Oh, we got some keybinds. What have we got? What's space is? Oh, hold on. Yeah, this just works. This just works perfectly fine. There's, there's no problems. Uh, how the fuck does anyone use Windows? It's such a. It doesn't work. Like, it's just broken. It's not like, oh, use Linux because of moralism, internet, techno-veganism, purity. No. It just... The Windows is just shit. Mac is just shit. Like, the, the alternatives are just awful. They're unusable. You can't... Look, they're literally unusable. I, I try to do something, and it doesn't work. This works. Linux just works. There's, like... It can do everything Windows could do, but better and for free. There is no, out of, last month, out of the top 50 games on Steam, 80% of them ran on Linux, either via Proton or natively. Like, even the idea that, like, uh, Linux is bad for gaming is slowly, de like, every update to the Linux kernel and every update to Wine and every update to Proton is making gaming like almost entirely viable on Linux. The only reason I don't regularly game on this computer is because it's a low spec ThinkPad. Like if I had a a gaming rig, I would probably dual boot, but like CS I pretty much want to play CS and CS runs natively on Linux, so like I don't know if I even would dual boot. I'd probably just run if I had a gaming rig I'd probably just run uh, a Debian based distro on it because I think Debian is the best for gaming. I'm not entire. I don't entirely remember. Um, yeah, I'd probably run some sort of Debian based distro. Or I do research to find whichever distro is best for gaming. But I don't have a gaming rig. The only powerful computer I own is this one, uh, which has like an i7 in it. The graphics card doesn't exist. It's like don't, but it has at least a processor that can handle uh, modern games. But this computer handles retro gaming fine. Like I play PS1, PS2, N64 games with like some regularity, or old PC games on fine. I played Half-Life One on this computer without any noticeable problems. I played Quake on this computer, no problems. Um, I played many old games, it's fine. I played CS 1.6 on this computer, which I guess is just half level. A computer is a kami, and therefore it deserves to be treated with respect, just like old kami. The best way to pay respect to a computer is to occasionally give thanks but also to make sure it's using a nice operating system that isn't painful for it. Proprietary operating systems are quite painful for computers. You can feel them. Also, try not to be particularly rude to it. For example, um, installing bloated softwares, running at high temperatures regularly, these sorts of things are quite disrespectful to the kami of the computer. To me, Shintoism is very obvious. I feel like maybe other Westerners don't really understand Shintoism. Like, they, they think it's like a religion in the same way that Christianity is a religion. But to me, Christianity and the Abrahamic religions were always very confusing and never made much lot like uh, in, well, no religion really makes logical sense, but they never made much intuitive sense. Um, whereas Shintoism makes intuitive sense to me. I, I can understand, like, when it was explained to me, like, oh, oh, certain, for example, mountains, mountains are kami. Uh, it's just obvious to me that, obvi okay, if you ever seen a mountain, there's clearly something particularly special and deserving of respect about that thing, right? 
it's just it's just a, it, um, inherently intuitively obvious to me when I see a mountain or a very old tree or uh, something on. <coughs> pardon me. Something along those lines. These things are just obvious to me that they are, they sort of contain within them some essence or transcendental element which is deserving of respect and it's uh, there's it's simply a feeling they give me there, there's no logical there's no formula no mathematical formula for it or anything like that or it's not because of any particular events or practices so for example <clears throat> uh, a church is holy ground because someone built a church there and because there are certain laws, Christian laws, which say how a church should be built, and that the fact that the church was built in that way makes the ground holy because it's the house of God or whatever. I don't really understand Christianity. Whereas something like a big old tree, when I see one, I just know I'm like, there's there's no 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 I don't have to decide no one had to decide to do something to make this place spiritually significant it just contains within itself some spirit and not something that you can necessarily observe um but just I that's how I interpret Shinto is it's merely a system of purification and, and respect those are to me the two most important parts of Shinto purification and respect so um they're, they're both very linked so if you don't purify before you go to a jinja or something um like that's disrespectful so and a, a jinja is an important place so that's disrespectful to the jinja not necessarily because it's it's sort of like in the same sense that you wouldn't <coughs> refer to someone uh rudely if you didn't have a reason to if you you wouldn't and if you did that you wouldn't expect them to be nice to you back it's the same thing with the world and important or significant places or beings i think there's um i think that's a thing i think i'm a shinto shintoist although i'm you know it's not like that's the other thing that makes much more sense about Shinto to me than other religions is you don't necessarily have to say I'm oh now I'm Shinto so I must go to mass every week like that's not how it works you just practice on like however you want to practice and there are certain kami that are going to be more significant to you depending on your lifestyle so if you live in the woods somewhere then or if you live near a particular shrine the kami of that shrine is going to be more important to you than the kami of some faraway shrine that you've never interacted with and to me there are very, you know i don't live in the woods or the mountains of japan so um those kami aren't although i still would show them respect if i ever met them um just because it's obvious to me that they deserve respect just by um through that the, maybe the maybe the word here is uh, sublime because there's something sublime about them um, those things aren't particularly relevant to me. A computer is a kami, and you should treat it with respect and purify. Wash your wash your hands and such like, and you could purify the programs you run on your computer because running bloated software is is literally just rude to the kami that like that it's just um yeah it's not it's 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 not showing. 
um, respect something that's significant. Uh, and it's 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 not like Christianity where it's sort of like oh you better respect my God because otherwise you're going to hell forever. It's more like for well, the way I see it. Um, uh, it's it's more of a mutual back and forward r- relationship. Um, I interact with this particular, you know, if you're interact, let's say um, some sort of natural onsen, those are kami generally. If you go to the onsen often, then the onsen is doing a service to you and so you should be respectful to it. In the same way, if I use my computer often, my computer is doing a great service to me, and so I should be respectful of it. And um, you know, that's 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 pretty much all it is. It's just comfiness and caring. It's sort of extending friendship out to um, a uh, spiritual element of. Um, uh, Beyond humanity or non-human, it's it's extending friendship to the the non-human essentially. That's how I see it. Gender, for all people, is a process of becoming. It is not something static. It's a process of becoming, and we even this is not just the case for trans people or other, you know, non-cis people. Is there a word for them? I don't know. Queer? I don't know. Uh, We even have language which ascribes the fact that this is a widely accepted opinion. Stuff like, oh, this will make a man out of you. Stuff like that. Or, um, you know, uh, the I I mean, it's a, a, a joke a bit of a joke phrase these days, but you know, or stuff like um, when when you uh, lose your virginity, you become, oh, he made me a woman, that sort of thing. You know what I mean? People say that sort of thing. Like we even, I mean, that's a bit of a meme example, but we actually have linguistic evidence that this is a, this is a common idea. We just don't think of it. Like, this is like a subconscious thing that we all sort of know, but no one generally talks about. That gender is procedural, not static. It's it's not um, an object. It's a process. There you go. That's a that's a that, that's a way to describe it. Um, I have, maybe that's a good concept conceptualization. I'm not entirely sure what to do. So as you can see, writing a modern visual novel gets my RAM at about varying from 50 up to it's like crazy. What's going on over here, eh? Why is it going so crazy? That's that's the first thing that's happening. But even running at like 60-ish RAM shouldn't be too crazy. But like if I if I run sensors. You can see we're at 97 degrees C. That's like above recommended, approaching critical. Um, I should not be running it like this for any extended length of time, really. I don't know what to do for cooling, because the only way to improve... The cooling can be easily improved. Like, if I replace the thermal paste, it will almost certainly improve the cooling significantly. But I'm just really scared of fucking something up and breaking my laptop forever. So I don't know what to do for cooling. I think for now, I'm just going to close everything. I'm going to close my browser. So let's open HTOP, see what's running. Uh, yeah, that's all that's running is pretty much just that. I guess PyCom and SXHKD and BSPWM taking up 0.0% of my CPU. For some reason, Pulse Audio is taking up 9, 
I don't know why that's happening. Pulse audio is shit, though. We all know this. Um, but yeah, okay, everything's closed now. So hopefully that lowers the temperature a little bit because I'm worried about running it on a high temperature for a long time. Maybe I should have just downloaded an older visual novel, but I just was in the mood to I don't know, maybe, like, I'm sure one would run very fast, like, things from the 2000s and the, like, that, I don't know why, I don't, I, I just closed Firefox, I can't even go over to the tab where I have the VNDB page open. Um... Man, some bad shit happened today. It was an alright day until some really bad shit happened. I can't talk about it. Or well, I don't want to talk about it. But, um... It kind of sucks not being able to talk about it, but I have no one to talk about it with. Like, I don't think... How do I put it? Everyone already has their own problems to deal with. Unless there's some way they can help, there's no point just throwing your own self-pity onto other people. That's my opinion, in general. If, like, if, if it's a case where there's something they can do to help, then by all means ask for help. But if it's a case where it's just something they have, that it's just going to make... The uh, I don't know, just not how my how I how I roll personally. There's no use burdening other people with my problems, but I think I don't really want to talk about it anyway. The man, fucked up shit happened today. Probably some of the most fucked up shit of my life. I'll probably remember this day for the rest of my life. As a particularly bad moment. There's been a few of those recently. There's something big that's happened in my life that I haven't talked about on YouTube. A few of my close friends know about it, but I haven't mentioned it on YouTube. And maybe I will mention it soon. Um, because it's... I don't know. I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. Man. Anyway, I didn't want to think about that. I was trying to just think about anime titties to distract myself, and now I'm thinking about the fucked up shit that happened today. Oh, whatever fucked up shit happens it's all in the past now I'm gonna become a monk main character hey cut the full like false accusations I don't really don't recall doing anything have I Sheena hey hey yes you did but sorry I can't just tell you that you'll have to reach the end of my route to find out main character I'm days away from that go Anyone playing the game who's curious, make sure to pick all my choices for my route. I'll even give you all of them right now. Wanna hear? Just complete fourth wall breaks out of nowhere, and then it's a choice. Obviously, I'm gonna press sure, but I'm gonna save first because I'm not a fucking player, but am I? Wait, do I want? No, I want to bookmark it. I'm still thinking this. This has a bit of a straight out uh, bookmarks. Okay, new. Create a new bookmark. There we go. Okay, the first show. It literally is. It literally is just. She just tells you all the choices you have to make to get her boot. What the fuck? This genius. She's just doing it. She's just saying them all out loud. Didn't know you were fine with spoilers. Anyway, 
don't know what that's about, but it was pretty interesting, I thought. I would have just been a retard. For some reason, I thought I had the Steam version, so I'm going back through... I, I taunted up... You know what we're going to do? We're just going to make absolutely sure. Here's how we're going to do it. We're gonna, because I downloaded it on my Windows computer, thinking it would run on Windows. Of course, it didn't run on Windows. What did I just do? Start Windows normally. So I have to check on this computer. Go open two bit time. Make sure check the version. Check the version. Check what the title is, or who the translator or whatever is. All right, that's that started relatively fast. Okay, this shouldn't be a problem. I th I thought this would be for some reason I was convinced that this would be a real hassle, but I guess this computer boots quickly. Um, just need to open. Wait till Qubit Torrent decides to open itself. Nope. Try again. Okay. So which version is this? English Uncensored. Okay, good. So for some reason I thought I had the Steam version, but uh, I guess not. So I just deleted all my saves. <laughs> okay, it's good. Definitely the Uncensored version. Okay, that's good. I don't know why I'm. I don't know what's going on with me right now. Anyway, definitely the Uncensored version. Let's try it standing up with two legs instead of one. Um, but yeah, I just deleted all my saves because I thought, oh fuck, I have the Steam version and I need to put the the patch, the 18 plus patch on it. And to do that, you need to have a clean install, so you have to delete your saves. But then I tried to do that, tried to put the 18 plus patch and I got an error when I tried to start the game, and so I thought, is this an error because I'm trying to do this in Linux, or did I do something wrong, or do I already have the patch, or what's going on, and so now everything's sorted out, but now I'm just going to have to do a, a big skip, going to have to do a big skip, I'm going to have to open the game up again. What the fuck? What is this? Select XP3 file or folder. What is that? What is XP3 file or folder? I guess it's... What the fuck have I done? Oh no. Hopefully it's still everything's still in my waste basket so I can just restore all this. Oh fuck, hold on. Okay, now we try it. Now we try it. Fuck, bro, what the fuck? I fucked it. Oh no, what have I done? What's the XP3 file? There's many XP3 files. Which one is it? Which one is it? This one? No.
Fuck, man. Okay. Let's just try every different XP3 file. Until it... Or everything that it could possibly be. None of those are working. Let's try this. Nope, doesn't work. Okay, let's try this one. Nope, doesn't work. Okay. Hello? Okay. Now, let's try this one. This is definitely not the right one. Okay, so now I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. What did I do? How did I break it? Are you fucking kidding me? Fuck! I didn't even need to do this. Now I'm going to need to go back over to that computer, turn it back on, bring my fucking hard drive, and reship the fucking thing over. And I guess I could import my saves, but that seems to have... Something seems to have broken here. So... Look, this is broken. Storage startup.tjs. Okay, so I'm looking for startup.tjs. It doesn't exist. Sick. Uh, what's this? Is this going to do anything? Why am I even trying? Okay. Oh, fuck. Why did I delete my saves? One idiot. Oh, fuck. Okay, well... Move this to wastebasket. Where's my... Where is it? Where's my thing? Ha uh -huh. you, you guys don't need to be around for all this. to Windows to start it until I plug that thing in. I need to move it back over. We're moving it back over. Listen, I'm not happy about this. I'm not happy about what I've done here. But you gotta do what you gotta do. I already have it on here. Of course I already have it on here. Of course I still have it on here. Idiot mode. Idiot mode. Idiot mode. Idiot mode. Of course I still have it on there. Oh my god. Didn't even have to do any of this. I already kept it on my fucking hard drive. Oh, what a stupid idiot. I am. What a stupid mode. Call us going stupidito. Stupidito. Idiot. Don't worry, we're getting there. Okay. Weed machine. Ski to ski, love triangle. Copying. in my life. Also, yes, I'm using Cube Browser. Um, although, why was I using Cube? Oh, yeah. The walkthrough. Um, what was, what's the website? 
Fura? Is it Fura novel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is the walkthrough. Yeah, I use walkthroughs for playing visual novels because I don't find the gameplay of guessing what the creator wanted you to play to be particularly um, compelling. I don't find that to be compelling gameplay. I just like to read the story. Like, it just makes me nervous, you know? It's just like, oh, but what if I press the wrong thing? It's just frustrating if you get it wrong as well. Done. Okay, it's done. We can now safely remove drive. Now... Good, this works. Continue. Obviously not going to work. And now we get to skipping. Huh? Why is skip not working? Skip mode, F4. Uh, this is not working. I don't know what's happening right now, but it's, something's wrong. Maybe I can't... What is this? Auto-skip? Oh, oh, I have it so you can only skip on red, I guess. Maybe not. I want these to be on fast anyway. Uh, oh, it'll be in dialogue. No, none of these things. I'm going to need to turn the volume down anyway. Um... I don't really know what's going on, but I'm just spamming skip, apparently. It seems like skipping just works for, like, a few lines at a time. Oh, yeah, this is a good... Good... Good one to, to pause on. Hello? Oh, we're at the next choice. Okay. Well, we're not too far away from where we were. Why is skip not just control? This is so annoying. And why does the skipping not work very well? All right, well, uh, uh, we're basically back to where we were. We're not, we're, we're not too far away from where we were. I didn't read that much, but um, so far, pretty funny game. skill that is what you're witnessing right now is a level of skill you are yet to experience in your life an extreme level of skill okay we're basically back to where we were do you remember earlier i said i was disappointed with the quality of girl and the lack of good quality moe in my visual novels well this visual novel has the high tier moe girls uh, now, <sighs> and listen, I'm a simple man. I'm a sucker for an immortal character. 
I like myself a high quality immortal, right? This visual novel has like, well, two, and they're both. It's not like, okay, Immortal Paradise was shit, right? Because the characters were one even character. It was. It's just a nookie gay, right? And like, I'm pissed off that it was shit because it's a game called Immortal Paradise. But the fucking etchy scenes weren't even that good. The art was good. But, like, the content of the scenes wasn't very good. And the girls themselves, only one of them was particularly interesting to me. Anyway, I never finished that game because, you know, the thing about a Nuki Gear like that is that the, it's it's like, it's just 50 hours of porn. And contrary to popular belief, I just, I just physically don't jack off that much. So it's probably a bit too weird to talk about on YouTube. But, like, yeah, it's like, I don't really have a place in my life for that. That's a bit too Kuma for me, you know? Like, I like a a story. I'm, I read Elgay for the story. The etchy scenes, you know, maybe one or two at the end of a heroine's route as sort of an emotional climax. That's what they're there for, rather than, more so than anything else. I often just fast forward past them because they're normally not that interesting compared to Dojins. Dojins, like, do- Dojins are generally better in my opinion. Anyway, sorry, got a little bit off track there. So Immortal Paradise wasn't very good because none of the characters were good, but that, that's beside the point. The girls are cute is what I'm trying to say, and it's also funny. It's like the most lowbrow humor possible, and I, I dig that. I dig a bit of lowbrow humor. Um, this is, so this is a cute girl. This is a cute girl. Uh, I'm waiting for the next cute girl to show up. This is a, also an anagini type kara. Eh, probably one of the weaker girls, but. Hey, whatever. This is a cute girl. That's the fourth wall breaking adult gay nerd. Fourth wall breaking adult gay nerd character. She's probably best girl, maybe. High tier, high tier girl. Oh, uh, Fujo. Cute Fujo. Also very high tier. They're all great. All the characters are great. Rare. Rare case. Surprisingly rare case. And then, as if, um, hold on, I'm just waiting for for them to show up. This guy's really into mobile gacha games. That's funny. Sorry. There. Final girl. Foreigner and Lolly? Or like Paleo Lolly, I guess. I don't know what. She's not actually younger than the rest of them. She just, you know typical anime stuff except actually this time it was interesting it was you know that you know that you, you know you remember that anime from like years ago called kiss him not me no i'm the only one that remembers kiss him not me of course i'm the only one that remembers kiss him not me that was a an anime where there was a fat girl and then she um what happens oh yeah yeah, yeah. it's she's a fat fujoshi girl and I think something like bad happens in her favorite manga, like her favorite BL manga or something. One of her like characters dies or something like that, and so she gets so depressed that she doesn't leave her room and eat for like a month. And then she comes out and she's like super skinny and beautiful, and all the guys want to chase her, but she's not interested in any of them. She just wants to ship them. Anyway, the same thing happens with this girl. Basically, she's she's fat. 
at the beginning. Although, you know, she's purposely drawn ugly. Like, I don't even hate... I, I actually wouldn't mind a chubby character in a visual novel. Not that they ever exist, but I wouldn't mind that. Like, that would at least different. I guess she's not too skinny. But, like, she was drawn ugly, basically, and fat. And then she gets sick, and then she comes back to school, and she's lost all her weight or whatever because it's fucking anime bullshit. But um, she's also a gaijin, and she's the way she, her voice actress speaks is very cute. Like the terrible broken Japanese foreign accent. Like it doesn't actually sound like a foreigner speaking Japanese. It just sounds like someone with a speech impediment, which is cute. Everyone knows speech impediments are moe. And so she's Moe. That's really all that matters here. I don't care about the whole, she used to reverse inflation. That's what I'm going to call it. I don't know. I don't care about any of that. That's a dumb character trait. It's stupid. Um, I just, I don't even read, like, Opai Lolly is the lo- worst form of Lolly anyway. So we don't give a fuck about that. Sorry, if you're not, if you're not an uh, otaku, and you're watching this, then you're probably quite disappointed in me right now. But this is my autism. Uh, so none of that matters to me. What matters is that her voice actor, her voice actress is cute, and and as in like her speech impediment is cute, because that's that's the essence of Moe, is a girl who can barely function. This is no longer a vlog, it's just a video diary. (coughs) (coughs) And there was a period when I had things to say, but this is now mostly just documenting things. So when I said it was a document, why do I keep saying right rhetorically? It's really annoying to watch, I'm sorry about that. My voice is gone because I've been recording a punk song. Uh, Man, I just have so many directions and I want to take my my thumbs and, you know. I've never had a song. That's not true. I have one song with a breakdown in it, but that's not a very good song. I'm going to make a new song and it's going to be a punk song with a breakdown, you know, when the tempo goes changey and, and everyone hits each other. We're going to make a song with a breakdown. But yeah, this is just a video diary at this point. This is not even assorted rambling. This is nothing except just me having a public diary. Com. Upload a song to Patreon.com. Let's just go with what's a good song that I've made recently. This one. <coughs> Disgusting. Patreon.com forward slash no thank you for a new song every week. Let's listen to this one so you can hear the sort of high quality audio you'll be experiencing. What's your the rest of that on Patreon. I'm particularly good at repressing trauma. I'm good at, um, I don't know what I'm good at, something like that. I think there's a, everyone says repressing things is bad. Um, I think. That's what people say. But I don't know what repressing means, really. But I I forget things very often when they're bad. 
for example, I remember very little of my childhood. I rem like my schooling. I can remember disconnected images, sounds, smells, and events. But okay, for example, I know at one point I remember the fact about myself that I got suspended for graffiti in the bathroom stores. Right, I remember. I know that happened to me, but I don't remember. And I know what I graffitied in the bathroom stalls. I know what I did as a fact, but I have no memory of. I only have a constructed memory of what it might have looked like if I had done it. But I don't trust that that memory is actually, like I don't remember what I don't have any recollection of actually graffitying the bathroom stalls. I remember. Vague things, but I remember thoughts. I remember thoughts. I remember thoughts. I don't remember. I vaguely remember, but I never remember doing it, and I don't really remember how any any events surrounding it. I don't remember any of my classes. I I remember the vague shape and layout of the building, and I remember. Just a blur. Everything's a blur in my life. One interesting thing: if you asked me to tell you what did I do when I got home from school for years, no fucking clue. I have. I know that sometimes I did some. Like I have a. I know I probably made some cardistry videos sometimes when I got home from school, and I know I at some point I played Counter Strike, but that was much later. Um. I uh, I know that there was a brief period where I played some TF2. That must have been when I got home from school because I only because I remember playing TF2 at some point. Um, I but I don't think I played that for very long. I know because of my Steam library, I don't have that many hours on it. I I think under a hundred. So I didn't play TF2 for very long. I. Must have watched YouTube videos. I remember watching Nerd Cube. I have a memory. I have a one of the rare specific memories is being in bed with my phone, watching a Nerd Cube video, and just finding it to be the funniest thing ever. But it was like everyone had gone to sleep, so I was like trying not to laugh because it was so funny. But I had to be quiet. That was a that's a memory I have. Um. But I really don't remember what I did on an average day after school. Um, I have. I remember one time when I went over to a friend's house to play Skate Three. I remember the journey to his house and back from his house. I remember having a specific conversation with him because it stuck with me, because he said, "All right, I got to go do my homework now or something." Um, it's getting late because I I just popped over to his house, basically on a whim. He I just said he just I don't remember what happened but. I just ended up going out of there with no, like we didn't plan it before. We just did it for just to hang out for a few hours to play Skate Three, and um, he said I had to go home. Well, not just him, but I also had to go home, and he said I got to do my homework, and I said made a joke like haha, I haha screw doing my homework haha, and he said something along the lines of well if I don't do it. It, then if I don't do it, then nobody else is going to do it. It's not going to get done, so I have to do it. And that really was like, wow, people actually do things. Because I would always procrastinate on my homework until my parents forced me to do it. Like I would never. There was not a single time in my life when I was proactive and I did my homework without being asked to do it. So that was a crazy experience. So I remember that, and I remember the walk back to the train station. I remember getting on the train and going home, but I. I have no idea what I did once I got home in any day. I don't know what I did on an average day when I got home from school for my entire life. I don't remember much of what went on in school for my entire life. I don't remember anything from my life. Anything mild. I remember nothing. Trauma, traumatic experiences. I'm just told they happened to me, and I don't know. I don't have any recollection of them. I think I'm very good at that. I think like a lot of people, they they say you shouldn't repress trauma. But I don't remember any of my even what happened yesterday. I already barely remember it. Like I know what happened, but I barely actually have many memories of it. Um, 
and that's so that's gone. Everything's gone in my life. I may as well never have happened. 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 It's okay though. No, happening is overrated. Happened is, doesn't mean anything. That's why everything in my life is about becoming. Everything, uh, the virgin being versus the Chad becoming, Kantian philosophy, my cock and balls. Um, everything is transitionary, everything is flows in my life because there is no past. The past may have never happened as far as I'm concerned. I just know events and I know disconnected things, but I don't know anything holistic that could be called the past. I've never been there, I've never experienced it. I don't think it's real. It's definitely not real. I don't know who I am. I don't know who I am. I may as well never have happened. Um, nothing led me up to this point. I was simply put here with, with nothing. I was simply put here with nothing. You know Lane? Remember her? Remember Lane from the TV show to say this film Lane, the anime? Do you remember how she uh, is fake, everything's fake, everything's fake, everything's fake, everything's fake. Remember that? Remember how everything's fake in her life? Remember how she's just not real and she's real, but she was put there old, she was made old, she was made old. You remember that? That's me. That's my situation. How family was never really her family. Do you really remember your family? Do you really remember them? Do you remember growing up with them? No, I don't. It's like the fake ass bullshit in Blade Runner. No, I don't remember anything. I was implanted with false memories at some point and brought into being. It may, may as well have been. May as well have been. I can't prove nothing. So it may not be true. Probably not true. But it's more like a metaphor than anything else, really. I feel much better now that I've had a pizza. You best bet I dabbed this shit like Ulla Lilia. I'm eating very slowly, though. You gotta have tiny bites, otherwise your heart will go kukun. Can your coconut will go back in? You know what I'm saying? This is the power of the fucking GPL. This is the power of free software. The 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 VN company called Leaf. They're basically one of the first and most influential um, LGA companies, if you know any of them. Uh, <clears throat> They used a video codec called XVID, and the XVID, XVID is released under GPL, and because of the laws of the license, anything you make with something that's released under GPL, you have to also release under GPL. And so, Leaf was forced to release the source code from all those games that they used the XVID codec under the GPL, and so all of them are free software. You can play... I mean, I don't think any of them are translated, but they're, they're free software. Is that not cool? They made White Album. They, look, they made Uta Wade Mono. All of the famous ones. Two Heart, Shizuku, um, uh, anything else I've actually heard of. White Album 2, and then they don't exist anymore. But there you go. Is that not cool? Is that not the power of free software legally forcing arrogant companies to lose money and release all their games for free? Fucking based. I've basically just officially broken through all artist blocks that I was complaining about for weeks and whatever, about not knowing what music I want to make or who I am or whatever. Um, the problems, the, uh, the, the way I, one of the most helpful things that helped me is the other day, Mrs's put out a video called Eight Days, Eight Hours of Work as a indie game developer. What or something like like what what does an eight hour work day look like for an indie game developer? And he's like, normally I he he starts the video by saying there's this hustle and grind culture that says that successful oh, I'm a successful entrepreneur, so I work literally 12 hours every second of my life, 27 million years, you know what I'm saying? And he's like, well, actually, I really only work for about two hours a day. Um, 
So I thought I'd try working for eight hours a day and just see what happens. And that basically reminded me two things. Firstly, you don't do it necessarily because you like the outcome. You do it because you enjoy the, your own craft, right? So he was like, I'm just going to work for eight hours a day. And I never even thought about doing that. And I I might do I might do a copy of his video. I've been thinking about it. Maybe I do eight hours of work looks like for an independent musician or something. That would be quite fun. Um I think I could easily do a week of eight hours working on music every day. I think that would be not too difficult. Oh, I think that'd be quite fun actually. I love making music. And um that's the thing. Uh so that was one thing that helped me because it reframed it as just because it's artistic doesn't mean that you have to think of it entirely in philosophy. It is, whether it's game design or music or writing or whatever, it's a craft as well as an art, right? It, there, there is not just artistry to it. It's not all about just the psychological wishy-washiness of it. it when you get down to grit, it's a technical skill that you have and a technical thing that you enjoy doing. And that sort of mindset i've made like four songs in the past two days um and all of them i'm pretty happy with the other thing that helped me is i wasn't getting enough diverse input and i was spending too much time thinking about what's popular um because i was worried about uh, it seems like nothing i do actually matters like it seems like nothing i upload on soundcloud or youtube or whatever it seems like um like when I make a song and I'm like, this one's going to be super popular. It's no, not super popular. And I make a song that's like this one, no one's going to like this. People like it. So I don't, I have no idea what my audience is going to be. So I've just completely disregarded the idea of pandering to an audience. And I've decided basically in, I, I need to throw away the, the whole thing that's been doing this fucked up psychologicalness to me is thinking about being a musician, like being a YouTuber, you know, trying to, trying to chase those titles and thumbnails and pump out content and, because I've been focusing on SoundCloud, because SoundCloud is where I see the most obvious figures, right? Like, it's where I have the most followers. I think I have almost 2,000 on SoundCloud, 6,000, I mean, 1,600, I think. I might be wrong about that, actually. I don't remember exactly how many SoundCloud followers. But, like, my songs get the most plays on SoundCloud, everything. And so, and SoundCloud is a singles-based platform and so i just basically been thinking too much about soundcloud and so i was just thinking about stop focusing on soundcloud don't release a single just work on an album as a fucking like a like it's a vase like it's a sculpture work on an album like it's a fucking uh woodworking project or something it's a craft like right you know like work on an album use your actual skill that you have and don't and put your don't think about anything else don't don't think about how it's going to do on soundcloud because it won't do well on soundcloud albums don't do well on soundcloud singles do well on soundcloud make it a bandcamp thing make it a everything else thing right so that's what i'm doing right now just flexing my muscles the second thing was a lack of input so i spent a while just going through some classics that i loved and some new songs and just being wowed by the complete amazing music that's out there. I got into Alice Coltrane. I've been getting back into Venetian snares. I listened back to um, Crystal Castles Volume 1 after um, Laura Less released that song that sounds like a Crystal Castles song. And I was like, I just want to listen to Crystal Castles. And now I'm like, Oh yeah, I just remembered Crystal Castles was my biggest influence when I first started No Thank You. Uh, and I've completely forgotten about how cool they are, basically. And the next thing is... Um, yeah, the the next the, the thing about thinking of it as a craft, what I mean by that is really to sort of... Nothing gets done by thinking about stuff, right? If I just sit down and think about music, I don't think I've, that's ever helped anyone. <laughs> I'm glad I did it because it, you know, sorted a lot of thoughts out. But really, what I should be doing is just like a job: sit down at the computer, 
I was. I mean, both two people, like two artists, I look up to, Mrs's and Peter Draws, both have this sort of similar attitude where it's like they just sort of. It's it's not about working long hours, super hard. It's just about working at all. That's that's what was. It's like it's easy. I've never actually really had a a thing like this where I get in my own head about stuff, but it's really just about. Because I fucking love making music. Even when I make music I don't like and I end up throwing the whole thing away, I'm, I'm, sometimes it makes me a bit demoralized because it's a lot of effort to make music. It takes a lot of mental effort. It, there's a lot of stuff to think about because I'm doing everything myself, right? So even just composing a song is already quite difficult. But then also having to bear in mind like mixing and you know sound design, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot to keep in mind. So, of course, when it doesn't produce something that you're happy with, um, it's a, a tiring experience and you can feel a bit demoralized after that. But normally, if I have a snack, I feel better. I've pretty much spent most of the today. I think today has been an incredibly productive day. I, there, because the other thing I was thinking about is I've been talking a lot of shit about how I want to cut down my YouTube usage because I'm addicted to YouTube and I, it's ruining my life. But I've just been talking shit. And if I actually just, there's loads of things I enjoy equally or more than watching YouTube videos. And sure, like, sometimes I'm too depressed to do anything else. But, uh, how do I put it? Actually, some of those things that I thought I would be too depressed to, or it would be too much effort, is actually not as difficult as you'd think once you train your brain to get into a pattern where you find it com comfortable. Does that make sense? Like, I've been watching YouTube videos since I was a child, so of course that's a pattern that's very comfortable for me, whereas... Um, you know, I would, I've also been reading books since then, but at some point I stopped reading so many books and now it's hard for me to read books. But today I made two songs, two and a bit, um, actually one, one full song that is complete everything, uh, one song that is needs vocals and um, some more, like it's, it's a first draft basically, um, and one song that um, is just barely like an idea. It's just really an idea. Uh, and then I, I, I've been, other than that, this harvest was terrible today. That's, this is what gave me a good day. It's, and it's not even a good day. Like the shitty things are happening in my life. <laughs> but, um, like, uh, the fact that the YouTube harvest was terrible today means that I had, I wasn't stuck doing my job of watching YouTube and instead I could get down to brass taxes Boss tax, boss tax. <laughs> Make some music and read some fucking Aerogay because that's what's really good. And also, this Aerogay is really funny and and good. And it's basically exactly what I wanted. Um, like it's, the, as I already said, the girls are cute. It's quite funny, but it's not like heady. It's not like philosophical, but it's it's like meta. So it makes me feel smart, even though it's just the most basic meta possible um it's you know it's that's it, it, that's basically all you need in life and i'm really hoping that the individual character roots aren't shit because uh the common route so far has been quite fun and i'm gonna get i'm probably gonna finish i'll try and finish the common route tonight but yeah like you can just bang things out that's one of the things that's cool about life so i hadn't been I think if I'd spent half the time I spent complaining about how I don't know what music to make, actually sitting down and making music, then I wouldn't have had a problem at all. But I'm also kind of glad I spent some time thinking about uh, where I want to take my art, because I think that's important. So it's interesting. Um, yeah, I, I think... Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, you can do other things than watch YouTube videos all day. 
And the other thing, yeah, it's it's about like input as well as output. You need to be inputting a good amount of high quality shit to get inspiration. And you need to be in not just that though, because if you just input other people's art, then you're just going to make art that sounds like other people's art. You also need to be inputting experience. And I have been in my room for too long and not really had any experiences. And even when I just went out with a friend for the first time in months and months and months, at least six months, probably eight months, um, relatively recently, um, even though we didn't even really do much and we didn't hang out for that long, I feel like it helped me. And uh, I definitely want to try and get out a bit more. Uh, like, I like I like being a hikikomori, but uh i think it's i think it's good it's good artistically it's good artistically to have experiences um and in here there's not that many experiences uh yeah i'm also so yeah i'm working on an album right now possibly two albums uh another thing is oh yeah this is the other thing I tried to write something poppy. You know how I was freaking out how I was just writing poppy shit? I tried to write something poppy today and it could, I couldn't come up with a good, good poppy melody. I came up, I, I sort of half-assed it, right? I came up with like a mediocre, I don't even remember what it was. It was some shit, major scale. I don't know, it wasn't very good. And I made a song with it and it wasn't very good and I was like making it and I was like, am I going to be able to save this? Uh, I don't know, this isn't that great. And I mostly finished it. I was like two-thirds of the way through make, through the composition and stuff. And I, I had recorded like temp vocals and um, and then I recorded like a little extra bit on the guitar just to layer in the background or on the bass but pitched out to sound like a guitar just to layer in the background a little melody like a counter melody um, which you would just hear in the back like hear somewhere in the mix to give a bit more harmony to the overall thing and when I was mixing, while I was EQing it, I had that melody soloed and looped so that I could EQ it properly. And I was just like, this is a good... So I just, I literally just instantly deleted everything and just kept that melody and basically sampled myself and just looped that tiny bit of melody and then put some effects on it so it sounded interesting. Um, and then made a whole song from there that sounded way better than the original song. So this is the thing. If you just sit down and make music... Something good will come out. It's it's literally just a, a time. It's just a time thing. Like if you if you if you if you're me, I don't know if this will work for other people, but if you're me, who's had enough practice making music, if you just sit down and keep throwing shit at the wall, something you'll come up with something good. It's just a key matter of knowing when, knowing when you've got something good, knowing when to spot. And I think this is one of my best skills is that I know when I got something good. Um, and I'm very happy with how that first song came out, although maybe I won't be happy with it in a week and I'll think it's cringe. This is a thing that happens to me. Uh, but I'm happy with it right now. I'm making I'm making moves. I'm making moves, you know. The only thing I'm worried about is if I do make this an album, um, I think I'm going to do two masters. I think I'm going to do two versions of the album. One for Bandcamp and SoundCloud that's, like, loud and that's, like, doesn't obey the strict rules of spots. Basically, if you want to, there's something called LUFS. I don't know what it stands for, but it's a sort of a way of measuring loudness. Um, and all the major streaming platforms like Spotify, all of those stuff, they have a guideline essentially saying you have to be under 12. I think it's 12 for Apple Music and 16 for Spotify. I don't remember exactly. LUFS average. Um or well, basically lower the volume of your song. It's it's a way of fighting against the the loudness wars, basically. So, um, like, if you have an an LUFS is affected by it's more complicated than just the average decibels. Like it's affected by um, dynamic range and stuff. But uh, you need to if you if you're doing if you're trying to hit that for streaming platforms, you need to do a master that is like aiming to hit that you you won't well the way i mix at least doesn't just stumble into it because i tend to mix very loud so i'm gonna need to clean the fuck out of my mixes in order to hit this because that's what i'm worried about is that it'll sound like shit because i won't have hit that if you want to know what a song sounds like when it actually 
is done correctly. Um, you see right through me, I see right through you, or whatever the fuck I call that song, is that's according to the standard. Um, compared to like um, the, all my albums, which aren't and all my noisy stuff. But uh, so my man, I don't know. I'm worried about. That's kind of a, it's kind of a pain, but also it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, all you have to do is stop. It's, it's you, you know that that meme. It's like a GIF or a webm, depending on where you've seen it. Of the it's like a I think it's Thai advert or something. Uh, about like oh you just need to stop drinking. It's basically a guy who's just like, drink, poor, angry, drink, poor, angry, stop drinking, go work, earn money, pay, other, pay others, pay a family, get better housing, employ people, improve your community, improve your country, get educated. Like, it's basically, and then at the end, it's, all you have to do is stop drinking to improve your life. So that's basically um, YouTube. All you have to do is stop watching YouTube, if you're me, and then instantly your life improves. It's just that... I'm worried that, well, I know for a fact, I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen with me. I have no idea what's going to happen with me. I just, uh, I'm, see, this, this is the problem with me. I, can ha- I, I can't even do anything good without instantly spiraling into, like, how is a good thing allowed to happen to me? I guess I am the world's genius. I forgot about that. So, I, of course I can make good music. I've been making good music the whole time. Hmm. I need to find a better way to promote myself. I think I'm going to... I don't know what to do. Like, the uh, my money is plateauing and falling, actually, from music. Like, I got a pretty big boost after the Gex thing, but now it's sort of all falling off. And, um... I don't know what I should have done better. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure what I was, should have done. If if there was anything I could do. But uh, I need to find a way to take whatever I have and build upon it, basically. I need to build more of a cult of personality. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I should start selling t-shirts with my face on it. Once COVID's over, I definitely no. If you're watching this video and you have ever talked to me, you need to start ha- uh, harassing me after COVID's over to start fucking booking some gigs because I have enough clout now. I have more clout than most of the little local punk bands that show up to gigs. So I like I definitely could like sell myself to a venue. Um and that's how you actually make money as an artist. I also if I'm doing that, I should buy a bunch of my own t-shirts so I can sell them. Maybe I'll get a friend to man the table. Uh It's weird, man. It's weird being me. What is clout anyway? There's nothing I can do with it. It doesn't. I don't even have it. I don't want pretending I have clout. I don't have any clout. I have <laughs> zero clout. That's so weird. It's like, oh, it's raining. I was wondering what that noise was. I've been played on the radio before. That happened. Some radio station in California played one of my songs once, and I found out about it, like, months later, somehow. I don't remember how. But that was pretty... That's a pretty cool thing that happened. Um, like a real radio station. And then just the other day, an internet radio station played one of my songs... 
Maybe I just need to keep chugging away. Maybe I just keep chugging away. Maybe that's what I need to do. The thing is, I have two, like, I have the, the worst case of fuckery possible, right? Because I have two fan, like, my fan base, if you can call it that, it comes from the two polar opposite sides of the internet. Half of the people found me through my cover of a fucking negative XP song. So half of them are incels, and the other half found me through 100 gags. So the other half are like Tumblr people, or I guess they're Twitter people, but I don't, I don't know what they are. You know, gex people, TikTok people, <laughs> Zoomers, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, so you, it's like the you can't appeal, you can't possibly advertise to both of these groups at the same time. It's a bit fucked. I've been thinking of going on walks, but I don't think I'm going to do it. Like, I keep... But it, I've just been thinking I need to get out more. Like, I, I like my room, and I like being a hiki, but um, I also, more and more, I, I think I just associate being out with being near people, but you can go out into a place where there aren't people. Like, you can go out into the woods and go on a walk or something. Like That sounds kind of fun to me. So maybe I'll do... I saw this documentary about Shugendo, right? Which is a monastic practice or religious practice in Japan. You remember when I was talking about Shinto re- uh, recently? It's a, it's adjacent to Shintoism. And they hiking is a big part of it. You know, sort of paying respect to the forest and the kami and the mountains and all that shit. Climbing mountains, doing, like, physical trials. It's sort of like the... I don't know. It seems like an interesting thing. I'm not going to look too far into it because I'm lazy. But maybe I should look further into it. I've got a lot of shit going on in my life. I've got a lot of shit going on all over. I don't know how people have jobs on top of this. <laughs> I guess they don't. I guess they just have really boring lives, and that's how they're allowed to have a job. I could, What am I going to do with a job? How am I going to get anything done ever? I have too much shit to, to going on in my life already. How can I spend... Life is not um, a very... You know what? I'll talk about that in a different clip. I'll, I'll save that. Um, yeah, wasn't this about music? Why am I talking about Shintoism now? I don't know. I can't really tell you what came... I, I struggle to make things in consistent genres. It's a miracle I managed to make um, uh, To the Fairest sound like consistent. It's a miracle I managed to make that album. I, I just suck at making... Con- the music that sounds like it came from the same person. I guess it's doable. I'm pretty happy with how things are going, I think. I'm worrying a bit because it, I am a worrying type of person. But I've, if there's one thing I can do, it's make music, I think. I think that's probably the thing I'm best at in the world. So I don't think I should be worried. I don't think I have any reason to be worried. Hey, look, the, you can see the brightness changing. Or, so, yeah, I guess it's the brightness. I was, like, wondering why my screen was flickering. I just noticed. Look, dark, bright, dark, bright. Anyway, back to playing my... Back to playing my Chinese PowerPoint presentations. By the way, that's a joke that was in this visual novel. Uh, the translation is so fucking... I, I can't decide if I like it or not. Like, the translation is... It just gets a bit too meme from time to time. But it's also kind of funny, I guess. Let's see what's going on in the world. Wait, you don't need to be here. This visual novel has an entire arc revolving around the characters watching Girls and Panzer for the first time. 
this is uh, firstly one of the reasons I like visual novels a lot because like they they are free to make the assumption that you have seen Girls and Panzer or at least know what it is um, because I'd like it's just made for a niche of otaku so they don't have to you know hold your fucking hand or they can just assume things about their audience it's like if you're reading an academic paper about like a complex subject you don't want to have 10 pages explaining the basics you just want to get to the the interesting stuff that's the sort like there's a level when you get into specialisms where there's a, a level of assumed knowledge and I like that because it, I like media that doesn't treat me like an idiot um but more importantly, the choice to use Girls and Panzer is genius because they need a show that every otaku is going to know but not, like, too famous because, for example, there's a joke where the main character compares it to Ava and its Studio Ghibli films. He's basically saying, like, it's on that level of quality. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but so it's like it's the perfect mid-range show where it's a show that normies don't know about really so it's it's not like Ava or Ghibli films or something like that where it's like well of course it's a masterpiece but it's not some obscure or it's not too obscure it's not like I don't know something that people wouldn't have heard of so enough people who are reading the VN are going to get the references and the joke like there's a level of specialization where it's just ridiculous like I, I'm I'm not going to make a reference to like you know I'm not expecting references to like I don't know Malice Doll or something like that like stuff that no one's ever seen uh, Gals and Pans is the perfect choice right Am I right? Like, that's genius. It's a genius move to choose that particular anime because it's the perfect level of popularity and, like, theming. Like, how it's, like, Moe, but also about tanks and shit. Like, matches certain themes in the visual novel. A lot of this is about tanks, but you'll see if you read it. Not that anyone except me is going to read this. But, and it's like obscure enough that, um, like, uh, it, it is, it is well, it makes sense for the Otaku characters because everyone in the thing is an attack. Like, it makes sense for them to, like, be into it. Like, it's not some normie show. It's a show that, Ot it's a, realistic show that these type of people would be really into but it's not too obscure that no one who's reading it is going to get the reference or remember it and it's a show that had a lot of staying power so it's still relevant to this day when you're reading like that's i know i think it's pretty genius writing move to pick like i can't i can't think of another anime that they could have picked that would have been a better fit for the sort of story and jokes like something that aired around the same time with like a dramatic plot Strike Witches maybe but that aired a bit earlier I think I don't remember exactly when Strike Witches came out I guess Strike Witches is maybe similar uh, yeah, no clue I think that I think Garupan is like the perfect choice. Well done, authors of this visual novel, for selectively choosing the correct anime. You know, this is actually a pretty fair point. This is actually a pretty reasonable point. They're playing fighting games. One of the group is very into fighting games, and she's get making everyone else play fighting games, and two of the other people are playing the fighting game. And one guy, the main character says, "Best to three, blah, blah, blah. Basically, this girl just says, there's no contest here. You're way better than me. No need for a best of three to see that. What? I'd rather just play mobile games where I can pay to beat my opponents, you feel? 
those games are fundamentally better, yes. You, you mean you actually like pay-to-win bullshit? Well, otherwise it all comes down to who has the most experience, and half of the player base is just boys wanting to show off how strong they are. Eroge is far more wonderful in its impartiality. I can kind of understand this. Like, I, I can understand the... Like, I've always thought CSGO is a superior game because there's no pay-to-win bullshit, um, and it all comes down to experience. But at the same time, um, like, yeah, you know, it's uh, there's there's a lot of other factors. Firstly, it doesn't all come down to experience. Some people can't afford good computers, and then they can't run CS:GO on a decent frame rate, and um, you know, that's not an experience thing. But putting that aside, uh, maybe it shouldn't be the case that you have to pump a thousand hours into a game just to be on a level where you can have fun. Um, and when I started playing CS, it wasn't like that. That's one of the things, is like, I feel like I can't get any of my friends into Counter-Strike these days, partially because they don't, you know, they have different personalities than me and it's not particularly a game they would like. But also, because when I got into CS, the player base was in general worse, uh, whereas... Uh, you know, nowadays it's very common. Like when I was in Silver five years ago, or whatever, um, it was a very different experience to being in Silver now. Even lots of people have even said this that people take as time has gone by, people have taken the game more seriously. Like people are less willing to joke around. Even though I actually haven't seen evidence. Like I still would say I joke around about as much as I always have, like my teammates are about as toxic as they always have been. I miss the days when you could talk to the other team in voice chat between rounds. That was such a good mechanic. I'm so mad that they removed that. I mean, I understand. There was literally no reason to have it in the game. The only reason to have it in the game is to trash talk the other team. But, like, that's sick, though. <laughs> when everyone gets in a same voice channel at the end of the game and the losing team is just talking shit like ah oh, it's so funny or raging when you destroy someone and they start rage that's funny but anyway tangent like with fighting games I've never bothered to get into fighting games because uh, in order to get to the point where I would be good enough at them to have fun <laughs> I would have to pump a lot of hours into them and they're not that appealing to me for me to do that. Whereas with a pay-to-win game, you know, if you just want to be good enough to have fun, then you can just pay to do that. I've never really thought about that as being a positive mechanic. But now I'm thinking it's not a positive mechanic. I still don't think it's a good mechanic. I think if you... But also the idea that if a game is built for that from the grid, like that concept doesn't work in Counter-Strike, for example, because the game is built from the ground up to be a level playing field. But if it's a game that's not built to do that, if it's a more casual game like Fortnite or something, then maybe it is okay. Like, maybe it's less bad than I've been saying it is. Maybe because I think it's an acceptable... Uh, if it's not your main hobby, I think it's acceptable. Oh. Although I think it's a waste of money and time to play those sorts of games. I and I personally wouldn't do it. I think I've just been enlightened a little bit and I'm not so mad about it as I was before reading that interaction. Although I was having fun playing my trash yo okay, I decided that well, this really is just a diary. I'm just do documenting every tiny little activity I do through the day. Interesting. Have I done this before? I don't remember. I wonder if it's interesting to watch. Um, I decided that running my computer at uh, 85 degrees centigrade for extended for multiple hours is probably not good. And so I've decided to take a break and let my computer cool down. And hopefully I can get back to it later. Um, even though I was having fun, 
I got worried about my computer being hot. So I'm going to take a break. Maybe I play, or maybe I watch some anime. Yeah, I think so. Roll up, roll up, step on up. It's time to play the classic game. Will this arrow gay run in wine? That's right, we're playing the classic game. Will this arrow gay run in wine? Um, please, I'm, I'm going to point the camera away from here, just in case there's some lewd images around here. Um, <clears throat> where's the fucking EXE file? Am I, am I an idiot? Aha, here it is. Okay. We're going to press enter. Before I do this, I want you to pause the video, go down to the comments, and write what you think. <laughs> <laughs> I know why this is funny to me. Will it run in wine? It's basically a coin flip. Three, two, one, go. Oh. No video? No video. Hmm. Audio, but no video. Fuck, we got audio, but we ain't got no video. Why is this? Um. <clears throat> okay, well, time to troubleshoot. And we seem to be working. Oni-chan, Kisua Jumbi, yeah, yeah? Listen, I'm a degenerate. I'm a fucking degenerate, okay? I'm a degen. Listen, I'm a fucking degen. A root. We all knew this to be the case. Can I turn full screen off, please? Please, can I turn full screen off? Please, it's all I've ever wanted. <clears throat> There's no windowed mode? Oh, I'm stupid, I guess. It's tiny? It's tiny? Why is it so small? Oh, okay. Bigger than... That'll do. That way, I mean, we can go one more, right? It's not gonna kill me. That'll do, it's fine. You guys don't care about this reason I wanted to put it in windowed mode, look at this, 17% RAM, 16, come on, focus, 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 there we go, 16, 7, 24, okay, but we're doing well, okay, we're doing well, uh, no, no bullshit, no bullshit, okay, that's what we need, also, can we, can we close this fucking thing, please, thank you, let's get out of here, real quick, you guys, I've forgotten that, wait, what am I doing? Well, okay, I need to decide right now what the point of this video is. Is this just a stupid diary where I just document literally everything that's happening? Or is this a video where I just, I am trying to make something that is watchable? Because I can't keep recording things and then saying, you guys don't care about this. Like, do I, either I'm recording everything or I'm trying to make something watchable. Which one am I doing? I'm... I guess I'll just record everything, because when have I ever cared about making something watchable? I have never cared. Speaking of watchable, I really need to watchable Dotsmite's latest videos. But I haven't found the time or the mindset for three-ish hours of Dotsmite. Um... I don't know. Oh, that you know what? That'll be a good thing to do tomorrow. I will. I will watch it while I eat breakfast. There you go. That's my goal. So expect some don't smite responses because this is what always happens. Whenever I watch one of my friends' videos, I'm always like, "Hmm, that was good." But I need to point out my little thoughts about it because I'm the most. I'm the main character. <laughs> This text speed is ridiculous. Come on. Give me some... 
did I not, sorry, ridiculously slow tech speed. Like, come on. Can, where is the fucking message speed? There we go. Instant. Who wants to wait for text to scroll by? Who's doing that? Who's sitting there like, hmm, yes, I'm going to set it to a slow speed so that I can slowly watch the text scroll by as I'm frustrated. Very strange. Very strange behavior. I guess it doesn't matter. I guess um, if you're Japanese and you can hear the characters saying the voice lines, it doesn't matter so much. But normally the protagonist doesn't have a voice, so maybe that's not an excuse. Oh shit. Oh, shit. I left my bits of little tiny bits of chicken. Sweep those up. Sweep the chicken in the sink. That's where chicken goes. Good thing I noticed that. Also left this out. Good thing I'm. Good thing I'm here. Otherwise, who else is going to do this? Let's put this away. Oh yeah, I got some new whiskey. Palace, it was only 15 pounds. An Isla Sky. It was made in the Isle of Sky. The Isle of Sky in Scotland. And I was planning to open it on video, but I decided to open it. Single malt scotch. Now, you know that this isn't as prestigious as my other whiskeys because, well, firstly, the graphic design isn't as good. But secondly, um, it doesn't say anywhere how long it was aged for, which I think is pretty dis dis disheartening. Yeah. Uh, unless I'm blind, it has the fucking longitude and latitude of the Isle of, Isle of Sky. It's a little smoky sweetness with a spicy edge, rich in contrast, like the, yeah, sure. But how long was it aged for? It doesn't say. It says it's a single malt. I mean, it says it's a single. So, it comes from one batch. So, it should all be the same. Oh, I guess maybe it's not the same, all the same. Maybe that, well, no, but the thing is, see, I know about whiskey. The The date on the whiskey is, as, is the oldest barrel. Oh, no, the youngest barrel. Sorry. So, like, if it if it says, like, aged 16 years or whatever, a like then it means that there could be a barrel 50 years old obviously 16 is that's a bit much but you know what i'm trying to say here right all right let's give this a little taste then i already had a tiny sip i'm gonna taste another bit i don't have a glass so i'll just drink it from the bottle Yeah, that's all right. It's not bad. Um, <clears throat> I would say not bad for 15 quid. Um, sweeter than my other whiskeys. 
not as smoky, but still, a, there's definitely a, a smokiness to it, but it's not as smoky as the other Isla Scotches I've had. Well, no, wait, Isla is, oh yeah, because it's not an Isla, is it? It's a Sky. Sky is a different, I, I'm an idiot. I, for some reason, I was saying Isla as if Isla is, is just all of the islands of Scotland, but is it? Is Isla, I thought maybe Isla, I think Isla is just one of the islands of Scotland. I don't remember. Whatever. Well, it's not, it's not as smoky as any of the other Scottish scotches that I've had. <laughs> but it's smoky a bit. It's quite, there's definitely got a smoky aftertaste. Not as much of a pleasant smoke as Lagavulin, of course, or um, the other one which I've forgotten the name of, Le Foig. But the smokiness is definitely there. It's a bit harsher on the front than any of the really nice whiskeys I've tried. Like, it's it's got a little bit of harsh, almost acidy or acrid, on, but only when it first touches your mouth. Not in an alcohol burny way, in a taste way. Um... Let me taste another sip. Yeah. A bit of a chemical -y taste. But it quickly goes away. And there's like a buttery, the nice buttery, smooth note. And um, it's not as deep of a, or complex of a flavor. But it's fine. Like, honestly, for the price, since it was on sale, I wouldn't have bought this at full price. But saved ten quid. I wouldn't have bought this for well. I should, I might have, but I would regret buying it for twenty five quid. But for fifteen quid, that's not too bad at all. I would say that's actually quite nice. I think I'm actually liking it more on the second sip. So I'm going to take a third sip. Maybe I'll like it even more. Yeah, that's actually quite nice. It's a bit more delicate. It's a bit more delicate than the Isla... than the, the other ones that I've tried. Which I think is why I didn't get it as quickly. Like, Lagavulin is really a slap-you-around-the-face type, type of whiskey. Like, it, it, it's... If you've ever had it, it's just like drinking smoke. It's amazing. This is a bit more of a delicate, subtle taste. I'm trying not to be pretentious here, but I do. I really like whiskey. Uh, this is my, my favorite thing I've gotten into in the past few years is nice whiskeys. I'm pretty happy with that, actually. Um, yeah. Yeah. Would recommend Talisker, Talisker Sky, Talisker Sky, single malt Scotch whiskey. I would recommend it. Yeah, I do find it very interesting the differences between Western and Japanese otaku, because it's like basically we're all doing it wrong. I mean, we're all doing it wrong, but I just find it interesting how due to complete lack of communication, there is like, the attitude in the West is uh, quite different from how Japanese otaku are, in my opinion. So I think, so in, in basically it could be summed up as um, Western otaku tend to be more about quantity, where Japanese otaku are more about dedication um, so this is mo mostly due to things outside of otakudom, specifically uh, Japanese economy and focus on physical goods. Japan is still the land of physical goods. Um, only recently have music streaming started very slowly to pick up there, but um, uh, I even learned this in school or in uni that 
I mean, I already knew it, but it was even part of my lecture course that in, if you market your music to Japan, you need to have DVD se- uh, um, CD sales because people don't buy music digitally over there or stream over there. It's still um, CDs and same with anime. Streaming is only just, just starting to pick up. Um, most people watch anime on TV and DVDs over there are very expensive. And so, basically, how a Japanese otaku would do things is stay up late and watch whatever late night anime you can catch, uh, probably based on whatever um, reviews and stuff that are making the anime, stuff like that. Um, Figure out which anime to watch, and then only after you've been watching it on TV, then decide if you really liked it, you would like to buy the DVD essentially as a token of gratitude to the staff for, for making something that you liked. Um, it's almost like a donation. Uh, and then you would watch that DVD multiple times, uh, watch through the entire show multiple times. And so Japanese otaku actually end up seeing far less anime than Western otaku who see anime as much more of a disposable medium who, you know, we like to watch a show once, completely forget about it, just to put it on our My Anime List charts. Not sure if you've noticed, but there is no Japanese equivalent to My Anime List. Um, I mean, there is, but people, it's not the same thing. It's more like a database that, uh, uh, like we have, like... You would think if there was something that was as popular in the Japanese fandom, we would have heard about it because otaku characters would reference it. Just like, you know, whenever I met an otaku, it's sort of like um, expected. You exchange mail pages, right? You exchange mail pages. This is like the standard. If you're a Western otaku, you have a mail page or an EDB or something, but, or an list, but you exchange that. This is like a a base thing, part of the culture. This is not the case in Japan, because when have you ever heard of anything like that? Never. Even throughout all of these anime, manga, whatever that you watch, you've you've never seen any Japanese character talk about it or Japanese person talk about it because it doesn't exist. Um, It's actually very unlikely that Japanese otaku would have seen the same hundreds and hundreds of anime that are relatively typical for Western Otaku, particularly old anime. If you're a hardcore Western Otaku, you're expected to have seen stuff from at least the 90s beyond Cowboy Bebop and Studio Ghibli movies. You're expected to have seen some some of the more obscure 90s and maybe 80s OVAs. Highly doubt most Japanese Otaku who aren't specifically Otaku for the 80s anime scene would have seen any um, 80s OVA in the modern era unless they were old enough to have grown up or been around during the 80s because they watch anime on TV and if they like it on TV then they buy the DVD because if you're if you're buying DVDs and they're you know 60 to 80 dollars you're not going to buy something unless you know it's good already um, and maybe you might buy Galaxy Express 99 or whatever like because it's just a classic and everyone knows it's good uh, most people will have fully already seen that in Japan because it's very well known in Japan. But um, well, maybe not most people, but a lot it, more well known in Japan than it is in the West. Anyway, so the quantity thing in the West is different, whereas in Japan it's more about t- finding a show you like, spending lots of money on it, and watching it many times and being very dedicated to it, rather than. And so, in the visual I was reading just now, for example, the way this person says to differentiate themselves from um this the 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 like trend what what do they call them what uh like people who are just hopping on a trend to like basically show your dedication to a particular show by um doing a pilgrimage to the the background from the show or buying the dvd early and being one of the first to review it stuff like that rather than so that's how you differentiate yourself from being a normie, rather than in the West where you differentiate yourself from being a normie by the num the, the hours or number of anime you've watched. 
uh, which is why hardcore otaku in Japan, generally, if you look at otaku rooms in Japan, they're mostly covered in eroge posters and some anime posters, but a lot of times you'll find them interspersed with eroge posters. And a lot of hardcore Japanese otaku seem to be, from the outside, more eroge otaku than anime even though they probably watch the same amount of anime as other otaku. Why? Because they watch it on TV, but what are you supposed to do when there's nothing, when you're waiting for your show to come on, right? This is where Eroge comes in, because it's relatively cheap. It costs, um, I don't know how much Eroge costs in Japan, but it's relatively cheap. Some Eroge are cheap in the West, so you can assume that they probably cost the same in Japan, if not less. You know, they're normally, they're not the same as a full price $60 game. They're like, uh, well, some of them are maybe, but the ones I've seen for sale were like fifteen dollars, something like that, um, which is pretty cheap. Um, and so, if you're buying that and getting, you know, maybe sometimes upwards of fifty hours of playtime out of it, that's more of a hardcore taco thing because you don't have the piracy mindset that we have in the West, where anime is something you mass consume for hours and hours and hours a day. Um, because you're watching it uh, free online rather than on TV for free. There's no particular time scale for you to watch it. Um, and so if you are filling up your time, you're filling out with visual novels because they're much longer, medium, and cheaper, and more widespread. Well, not more widespread, but you know what I'm trying to say. Now, uh, I just find that very interesting, that... Western otaku like to watch a million billion... Well, actually, the, the the normies of the Western world are people who just watch seasonal shows, but in Japan, it's almost the opposite because people who are normies would only have seen the classic, like, you know, and people who keep up with everything that's airing per season would be the otaku. Whereas that's seen as sort of a... Um, more slightly more normy here and that the hardcore otaku are watching anime 24 7 from every era um it's just not the case because of their physical based society where everything is dvds is that not really interesting i find that very interesting that's why you get like different level of fandom in japan like that's why you get the you know like the japanese like uh, Love Life fans and shit who are just completely nuts like they're just so into Love Life because there's a culture that's more about proving you're not a normie via your dedication to a particular show rather than the amount of broad range anime you've seen or not a particular show but you know a particular set of shows because there, you can't speed up time you can only watch as many anime as are airing, really. And so eroge and visual novels are where you sort of make up the time, and those are the things you can do on your own time. And that's very interesting to me, because almost no one in the West, compared to the wider otaku fandom, I guess, really plays visual novels. I mean, people play visual novels, obviously. They end up on Steam and stuff. People definitely buy them. There's a community for them. But it's a tiny subset of a subset. Which is also the case in Japan. I don't know. There's just a there's just a, a, an interesting epistemological difference there, right? Between the Western and Japanese anime fans. With, like, watching a billion anime would not necessarily be a Japanese otaku's priority or even that wouldn't be the way that they perceive of the medium of like, okay, I've got to watch everything that was ever made. That's not necessarily how they perceive the medium because it airs on TV. It's more like I'm going to watch the good shows that are on TV and then dedicate my uh, money which is essentially saying uh, it's sort of like an offering, right? It's sort of like a pilgrimage 
uh, I, I even will trace this back to Shinto. You know, when you go to a Shinto Jinja and you offer a Goen to the Kami, like, um, it's a symbolic offering of your, because your money is something presumably that you've earned theoretically through your work. And so it's saying you're dedicating, and your work is, you know, what you uh, spend a lot of your life doing. So it's essentially saying you're dedicating your life um, to this anime through a, a um, an offering by buying a DVD or a model or whatever. We don't have that here at all because of the distribution methods. You don't really buy... You used to, a long time ago, buy anime DVDs, but um, not really a thing anymore. Most people, if they want to buy it legally, they use Crunchyroll or Netflix or whatever, and most people who don't want to do that just stream anime illegally or torrent anime illegally, and um, that is very frowned upon in Japan. Uh, whereas in the West, it's relatively normal, though some people will still argue against it. Now... On the one hand, I completely support piracy. On the other hand, and also I probably... Well, on the other hand, it's not really on the other hand. I don't know what hand it's on. <laughs> but if anime was on TV, I wouldn't need to pirate it, right? Because like, it would be free, essentially, with my TV. Uh, it just comes through the airways. I don't know how TV works. I don't have a TV. Do you see what I mean? Am I making sense? So you don't need to find a free way of getting things. It's already free. And then you choose afterwards whether you want to make an offering to the creators as thanks. Um, I wish more anime studios would do like Trigger did and open up a Patreon because I would love to donate to them if I was in the future. Like... I don't have the money right now, uh, but if if I in the future have money, I would love a way. Like you can't even really buy goods directly from Japan. You know, like it's difficult. It's really difficult because even in Japan, people don't generally buy stuff online. Like they do a bit, but not like anime goods. People go to anime shops and buy them there. So, like that's how you do it. So it's actually quite difficult even to find anime goods online that aren't from, you know, shitty resellers selling it for way over price and you're not even really supporting the studio, you're supporting the resellers. So it's like, eh, not ideal. So I have to get rich, fly to Japan, go to Akiba, Akiba, Akiba Strip, bitch, I'd be selling them bricks, <laughs> and then buy my merch there. Like this, this is not official Monogatari merch. This is dodgy as fuck. Like, this is fake. You can see the pixels. It's not high quality at all. <sighs> yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm glad that Arrowgate distributors and visual novel people have figured out that digital distribution is important. I don't know what this deal is for games in Japan. I don't know if they have their physical goods autism about games or if they're more open to um, digital downloading over there. I don't know. But most, even some of the more obscure eroge you can buy in English. Um, for And like, it's actually pretty a pretty good deal. I don't buy them because I don't have money. But that's like a I'm glad they figured out how to make money on the Western market. Although I don't know how many people are actually supporting them. I feel kind of... I probably shouldn't, but I feel kind of guilty. Although I, I know I'm not stealing anything because it's, um, you know, copying rather than stealing. But well, at the same time, I feel like I should buy a copy of Subahibi just to support... Skaji, although he's not doing too bad. Tsubahibi sold pretty well in Japan, and he just released the Tuni Soro remake that also sold pretty well in Japan. And Sakurano Uta 
is very popular in Japan. So, um, yeah, fuck you for not translating Sakura no Uta into English. Fuck you, I'm not giving you any money until you translate, until there's an English translation of Sakura no Uta. When that happens, I will buy it. That is my promise to you right now. I will buy through official means the English, if it ever happens, this is my promise to you right now. I will buy through official means with my real money an English, the English translation of Sakura no Uta if it ever comes out. Obviously, if a, if a fan patch, if a fan translation comes out before, uh, well, if they never make an English translation and it's just a fan, I don't know. What I'm trying to say is if there's an official English translation of Sakura no Uta that comes out ever, I will buy it with my real money to support Skaji. That is my promise to you right now. The only thing I don't really want to do, hold on. I, this is this is another classic no thank you move. Remember to pause the video you're watching before you start recording, otherwise you're not going to be able to speak properly. I am currently putting my VNs on a drive so I can move them over to my Mac. And I don't want to do this necessarily, but I'm doing it for the safety of my Kami. Out of respect, it's rude to keep you overheating. I don't... I feel bad about it. I feel bad about running you at a high temperature for a long period of time. I know it's damaging your internals. And so I'm moving you to a computer that won't be running at such a high temperature uh, <clears throat> in the hopes that it's better, basically. <laughs> um, although this will make my experience of playing the game slightly worse, it will probably be a good thing. Safely remove drive. Recorded some lurks today, but, uh, and a little bit of me. I guess I didn't really do much music today. What have I got here? Oh yeah rhyme song that I started that I'm probably never going to finish because it's not that great. Oh look, Japanese sword. Yeah, see this is what I was... I just picked a random video to watch while I was eating because I just didn't want anything that I had to focus on. What am I doing? Oh yeah. Uh, 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 there it is. Let's do this over here. It makes more sense, actually. I might not even have space. Hold on. I have 20 gigabytes left. That's fine. Good enough. Good enough for me. Uh, let's put it in downloads, because why not? Did you know that Mac OS is built on BSD? Yeah. The greatest operating system, BSD. Done. Now, hopefully, I don't see how it wouldn't have, that this should have... Oh, fuck, wait, do I not have wine? Oh, I do. I just have to open with wine. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, hopefully this should have kept all my saves. I'm going to have to... Wouldn't it be funny if this didn't load? Okay, good. <laughs> Load. Yeah, I saved all my saves. I think. Hold on a minute. Twenty twenty one oh three twenty seven. That's right. That's yesterday. I mean, last night. Should be good. Okay, well, the, the 
good news is this isn't going to run super hot. I'm telling you. The bad news is I am forced to use my Mac for more than I am forced to, you know? I have to use it for stuff that... You know what? While we're here, I know this is almost certainly not going to work, but I just... I, I can't resist giving it a shot. Let's see if if somehow magically Wagamama High Spec is going to run on this computer's wine and not somehow not my ThinkPad's wine, even though there's no reason that that should be the case. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> This is working fine, so that's good. That's all that matters. Um, waiting for it to copy. This is the high quality content you subscribed for, right? Me copying something to my Mac so I can run it in Wine, a bad visual novel that I'm not going to enjoy. I'm only doing it now because it's the world has told me that I'm not allowed to play this, and therefore I have to play it. Right? This is all I care about. The world told me that I'm not allowed to play this, so therefore I must play it. Wagamama high spec. Let's see. Oh fuck, whoops, wrong program. Wine. Open with wine stable dot app. Like there's no way, right? <laughs> what why? Explain that to me, eh? Explain that to me. Why does this work on this computer? Why does this work on this computer and not on my ThinkPad? I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm molding. I'm seething. Seize and cope. Seize and cope. Seize and cope. Why is it working? Okay. Fuck off. Get fuck off. Yes, get me out of here. Okay, that's that's maddening. That's annoying. I don't want that to be the case, but I, apparently it is the case. Let's eject my drive. Did that work? I guess so. Yeah. All right, well... That's made me uh, that's made me mad for no reason. I could have this whole time, instead of reinstalling Windows, getting for I could have just copied it over to this computer and it would have just worked. I don't know why things aren't working on my other computer on my Windows machine, by the way. I have no idea why things aren't working on my Windows machine. Like, there is no logical reason why like, isn't Windows supposed to be the ultimate just works operating system? Isn't that why normies use it? No, normies do use it because it's the default, and normies don't change defaults. Anyway, let's fucking read this shit so that I don't have to deal with anything ever again. I All of this for Wagamama High Spec, a mediocre visual novel that I know I'm not, I'll enjoy the common root of. This is the problem. It's not like, it's, there's, there's, there's two, like, okay, how do I explain this? It's not like it's just something that I'm going to hate, right? Or something that's just going to be average throughout. That's, that was, that's a different story. It's something that I know is going to be good at first and then become bad so it's going to be good enough to get me invested and then I'm going to be mad about the fact that it's bad I'm going to be mad because bad I don't know I don't know what's going on with me but before I do any of that Hold on, I've done this badly, haven't I?
this regret. Oh fuck, I forgot this plate. Um, that's not a plate, that's a bowl. Okay, well, I'm gonna put the bowl in. <laughs> Okay, good. Just waiting for it to make a noise, hoping I didn't accidentally kill everything. Wow. I don't like it. My room's too clean. But it's fine. My bed is too big. I don't know what to do about this. The other day, and by that I mean yesterday, I accidentally organized to see a friend because I've been thinking I should get out more. But as time has passed, I'm thinking, I don't necessarily know if that was a good idea. I don't know if I want to go see a friend anymore, but it's fuck. I can always cancel at the last minute. This is a classic no thank you move. Cancelling at the last minute, so it should be fine. I feel like shit today. I feel like complete shit. I don't know why. I think I slept alright. What time is it? What time is it? Six if I woke up at two thirty, three, four, five, six. I guess it makes sense if I've only been awake for four hours ish. Then I probably won't feel completely normal until a little while. Also my breakfast was weird today, not very nutritious at all. So who can say? Did I remember to take my fiber supplement I think I might have forgotten it's okay I'll take one with dinner Nam your and get your 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 nam your Nam your and get 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 your Your <laughs> 
what am I doing? What am I doing? A satisfying phrase to say, particularly with throat singing. Num no horn yeah It sounds it sounds so fun. It's really satisfying to say. It, listen, I'm not even a I'm not a Buddhist, let alone a spiritual Zen Buddhist, let alone have I ever read the Lotus Sutra. I just like saying it. Num no horn yeah It sounds good though, don't it? You gotta say it. You gotta say it. Num yo ho and get yo num yo and you this doing this. Num yo being very serious about it. Num yo ho and get yo num yo. It's just fun. It's just a fun thing to do. I have made a decision. My decision is to hope there's a small source pattern here. Good. Decision part one has been complete. Okay, now we can complete my decision. I'm gonna make some golden milk. Golden milk is an ancient Indian drink. Uh, although I'm doing it with oat milk because I, um, regular milk, I'm a little bit lactose intolerant, I think. Like, it, it makes me phlegmy. It makes me, my throat all full of shit. So, we're doing it with oat milk instead. Never done it with oat milk before, but I'm sure it's delicious. Um, let's get a glass so that we can measure it. It's not my glass. Oh, I guess I'll do it with a mug, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see if I can remember the recipe. So, this is just to measure it out. There we go. I will definitely spill it. Okay, now here's what we need. We need the main ingredient. Should be in here. Well, we're going to need some ground ginger and some ground turmeric. Next, we're going to need, what else does it have in it? Cinnamon. Yes, cinnamon, which is here. Next, honey, which is here. Black pepper, which is here. That's to the pepper in, in the black pepper. You don't put much, but the pepper in, in the black pepper should help your make the turmeric more bioavailable. I know my science. Um, I swear there's one more ingredient that I'm forgetting. Uh, but who cares? Okay, teaspoon. We'll put you up here. Now, I'm going to do half a teaspoon of everything. Okay. Except honey. I like sweet stuff. Okay, turmeric in. Let's put a little more in there. I actually quite like the taste of turmeric. Turmeric in. Now a little bit of ginger. Some light on. There you go, much better. I know what's going to happen is it's just going to all come tipping out at once. Isn't it? There we go. Should be good. 
church. Good morning. I'm Starry Olen. Oh, fuck. Black bear. Black bear again. Probably should be using a proper wooden spoon for this. Sorry, everything's okay. I forgot the black pepper. This doesn't look like enough turmeric to me. I think I'm going to put a little more in. Yeah. Is there something I'm forgetting? Is there some other main ingredient? Ah, uh, whatever. These are the main ingredients. Keep stirring it. Let's keep raise the temperature up a little bit because I I don't know. I don't know why I'm raising the temperature really. It's just got to warm the milk really. It doesn't have to be boiling. Just trying to stir it all so it gets incorporated, you know? Alright, let's give this a taste. It smells nice. This ginger powder is incredibly bitter. I probably shouldn't have put so much in. Even though I, I only put a little bit, but... You know what I mean? actually not that too murky. I could probably even put more too murky in. Is there some other ingredient I'm forgetting? I mean, I know you can put nutmeg, but I don't have any nutmeg. Um... Oh, vanilla, that's it. I knew I was getting something. Vanilla extract. And then that vanilla bean extract, so it's just be right. What is this? Okay, yeah, this is vanilla extract. That might have been too much. Ah, whatever. I'm sure, it's fine. I knew I was forgetting something. Give it a taste now. Ah, fuck. <laughs> I, my finger touched the hot bit on the side, and I didn't even, that was complete, um, what's the word? Reflex. And, and I just flicked milk everywhere. It's fine, I'll clean it up. That's pretty good. What does turmeric I've forgotten what turmeric is like on its own. Wow. I could even do with a little more, to be honest. I'm a bit of a turmeric fiend, I think. I feel like I'm making a potion of some kind. Alright. Um, I'm not sure how to video this, so I'm just not going to.
Alright, here you go. My golden milk. And a spoon with which to stir. See, it is very golden, this golden milk. There's a little left over, but it doesn't matter. Alright, let's taste it. I definitely put too much ginger in it. And maybe not enough cinnamon. I'm going to put an extra bit of cinnamon. That's actually quite nice. That's actually really nice. It's a bit um, bitter from all the... I think I put a little too much of everything in, maybe. I mean, it's fine. It's quite a strong taste, though. I don't know if it's supposed to be such a strong taste. I think I maybe went a bit overboard. But it's fine. It's fine. Maybe I should put some cardamom in it. Uh, cori that's coriander, not cardamom. Fuck. I don't think I should put coriander in it. I think that would make it bad. <laughs> Ooh, someone must be talking about me. the oat milk back. Anything else? Oh yes, the honey. Pretty happy with this, I would say. Look at this, look at that colour. Golden milk. Quite an intense taste. I definitely think I put too much ginger or too much something. I think I should. You know, when I was like, this needs more this, this needs more this, I think it didn't need more anything. But, oops, that was the wrong button. It's fine. It's good. Good comfy drinks. Them ancient Indians, they knew how to make comfy drinks. I don't know how ancient it actually is. I've heard that it's in one of the Vedas, um, or mentioned in one of the Vedas, so it must be pretty old. I mean, the newest Veda is like 2,000 years old or something, right? So it must be pretty old. I guess the idea of spicing milk is not too, like, that's probably a pretty ancient idea, right? Yeah, supposedly very healthy for you. I mean, turmeric's supposed to be very good for you, right? As long as you have it with black pepper. And, um, yeah, I don't know why I'm filming this. I keep saying that. I don't know why I'm filming this. I'm just documenting everything that happens to me. I tried to, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I did some good work today. I definitely spent a few hours making music. I've got a pretty good idea of sort of album direction stuff, even though the track I made, 
I was skeptical of whether it was that good, but then I remembered you you just keep working. You you don't like I was thinking the lyrics are a bit too emo, but I took a break and then I came back to it and I thought the lyrics are a little emo, but they're more like they're just honest. Um, and as long as the whole album isn't like that, I think it's okay to have one or two tracks that have very honest, straightforward, emotional looks. Um, so that's okay. Uh, recorded those, did some more mixing, made some songs, stuff like that. Made a whole song, a whole other song. That was good. Um, although I don't know how good it is. I haven't actually listened to the whole thing because <laughs> I just I just made it and then saved it. I haven't actually listened back to it yet. So I hope that's good. Um, but I just tried to read the fucking original novel. I know, I just feel so tired all of a sudden. Or like my eyes, I can't really focus on reading. This is the only reason. I wish this stuff was, if, if only this stuff wasn't didn't happen to me. Like, I don't really understand what it is. Do you reckon if I just forced myself to start reading right now, I would just get into the flow of things? Because I just feel like I'm just, I would just be distracted right now. I think I would just be distracted if I was to, because I cried and I just couldn't fucking focus on the words. What time is it? 12, okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a bit of a weird day. Not really been in the mood for reading today. I don't know why. I wonder why I'm like this sometimes. Like, I don't think I could watch anime or anything. I just, but I just have to waste today. I mean, I did make some music. That's fine. But, like, I would feel more fulfilled if I, if I could actually manage to be doing interesting things right now instead of just watching YouTube videos. <sighs> like, yeah. My head's a bit blurry, and I don't really know why. Like, I, what if there's just some reason behind this why this happens? Who knows? Maybe if I just take a bit of a break, I, I come back to it. I'm going to have something to eat. It is playamish. I was thinking perhaps these frozen gyoza dumplings. There's only five of them, and I feel like that wouldn't be very filling. Um, but on the other hand, maybe that's what I need. Maybe I need something that isn't particularly filling. These will cook pretty quickly. I have another option. I believe I have a pack of ramen here. But last time I had these, I felt sick. So I don't know if I want to have ramen. There is, of course, a third option, which is to make something else. The fridge is very full. There's plenty of food. Um, I can think of a million options to make. Mushrooms, ham, what is this, smoked salmon, pasta, eggs. Did I have eggs today? What did I have for breakfast? I have no idea. No idea what I had for breakfast. I'm an eggs type of guy, you know? You know me, I'm an eggs guy. I got some canned tuna. I wish there was just one meal that existed, and then I would always know what to eat. There's too many meals. I think I shall... have the frozen gyoza and something else, because five gyoza is not very much food. Perhaps... Perhaps I have the gyoza 
and then the noodles together. That's kind of a genius idea, right? This is kind of a genius idea. I just need to remember how to cook the gyoza. Take a pan. You heat yourself. And then from here it's a guessing game. <laughs> In the meantime, the noodles should be pretty easy. dirty so I can't use any of that. Um I guess I'm using a bigger pot than I should be. I guess it's the only one available. Right, well, I don't need to film this necessarily because it's just going to be distracting. We're really scraping the bottom of the barrel for topics to talk about. Um, I'm going to talk about how come no thank you? How come you drink straight, cheap vodka constantly and not, like, bearable alcohol that doesn't taste like nothing or disgusting or whatever? Well, there are multiple reasons. Reason number one. I used to... Well, okay. Reason number one. Spirits over beer. I used to be a regular beer drinker. If you go back to my old videos, I'm always drinking beer. And while that was a good aesthetic, and quite nice, I do enjoy a nice beer, um, the problem is the beer has a lot of empty calories, basically. It's like drinking bread. And so if you drink beer every night, you get a beer belly. And, you know, I have a very sedentary lifestyle and would probably not, don't need those calories. Don't need the extra calories from beer. So that's number one. Oh, but no, thank you. Why not just make a mixed drink with something that doesn't have many calories? No, thank you. You probably have Coke Zero calories in your fridge right now. Why not mix your vodka in that? You'd be right, I do. Um, there's another reason I don't do that, which is that. And we can add to this my favorite mixed drink, which is a very ghetto one. Um, I've had nice mixed, you know, I've had like cocktails before, and none of them can compare, none of them can compare to vodka and Mountain Dew. That is just a superior mixed drink because Mountain Dew is my favorite drink, my favorite soft drink, maybe besides Green Classic Monster. But Mountain Dew is probably my favorite fizzy drink. Um, remember, Mountain Dew tastes different in the UK than it does in the US, so I have never had US Mountain Dew. But I know UK Mountain Dew is supposedly less sweet and more lemony. I don't really know. It's quite nice. Um very nice. Now, there's two things about this. Firstly, um, all of these drinks generally have caffeine in them. Fizzy drinks have caffeine in them, and I drink late at night, and although I'm not super sensitive to caffeine in the sense that it gets me hyper, it does stop me from sleeping properly. Um, if I have caffeine, even if I feel completely normal, when I go try and fall asleep, I'll be really tired, but I won't be able to fall asleep. And... Um, I don't like that. Although I used to, again, I used to drink more mixed drinks than I do now. I don't drink them anymore, but I used to. 
even a zero calorie one, they often still have caffeine. Oh, but no, thank you. Why not make a vodka orange juice, aka a screwdriver? Well, again, I used to make vodka orange juice, but there's one final problem with it, which is that you you don't taste the alcohol very much, and it's it's easy to lose track of how much you've been drinking, especially once you've been drinking, because once you're past your first glass, you no longer taste anything. <laughs> you're just drinking vodka orange juice like it's nothing. Next thing you know, you've finished half the fucking bottle. Right? Dangerous. It's dangerous. I like to be in control. And so I force myself to drink straight vodka because that way I know for sure that I'm drinking. And I know, you know, I can't take it lightly. Because I actually don't enjoy getting super, super drunk. I only really enjoy being, like, on the edge of, like, drunk. Just low-tier regular drunk when you're you just, like, one step up from just being a buzz or tipsy, but not to the point where you're, you know, slow in your words or properly drunk. Although some, from time to time I enjoy that, but most of the time I don't really enjoy being that drunk. I like being just, like, on the edge of of just about drunk. That's, like, my my key golden zone right there when it's like you know you, everything you you can do everything like normal the thing about being really drunk is that it's hard to focus on things and i i like focusing on things um so the key is to get it to the point where you can focus on you can do most things like normal but everything is just more fun than it usually is that's the key point that's what i always aim to achieve um and it's hard to do that when you're just drinking. You just there's nothing stopping you from just taking another drink, or a sip of vodka orange juice or whatever. Whereas if you're sipping out the bottle, well, the disgusting taste and the burning in the throat is going to stop you from, is going to make you at least think about taking another swig. Um, that it's this isn't a hundred percent effective, but it's much more effective, especially because I'm uh, like once I. How do I explain this? I'm not very sensitive to the taste or burn of alcohol once it's in a drink. Like when, what you can you can feel you can do like fifty fifty, and I, I'll just not care once it's mixed. I even used to drink vodka waters sometimes, um, like or aka spicy water. Shout out Jericho. <clears throat> I, I'm just not that sensitive to the taste of alcohol, and the fourth reason is that. If I'm not drinking vodka, I'm drinking whiskey, and I like to drink nice whiskeys, as you know, and you don't mix those. So, there's all my reasons why I tend to drink straight alcohol. I guess there's also a hidden fifth reason, which is that it's just um, less effort. <laughs> I'm just that lazy that I can't even be bothered to go to the fucking kitchen and get a, a glass and a drink to mix my shit with. That's a, that's a little minor reason. I guess it's barely a reason, since I'm not that lazy, since I could get up when I was having beer, so maybe that's not a... Actually, that's not true. I used to keep my beer in my room, so... There you go. Who knows what's true anymore? But those are the reasons. We're really scraping the bottom of the barrel for content here. The least interesting facts about me... <laughs> there's nothing, You've got nothing left to learn about me. I'm the only one who sees how Crystal Castles... And Joy Division are secretly the same band, or at least intimately connected. I'm the only one who sees it, and I can't explain it. I can't explain it because none of you will ever understand. None of you will ever understand. It was the universe that handed the answers to me. It was Eris that handed the answers to me. And I can't explain it to you because you'll never understand. I'm the only one who sees the intimate connection. I'm never going to outdo myself. Denpa is the best YouTube video ever created. There's only one problem with Denpa, which is that the section where I'm ranting about Yoshika Miko Red is too long. That section is too long and uh, not very good. I even mentioned that later. Uh, I even mentioned that later in the video where I say I was just so fucking drunk because I was so fucking drunk. And it, later in chapter 3, I even say, like, that section wasn't very good because I was so drunk. But, you know, Yoshika Mirko Red made a video about, of course, 
Do you remember how in that? Do you remember how the whole point of that segment was just a little bait about how Red couldn't possibly watch it without making a response because he's just a pussy or whatever. And then lo and behold, I was completely my analysis of his psyche was just completely right. Like that's funny and epic, and that made me feel good, or whatever, and that makes me feel superior to him. But honestly, I kind of wish that I'd gone with a different thing. Like, I don't think it's a problem if you actually watch the whole video, because I address it in Chapter 3. Necessarily, I wish it was shorter. But maybe I kind of wish I'd gone with it, because it, like, Yoshikamika Red is a pretty obscure channel. People don't know really what it is. So, like, unless you're keeping up with the the, the beef... <laughs> You're not gonna understand. Like it's a bit weird. It's a bit stupid. I should have gone with like hiding in my room or something. You know that would have been a much better way way to do things. Cause uh, you can take the piss out of hiding in my room as much as you like, and it's punching up. I mean, Yoshika Mika Red is still punching up because he has way more subscribers than me, so it's still punching up. And he's you know way more of a normie than me, so it's still punching up. But uh, I you know it's not as punching up as punching up at hiding in my room. That's the one thing I regret is the big tirade against Yoshika Mika Red because the real it like really the point of it it didn't even matter the, what it was about. It was just that I needed to be upset with something to reach my lowest point at the end of Act 2 so it would fit with the theming of the three act structure hero's journey stuff that I was trying to talk about. Right? Like, that was really the point of it. it. It didn't really matter what I was talking about. And I even say later in the video, like, oh, you really think I was mad about that? You really think I give a shit about Yoshika Miko Red? Do you think that affects me at all? No, it's just for, like, I even say that in Chapter 3. So, like, that's the thing. But I kind of wish that I had just gone with something else, some other lowest point instead. That's, like, my only problem with the video. Other than that, it's the best YouTube video I've made. Um, and I don't think I'll ever be able to outdo it. I definitely don't have anything else to say that's as interesting as Denta. And so instead, I'm just making the worst videos I can possibly make. This is... What you're watching right now is me making the worst videos I can possibly make. Just quality. Video quality as low as possible. The stuff I'm talking about, just the quality of it, the quality of discussion, as low as possible. Everything just as bad as possible. Everything, no, there's no cinematography here. You know how I made a whole video about how YouTubers should put thought into their cinematography? Okay, there's some thought, which is the only thought is I, I'm not going to show my face, or I'm going to try and avoid showing my face. That's the only thought that's gone into the cinematography. No thought, anything. No thought into anything, no anything, nothing, no quality discussion, barely watchable, no music, no editing, nothing, no filter, no content, just absolutely nothing for no one's sake. It's not helping me, it's not helping you. And yeah, I know that someone's going to watch this. <laughs> someone's going to get this far into the video. I don't know who. Shut the fuck out if you're still here, though. That's crazy. I I kind of I, I like I don't know. Denpa and Sacred Cow were just the best I could possibly do, and I don't think I can ever outdo. After I made Denpa, I was like the only way I can possibly outdo myself is by actually just making a short film, and I had an idea, which I'm not going to tell you because. It's not necessarily a short film, but a, an idea of a way to use the genre in a certain way, of YouTube in a certain way that it hasn't... Well, it's been done before, but in a... You know, there's ways to it. Um, but I would, so I won't tell you just in case I ever end up doing it, although I don't think I ever will. But they had that idea, but that's, like, closer to a short film than it is to a vlog, basically. Like, the only way you, I could progress it is by actually just making a, sh a weird short film. Or, or just a film, I guess. 
and uh I don't necessarily think that I want to do that. And so instead, I've just ended up going the opposite direction and putting no effort into my videos. Do you know what I'm curious about? What was the video I made directly after Denpa? This is, well, this is what I'm interested in, actually. What video did I make directly after I made Denpa? I did make another good video after Denpa. I made it under no thank you's bed and then challenged to me. Okay. Eternal Whiplash is my other good video that I made after Denpa. Um but everything since Eternal Whiplash has been has been shit. Everything since Eternal Whiplash has just been awful. Um, so I'm not really sure what to do about that. Not really sure how to make good videos. How does one go about making good videos? All I know how to do is make eight hour assorted music. That's all I know how to do anymore. And Luke Smith ripoff. That's all I know how to do. I have no idea how to make good video. ideas, maybe four ideas for interesting places to go, but I don't know if any of them will ever happen, because they take effort, and I'm not good at that. Quick dream report. I don't remember all of it. There was some earlier, earlier on part which involved monster energy drinks and water and going into a shop and buying stuff and I barely remember what happened, but what I do remember was me. It was kind of like the final two Harry Potter movies. <laughs> Not really, but it was like me and this girl and possibly another guy. I don't really remember if there was another guy or not, but there was me and this other and a girl, and we were... I knew that we were, like, hiding out. Like, we weren't supposed to be seen. And so we were, like, keeping our heads down, wearing masks and stuff. I don't know why we weren't supposed to be seen. Possibly done something earlier in the dream or possibly just made up. We were, like, fugitives. And I remember, so there was one guy who was looking at us and then also we were in Japan. There was one guy who was looking at us and then he seemed like he recognized the girl. And then the girl looked back at me and nodded. And I did some magical move and like little wisps of smoke came out of each one of his ears. And it was like his memories. And it was like a memory wipe. Magical move. And, uh, and then he looked very confused. And I was like thinking about how memory wipes would work. And then something happened, there was a bunch of people in like a square in like a park and something happened. I don't remember what the fuck that was about. But then, somehow, I'm in like a house or somewhere, I'm somewhere and there's like a magical safe, like a safe you put things in. But like, with this safe, every time you open it, it opens to a different safe in the world. It opens to a different safe in the world. Um, like, so you we were basically just kind of scare people shit or me. But every time I'd open the safe and close it, it'd be something stupid. Like, there wouldn't be anything good in there. Like, I, um, yeah. And also, it was less, eventually it started to be less like safes and more like cupboards. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I was opening the door and just standing up in people's cupboards, and there's little nothing in there, really. And once I opened it up, and it was a big space. The last time I opened it up was a big space. And so I stepped inside, and then I was like, I'm going to go take a little look around. 
And then next thing you know, I'm wandering through someone's house at night time like a some sort of robber, like some sort of criminal. I'm wandering through someone's house at night time and then I'm like Oh fuck. I don't remember how I go back to the safe, do I? I don't like I'm too scared to go back to the safe, try and escape. I'm gonna go maybe there's some other precious things down here in the basement so I go down the basement and then I'm like okay you know what I'm super confident I'm just gonna walk over to the toilet lock myself in the toilet and then make an escape plan and I walk over to the toilet super confident and I'm just in the toilet closing the door and just as I'm about to lock the door like a horror movie someone on the other side grabs the door and, and tries to pull it open and I'm like, oh, fuck, but I'm trying to be quiet because they might just think it's someone else from their household who's gone to the toilet at the same time. And so I'm just like, oh, fuck. And I'm trying to wrestle the door shut and locked, and they're talking to me, but I'm not responding. And then I'm waiting, and I'm, it was the most scary thing ever. It was like there was even a, a, a like, a orchestral hit sound, like a horror movie. Like, poof, when it happened, like... Just closing the door, nothing special. Closing the door, suddenly, just when you're about to close the door, someone tries to yank it open. If they see you, your whole plan is over. Also, I may have been a small gremlin creature. I don't really remember. May have been a small gremlin creature. But not a human at this point. I'm not sure. Anyway. So then... I'm like, oh shit, i got to think of an escape plan quick because it's only a matter of time before this person realizes that I'm not someone from his family. There's a little window in the corner of the toilet. I could break the window and run away, or I could, this is the most interesting plan in my opinion, open the door next to the guy, like right now, open the door so that the guy's still there, and then instantly use a memory wipe spell, the one that I used before, and then use post-hypnotic suggestion, basically, to just be like, hey, it's me, your friend Fred, we're having a sleepover, remember? And then he would just be like, yeah, sure, we're having a sleepover. And then it would take him a minute to, re like, the time it would take him to realize, hold on a minute, that's not true, would be enough time for me to make it to the safe. That was my second plan. My third plan was use some, just like kick the door down and just beat my way to the safe and then, and then close the safe and go back home. Um, but none of that happened because I just woke up. <laughs> so none of those eventualities actually took place. I just was thinking about them. I, all that happened is I ended up just waking up in real life. But yeah, it was a fun dream. <sighs> fun dream. Also, I seem to have slept until 5 p.m. That's a bit of a mistake. Whoops. I really like Horror Love's idea of Denver Mob as, like, aristocratic poet monks. <clears throat> um, I've been definitely monking it for a while, but I like the sort of the, the Chinese dynasty aspect of things, you know? Um, I, I consider myself currently to be a, a monk, I consider myself to be a free monk of the monastic order of the sacred nothing. But um, I like the, the aristocratic element to it. And you might think that's strange coming from an anarchist. But one thing that's notable about Denpomob is that, like, everyone's trans. <laughs> I'm not sure if you've noticed. Um... <clears throat> That's interesting, right? And something about that is, throughout history, it's always been, across cultures, shamanic and aristocratic classes who uh, play with gender or are not uh, completely gender-conforming, basically. That's, that's like the typical. Like, even if you think of, like, a European, like... Um, what's the word, fop, you know, like, like those, like, kind of effeminate 
<laughs> aristocrats, right? Whereas the quote unquote working people, even if you look at like communist propaganda, are always uh, like very gendered or traditionally gendered, cisgendered, I guess. So, and also in many cultures, I don't need to explain this to you, you probably already know it, but in many cultures, transness or non-binary genders are associated with shamanistic practices or spirituality um, in many, like, indigenous cultures and stuff. So I think it fits well to be a aristocratic poet monk's um, of Denpa Mob, I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. Even though I'm not trans, uh, I think there's something to be said about that. There's something to be said about that. But also, I like, I don't know what I like. I like being a monk. Being a monk is cool because it's like it fits with the ascetic lifestyle of a like a hikini type person, which I guess we all are. Um, I I consider myself, you know, like I've um a lot of time for quiet study, basically, which is essentially, you know, I said it before, but monks were just the autistic needs of the, the past. They found a way to be a neat. Like if you look at all the shit the monks got up to, it's the most autistic shit possible. They, I, I've already talked about this in other videos, but this is a bad video, so it's okay if I repeat myself because I've this video is shit. Um, <clears throat> that like a lot of monk practices, like for example, mantras are just vocal stims um, and rituals and stuff. You know, autistic people like rituals. It's it's it, right, <clears throat> and then. Everything's very quiet in a monastery. Um, they're all vol cells. <laughs> vol cells. I like the idea of describing, like, like monks that, I don't know what I was just talking about, I got interrupted, but something about monks being neat. <clears throat> like, monks had all sort of interesting, crazy, wacky theories, like, English monks came up with all sorts of crazy specific shit that only an autist would come up with. I don't know. To me, it's obvious. And then you got, like, Shugendo, which I've been really interested in recently. I'm going to start practicing Shugendo. And earlier on, I was talking about how Shinto just makes sense to me. Um... So, yeah. Are we a cult? <laughs> is is this a cult? Is this what's happened? <laughs> this song is pretty much done. Uh, yeah. Pretty good. Poppy. Emo-y. A little bit. A little indie from emo. But, um, yeah. Very happy with the drums. The drums sound sick, but I can't really get the, like, volume nice, you know? Like, it's a bit too quiet, but if I go any louder, it's going to be bad on streaming platforms. So, I'm not really sure what to do about that, but it's fine. Um, oh, my God. I've just been... Anyway. Uh... Brief notes on light. I used to be, when I used to live with my dad's, I used to share a room with my brother. And so at night time, I'd have to have all my lights off so that I didn't wake him up. Um, and so I got very used to browsing the computer in the dark. And then when I moved out of my dad's, I just kept the habit. But over time, I have become more and more of a light fag. More and more of a... Um, wanting the light on. But sometimes I turn the light off just to record, even. Because it's a better aesthetic.
like I do like the light off. It is comfy. However, it's impractical because sometimes I need to see things on my desk and the light from my ThinkPad doesn't quite reach my desk, as you can see. I guess it's not really a desk, whatever you would call this. You know, it's annoying being like, feeling, where's my vape? You know, I could probably, yeah, you know, like, try to feel around. I don't know, it's, found, it's a bit annoying, so I generally am more of a lights on type of person these days. Anyway, brief notes on asceticism and head hedonism. Um, I, I, I think there might be a false dichotomy, but I'm not entirely sure. I think it might be a false dichotomy because, in my opinion, hedonism is just focusing on type 1 fun and asceticism is just focusing on type um, 2 and 3 fun. That is pretty much uh, what they actually mean. And it makes much more sense from a mental health and psychological and blah, blah, blah perspective to focus on not soft fun but hard fun, right? The stuff that is actually fun rather than stuff that is just immediately pleasurable because those are the, the things that are immediately pleasurable are actually just mildly depressing. And but 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 various activities might be different things for different people, or your a particular approach to it might be different. So, or things might not register. So, for example, people generally drinking alcohol is considered to be a hedonistic act, right? But I think that depends. If you're drinking alcohol at a party with friends, then it's hedonistic. But if you're drinking and uh, and, you know, if you're drinking my cheap vodka straight out the bottle on your own while doing some repetitive task um, to sort of loosen yourself up, is that hedonistic? Because you're not really having particularly fun um, and you're punished for it the next day. So I don't count that as hedonism. It's definitely not asceticism, asceticism but it's not hedonism either. And things that are fun, focusing their life around fun, um, you know, it, different things, are, different people have different definitions of fun, so what I might find fun would be maybe something that's comfy, but comfiness might not be the, the traditional definition of fun. Um, and things that other people like find fun, like going outside, might be really unpleasant for me. So, what am I? How do I be a base monk and ascetic? Ascetic? I don't remember how it's pronounced. Um, I don't know. But I do need to get better at fasting. Because I've been really bad. The past three days I've broken my fast every single time I've failed. It's really bad. So, tonight I promised I'm going to I'm gonna fast properly. No more food today. A good fast. Um, that will be good. That will be not fun at all. But it's all to my dedication to the Denpa Mob Zoo. Denpa Gang Zoo of the Young and the Poor. My album's coming along. I think. It's bloody cold. Somehow, in my room. my like, This is quite a thin jumper. Needs to switch switch to a thicker sweater. Asceticism is just a practical way to do things and makes much more sense. Um, but uh, also, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's. Uh, I think it's good. I think it's good. But at the same time, I think that there's that I need sort of a, I need to come up with a new thing that's not really, it's sort of a, not really asceticism or hedonism, but um, it's something else. It's not really a synthesis of those two ideas, it's just something else. 
So it's something that isn't particularly focused on soft fun. But it, um, and I'm not just saying I need to find a way to describe my lifestyle. No, I need something that's an ideal. Because I don't think that the aesthetic, aesthetic ideal is particularly good. Like, I, I think it ends up with stupid shit like Japanese monks eating poison and just like eating cyanide and, and slowly dying just to show how much suffering they can endure. And it just evolves into self harm and suicide, which I think is not productive for anyone. But there are parts of asceticism that are very valuable. Obviously, fasting is not only good for your health, but also good for your um, mental well being and saves money. And, you know, it's all sorts of things. Fasting is very healthy. Lots of cultures do fasting. Fasting is very healthy and it's a form of asceticism. Um, stuff like that. That's the good bits. But then there's stuff like, for example, um, or, you know, uh, meditation. That's part of the asceticism. That shit's good if you can do it. And I need to meditate more. I don't meditate anymore. And I need to be putting some time aside in my life to meditate. But I want more of a focus on, rather than just ne like negating everything, you know, like asceticism does, I want more of an active thing, something that is so it's focusing on small things, focusing on small things and, and slow things, focusing on small and slow things. That's really what I want. But also, fast things are good too, so I don't really know. I don't, I don't really know. I need to do more thinking. Yeah, I gotta say, um, with regards to the horror, I'm talking about horror love videos, but you literally will never see them. <laughs> you can't even see them. Unless you're, unless you're already in the know and you already know where to know, then you will never see them. Sorry about that. Um, don't know what I was talking about, but something about China. So, Hoa Love is very into Chinese ancient shit. Ancient Chinese secrets. Um, <laughs> ancient Chinese secrets, right? Now, the thing about ancient Han Chinese culture... Listen, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be frank and earnest. I'm so into it. I'm so into it. Never really been my thing. Me kind of neat, but I think what would be more interesting to me would be the non-Han Chinese history, but through centuries of systematic genocide, most of that doesn't exist or is impossible to find, especially translated. Japan is way... Japan is just better than China. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, horror love, but... uh it's just an objective fact, in my opinion. It's an objective fact that that is my opinion. Uh, here's why. All of the East Asian beliefs and cultures are Confucian, right? And I think Confucianism is kind of shit. Japan is probably the least Confucian. Because they have a bunch of dope fucking pagan shit in Shinto, right? See, that's what it's all about, the dope pagan shit. That's what I find interesting. And the weird mangled synthesis of Shinto and Buddhism, which is Japanese religion as we know it. It's very strange and unique and cool. It's very, very awesome. Uh, Buddhism... Um, I go back and forth. I think they've had some good ideas, but not super into Buddhism. I like some things about it. I like some things about it, but it's a lot of like uh. The thing about all of that is it's very um internal. It's very much about well, if there's a problem, it's a you problem. It's not a problem with the external world so like it's sort of the, to me all of that attitude 
reminds me of, you know them anti-SJW channels that would say stuff like, well, no, you just chose to be offended by that. You know the, that sort of thing? It kind of feels, I know it's not the same thing, but it feels like that to me. It feels like that to me. All of those Eastern religion type of things seem to carry a similar type of attitude where the problem is always you. The problem is always you have too much desire or whatever. And that's another thing is Buddhism is all about correctly, correctly identified desire as the source of suffering, correct? However, then they were like, if we just got to kill desire, so we'd never suffer. That sounds like a bit of a leap to me. Don't like that. Right? Because, firstly, I don't really see anything wrong with suffering. Like, well, okay, firstly, I don't believe it's, they don't believe it's possible either. None of us believe it's possible. The Buddhists, they don't believe that it's possible to become enlightened in one lifetime. That's why they believe in reincarnation. They believe you have to be, spend multiple lifetimes studying Buddhism in order to actually reach enlightenment and ascend from, from desire. Uh, but I don't believe in reincarnation, so that doesn't work for me. But no, other than that, desire is kind of at the heart of of um, thought itself and creation. I like some of the stuff about the Buddhists, right? I'm a big fan of their focus on the transience of all things, that's always been important and interesting to me. I definitely support that stuff. Like, that's good. But, okay. Anything I create, creation is, is a positive for me. Creation is a positive. And so, even creative destruction. And so, in order to create something, you first have to desire that it exists, right? Or desire that you want to create it. There's a step, the step before creation is desire. So if the self is the creative nothing, then as in a nothing which is capable of creation, then it's also the self is something which produces desire on even a more base level possibly, or it's sort of a synonyms, something which produces desire. And I'm okay with the idea of abolishing the self. I'm okay with that. But I don't think it's possible to... I think it's a bit of a... How do I put it? Um, it's a, a, strange, a strange thing to focus on, really heavily, on eliminating desire. Like, it's a, it seems a bit arbitrary and impossible. <laughs> it seems a bit silly because I like making music, and if I didn't desire making music, I would never do anything, and I would just be a, a lump sitting there meditating or whatever. So I don't know what that's about. But, of course, I know a lot of the the, the people that... Horror Love is into, they they didn't give a fuck about that. They were making music as much as they wanted and shit, right? And they were getting drunk. They weren't being aestheticists. They weren't doing that. Aesthetics. Aesthetics. I don't know. Listen, give me a fucking break here, okay? They weren't doing that. That's kind of based. But you know who else was doing that but cooler? Japan. Ukiyo-e. Much doper than Chinese shit. Sorry to tell you, I'm sorry, but it's true. It's just cooler. It just looks better. Kabuki, way cooler than Chinese theater. No, especially. Kabu fuck Kabuki. No, no, so dope. Chinese, no, 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 yes. 
Chinese? No, no, yes, no, 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 yes, Chinese. <laughs> it's all about the Shinto. Right? They go to the mountains. That's what it's all about. Kung Fu, no thanks. They're punching people. Oh, I'm going to punch people and somehow it isn't helping. Not helping no one. Not helping no one. Chinese food, pretty good, pretty good. Chinese food, pretty good. Japanese food, the best food in the world. Sorry. Chinese teas, oh, they're great. I love Chinese teas. They're good. Japanese teas, the best teas in the world. Sorry to burst your bubble. Maybe not India, but there you go. Sorry. Chinese ancient music, oh, that's pretty nice. I like it. Japanese ancient music, oh, is better in every way. Sorry. <laughs> Plus, Chinese ain't got no samurai. Come on. Chinese ain't got no anime. So come on. Come on there with that. Who's watching Chinese media? Who's trying to watch Chinese TV programs? No one's trying to watch that. You ever watch one of those Chinese animes? Terrible. They're all rubbish. Chinese, bad. <laughs> I'm not racist. I'm not racist. I own nothing against Chinese people. I'm talking about... Uh, what am I talking about? Racism. <laughs> Cultural focuses. Japan ain't a perfect culture. Loads of bad shit going on in Japan. Overwork, for example. Big bad thing. Lots of other bad things in Japan. But China, they got their own problems too. And I'm not just talking about modern problems, I'm talking historical, classical, pre-Western, pre-everything problems that date back to the bases of their entire society. Just like every other society has these problems. Often they come from the original religions that, and philosophies that the society was founded upon. And uh, I'm not a big fan of the ones in China. For example, China, they're big on money. They're actually, strangely enough, for a pseudo-communist, for someone, you know what I mean? They're big on money for that sort of society. Not really my thing. Don't really like that. I mean, not all of them are. I'm not saying every Chinese person is is greedy or anything. Definitely not trying to say that. Um, it's more like a cultural thing. It's more like a... In the same way that you, you say, like, oh, Americans love hamburgers. Well, yeah, obviously not all Americans love hamburgers, but you know what I'm trying to say. And uh, the next thing, Chinese language, tonal language. Who's got time for that? <laughs> Who's got time for that? Not me, I'll tell you that much. Not me. No time for that. Japanese? Okay, sure. Three alphabets? Not great. Not ideal. But at least they ain't tonal. I mean, there's there's pitch accents, but there's no tones that, well, there is a little bit, but not Chinese level. <sighs> but mostly what I care about in Japanese ancientness it's not like, you know, there's people, particularly people who are really into the Warring States period and stuff like that. Me, could not give a fuck about any of that shit. Oda Nobunaga, suck my dick, bitch. Oda Nobunaga, suck my dick. Don't give a shit. Fuck you. Don't care. What I'm all about? Taoism, my man. And anime. <laughs> I like Taoism. I like anime, everything else. Don't give a shit, bro. Don't give a shit, bro. <laughs> Don't give a shit, bro. I like those two things. That's all I ever do. Taoism and anime. Everything else. Don't give a shit, bro. Oh, the Nobunaga. Suck my dick. Don't give a shit. Jump in the pit. Noise music. That's another thing. Actually, there's some really good Chinese noise music. So, can't really say nothing about that. But Japan, more noise music. 
but there's also really good Chinese noise music, so can't really say nothing about that. One time, found a video somewhere in Twitter or something of a Chinese noise music festival in the middle of nowhere, and it looked fucking sick. It was the coolest shit I'd ever seen. It's just a bunch of people in a field, like a music festival, but they were all just gathered around some guy with a little, like, upturned crate and a bunch of guitar pedals making noise music and they were all just jamming out and it looked so sick and I've never been able to find it again. It looked so cool. So, shout out them Chinese people is what I'm trying to say. I wish I knew more about Chinese, ancient Chinese secrets. Because all of my problems most likely come from ignorance. I will freely admit this. I've actually... I've never been one much for history. I don't really care about history at all. Um, never really cared about it. I know a lot of other weebs and nerds and otakus and dentists are really into history. I know Lily knows a lot about history, particularly, you know, in the 20th century and 19th century and stuff like that. Uh, I know Dotes knows a lot about the history, and I know, um, I don't know what else I know, but obviously, Hololove knows about history. I don't know shit about the past. I don't know what happened back then. It was crazy. The only parts I care about from the past is like really old shit, prehistory, pre-civilization stuff. That stuff's really interesting to me because it's a whole different world. I mean, I'm a bit interested in the the medieval English period. I'm a bit in, in or medieval Europe, but not autistically interested in it. Just I like um, learning about a bit about how the economics and how society was structured because it can help to understand how society is structured now. And obviously that's really the point of history, is you learn about history so you can understand the world more as it is. But, so I guess maybe I am a bit into history. <laughs> but not much, like I'm not, I couldn't name anything specific. I mean, I know the Norman Conquest of 1066 because every British child has that drilled into their head from when they're two years old. So I know that. I've been to the bat the place where the battle was. What was it? The battle of something. I forgot what the battle was called. But I've been to that field. It's just a field. <laughs> it's not particularly special. I'm much more interested in pre civilization stuff. Basically anything that happened before the Romans, that's where it's interesting to me. Um which it wasn't actually pre-civilization. That was, that was like 2,000 years into civilization or more. But so I don't know what I'm talking about. I really don't know. I really don't know what the fuck I'm talking about right now. I'm just speaking completely out of my ass. I know nothing about anything. I'm completely uneducated, completely ill-informed, trying to make points about shit that I don't know about. I'm trying to argue that China bad when I don't even know who China is. Never met him. <laughs> <laughs> Never even met China, so I can't even say that I don't like them. But I'm trying to make points. What's that about? Explain that to me then. Dempers. Maybe China is cool. Maybe maybe ancient Chinese secrets have real important stuff in them that I don't know about. Never been particularly my style, though. I'll just say that much. Never been particularly my style. More of an ancient Japan, pre-feudal Japan. See, I don't give a fuck about your samurais. I want to know about your shamanic traditions. You know? Now, that's that interesting shit. I want to know about the shit before there was fucking hiragana. That's the most interesting to me. Now, I don't know anything about this, but it's vaguely interesting to me. Actually, none of that's interesting to me. I like modern Japan, <laughs> because then you, you got uh, a little thing, you may have heard of it, it's called anime. Don't care about nothing else, only anime and Shintoism. 
animation do animation do animation do animation do moss moss anime anime moss 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 anime shinto moss moss anime shinto moss anime shinto that's what I care about Lots of interesting things happened in the past. Too bad I don't know any of them. Too bad no one no one knows anything about them. World War Two history. Go kill yourself. Don't care. Go go die. <laughs> Think I care about World War Two history? No, no one does. Only you, because you're a loser, nerd. You're a nerd, and you care about World War Two history. Loser. Absolute. You know, I care about tanks. You know, I care about tanks and military history. Don't give a shit. Do not care. Do not care about military history. Do not care about generals. Don't care about ancient Chinese and Japanese and Korean generals. Do not give a shit. Don't matter to me. Well, who am I fighting? No one. No fighting going on. I'm not going to read the art of war. What am I? A fucking LARPA? No, I mean, yes, I'm a lover, but not that type of lover. You know what's cool? Music. Now, that's dope. But you know who has the best music? Ancient Sumeria. Not that you could hear any of it, but I'm sure it was dope. Probably also ancient Greek music. They had some crazy shit going on back then. That's an ancient Greek song. Bitch don't know. Bitch don't know. Bitch don't know, do you? But I know. Know what's dope? All of that shit. And probably, and some of the, listen, to be fair, I've seen some ancient Chinese um, lute music and shit like that. Incredibly cool. Not as cool as the Kowloon Walled City, though. Yes, LARPing time. <laughs> the most bait, obvious thing in the universe. I don't know nothing about China. I don't know nothing about it. I really know nothing, so I don't know why I'm trying to talk shit. I really know nothing about Japan, either. I know modern Japan. I don't really know much about Shinto, either. I know the basics. I know the basics, but I don't know much. I don't know much about anything, really. I, I have very shallow knowledge on a wide range of topics, rather than any deep knowledge on any single one topic, because I am kind of, I'm too fluid. I can't stick to one thing long enough to learn deeply about it. All I know is all sorts of things, but only a little bit, and it sucks, but that's just who I am. I know a little bit about a lot of long things. <laughs> I know a little bit about a lot of long things. And that's about me. Who invented smoking? That was the the Native American fellas, right? Shouts out to them. See, they knew what was up. Actually... I'm, I'm pretty sure lots of people know about nicotine. I'm pretty sure there's, there were some indigenous Australian folk who knew about nicotine as well, right? Pretty sure they used to have chewing tobacco, chewing tobacco back then, back in the day. In Australia used to be a jungle. Do you know that? Guess who burnt all of that down? <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It was already gone by the time Captain Cook got there. Makes it easier to hunt when there's nowhere for the animals to run. Shame there's nowhere for them to live either. This might be a lie, by the way. I might be parroting misinformation right now. This might not be true. I have no sources. But I like to believe it's true, because... It's a good argument against lots of things, like noble savage. The other thing watching a horror love video made me think, 
Man, I miss my pen spinning and my big Larry. No idea where my big Larry went. Completely gone somehow. No idea where it went. Miss it. I miss having interesting things to do with my hands. Ain't got shit these days. All my cards are worn out and too old to really use. Ain't got shit. Shit. Shinto anime. Shinto anime moss. Shinto anime moss. Shinto anime moss. No one's watching this. I can say whatever I want. I say whatever I want, and no one will ever hear me. Isn't that a freedom? Isn't that a, a no piece of freedom? Maybe I'll play some Counter Strike. Been a while. Been a while. Do I want to? Maybe not, maybe not. Ooh, I know what I might want to do. Some surfing. Maybe some surfing and put a Dotes Might video in the background. I think that's a genius move from me. I think that's a genius idea from me. Good, your old friend, no thank you. Little bit of a genius move. What we like to call smart ones. Oh shit, new Jommy JD Beck. What? What? That's nuts, that's a bit too much. You hear that? Don't have none of that in ancient China. This, this, wait, this. Don't have none of that dissonance. None of that minor seconds. Don't have none of that in ancient China. No minor seconds. Don't have none of that. Actually, I think that was a triad. I don't know what it was. That's the fucking, that's music. That's music. Now let's listen to some ancient Chinese secrets. Who, where are they hiding them? Where are they hiding them? Give me, give, give, give more ancient Chinese music. Pl uh, plucks. Plucks. There we go. Bass time. Bass time. All right, let's get Counter-Strike going. Got to counter them strikes, because next thing you know, they'll be coming for you. Steam bugging. Steam bugging. Bugging. Got to plug myself in. I bet this video is insanely long. I wasn't even paying attention, but it just occurred to me. <clears throat> Where's my shit? Bitches. Fucking too many bitches. Here we go. Here's my shit. Counter Strike. Got to play some Counter Strike. That was not an. Uh, I was trying to do Scottish and then halfway through I tried to do Northern and it, none of them worked out well. None of them worked out well at all. Come on. Come on. Go get in there, my son. There you go. Gamer Mouse, Gamer Mouse. 
He's the greatest. He's fantastic. Go run for those things in Hawaii there. Game of Mouse. That's a reference only I get. <laughs> That's a reference only I get. Whereas, what am I doing? Don't smoot. Doot smoot video. Boots boot. Boots boot. Baby bo. Come on, man. Personal hauntologies. When I look back at my life, I... Yeah, that's a banger right there. Let's listen to some of my own music. You want to hear music? Sound like this. Yeah, pretty damn good, if I say so myself. What about this? Yeah, pretty good. Have to wait till that album comes out to hear the rest of those. <coughs> Why am I golden over two? I keep trying to rank down. They keep putting me back in. Let's get them. Whoa. No, not workshop maps. Lil Dingus. Lil Dingus Khan. I don't believe in the Mongolian Empire. It was made up. Oh, where's my fucking mouse? There we go. F U R F. Um, actually, you know what I'm in the mood for? Maybe a bit of bee hopping rather than surfing. No, what did I just do? I loaded into a server by mistake. Did not work. Okay. Interesting. Bee hop. No, I did it again. And now I've broken the game. Okay. Surf. Bunny hop. Um. Be hop easy. See, that's what I'm all about. Easy. Don't want nothing too difficult. <clears throat> My throat's been fucked the past two few days because I've been recording vocals, basically. Let's see, what we have. Damn, no my best, no my best mouth. Fuck. Okay, it's going to take me a little bit to get used to this. Why am I on my senses wrong? There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Damn it, I missed the corner. My D key stopped working, this is embarrassing. This is really cringe. See, I'm making it too difficult now. See, I'm, I'm trying to be fancy. I don't actually need to be fancy for this, because it's actually very easy. See what I'm trying to say? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, even that? You could probably just make these jumps. Oh, no, not quite. But I bet with a straight jump, you can make that. This is really embarrassing to me. Hey, listen, I don't say B hop much very often. So, there we go. Fuck. I don't think I would have made that final jump. I lost too much speed. Okay, what do I want to be doing? Here? Going right to the edges? I think that's what I want to be doing. Yeah, I think this is what I want to be doing. Oh, that was pretty easy. See, I've warmed up now. Am I have some momentum? No, no more momentum. Got a free hop? Can you even make this? You have to free hop multiple times. Ain't easy. It ain't easy. No, there's no way you can make this. Right. 
My D key, there's, I, I, this is not a joke. There's genuinely, my D key is broken. Um, it doesn't register inputs every time. So, it makes B hopping a little difficult. I could plug in an external keyboard. But, um, I don't, no, I actually couldn't, because I only have one USB C to USB converter. These stupid moves like that will get you killed out here in the field. Out here in the field. See, first try, idiot. <laughs> first try, idiot. I mean, we're making this. To, to, I'm, I'm gonna do it on video. I'm gonna do the whole thing on video now, just because I can. Let's get some speed up. Ah, too much speed. Too much speed. What's this? Oh, the broken thing. What the fuck? I have, okay, let's change. I don't know what's going on there. I had a spectator. Damn it. No, I knew I wasn't going to work. Yeah, this is it. This is it, boys. Oh, so close. If I had crouch jumped, I would have made that. Shame. No. Just missed the last platform. Again, I just missed the last platform. Can you guys even actually see what's going on? I don't think you can, right? Oh yeah, not in that little corner. We're not seeing shit. Almost. Almost. They don't go on them at too much speed. They might need to be actually slowing down a bit. Yeah, see that wasn't enough speed. Okay, so now I don't know what to do. Um, wait, what? Oh fuck, I've been going backwards this whole time. I have to redo this? Fuck. Okay, we're gonna first try everything because I'm just that good. I said, uh, second try everything because I'm just third try everything. We're gonna third try it. <laughs> we're gonna fourth try it. It's actually very easy when you're as skilled as me. Highly skilled B hopper, no thank you. I, I mean, six try it. We're going backwards, you know what? That's just how good I am. Okay, fuck that. We're not going backwards anymore. That one's easy. That one's good and easy. This one is difficult. 
I don't know how to manage my speed properly. We made it. Yes, bitch. And I lost all my speed. It's kind of be fancy. I was so close. This is the last one, right? Yeah, this is the last one. In the first phase of the map, at least. I think there's a second phase of the map after this, but... made the first phase and that's what we're gonna see on YouTube. I think when I was talking about my computer being a um Kami, I said it has some transcendental element or transcendent element, like or a really old tree has some transcendent element. I don't necessarily mean transcendent. What I mean is it exists it depends how you define transcendent. There's nothing supernatural about it. Right? That's not what I'm trying to say. It's more like um, something that's just not physical. But it's not super... Like, it's still part of the same world that I inhabit. It, it's, uh, it's not like magic. It's just um, not physical. It's, uh, in, it's something in some invisible quality. Does that make sense? And everything I've been talking about for the past while has been complete nonsense. Don't be afraid to speak nonsense, but know when you're speaking it. I'm speaking it. It's one thirty. It's one thirty in the a.m. Um. Today I woke up at four p.m. Which means I probably went to bed. At. I don't know when, but late, as in to the point where it was probably like. 8 a.m. or something. Maybe later. I don't know exactly when I went to bed. But late. I woke up at 4 p.m. Today, there will be someone, some reason, that I have to wake up at 2 p.m. I can go back to sleep possibly, if possible. I could theoretically. They, it's... It's a brief reason I need to be awake at 2 p.m. All right? I need to be awake briefly at 2 p.m. to do something. And it's no option. It, I, I'm going to be woken up at 2 p.m. to do something. Here's my possibilities. Do I, A, take a sleeping pill or two, knock myself out, and then hopefully manage to get a good night's sleep wake up at 2 p.m. Do I B, stay up until 2 p.m. from now without sleeping? Or do I C, just go to sleep when I naturally fall asleep and then get shitty sleep tomorrow? All three sound like shit deals <laughs> because the sleeping pill will make me feel like shit tomorrow as well. Like, when I take one, I feel groggy the next day. It's not good. And also, it means that I miss out on getting to do stuff I want to do right now, like watch anime. All three options are bad. Which one do I do? I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up doing either option stay up forever or option just get shitty sleep um i wish i could control my sleep cycle better but i cannot alas i think option stay up all night is hampered by fasting because i find it it's obviously easier to stay up when you have food to energize yourself so do i break fast I don't think I'm I'm honest I'm gonna be honest with myself. I don't know if I can manage that. 
so what time is it now? It's so I'd have to stay out for twelve hours ish, a bit more, twelve and a half from now. With eating and caffeine, I guess it's doable. Do I do it? Do I just? It's been a while since I've done a long stay uppy thing. Sleep deprivation. Unlike fasting, unlike food deprivation, sleep deprivation is not good for you. Food deprivation is good for you. Maybe I do some. Maybe I sleep deprived. Maybe that's what needs to happen. Hmm. Sleep deprived. I think that might be the case. I feel tired already, which is not boding well for sleep deprived strats. But I, you know what? I'm a powerful person. I'm a powerful spiritual being. I'm a miracle, lyrical spiritual. I think that's the best option because then I'll have an interesting sleep cycle where I'll be going to bed at 2 p.m., which probably translates to 3 p.m. So going to bed 3 p.m., then sleeping eight hours, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, waking up at 11 p.m., that's quite cool. But... There's a problem with that. I guess this is not too bad. Fuck it. Fuck it. I guess we gotta do what we gotta do. The only... Hmm, that's not even really a problem. I need to find something to... The only thing is that it means I need to find things to do to entertain myself for that time, and they can't be reading because by the time I'm... 12 hours from now, I'm not going to be capable of reading. So I need to find something to do, something to watch, like a TV series or something that will keep me occupied. Not sure what the solution is, really. If this is the case, if this is what we're doing, then unfortunately for the fourth day in a row I'm going to have to break fast because I can't I know from experience that I can't stay awake unless I keep my body fueled with caffeine and food. I need food to st- otherwise I just pass out because I don't have any energy. So I need to I'm going to need to break fast at some point which is a bit of a shame. Uh, maybe I don't know oh, nah, that's silly. I think that's what I have to do. I think this is going to be a sleep deprivation uh, time right now. So what do I do with my sleep-deprived self? What do I dedicate myself to? Something easy? Well, that'll be a question I'll be asking myself for a while. Hmm. Let me think. Yeah, what's good? And do I just say fuck it? Do I just say fuck it? I'm very tempted to say fuck it. I'm gonna look in here. Pasta might be an interesting choice. Actually, I'm not going to say fuck it. I'm going to have pasta. Hmm, yes. This is a good choice by me. Tuna, my classic. My classic canned tuna pasta. If I do that, though, I'm going to wait a little bit. No, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not going to wait. Hmm. No, I should have a small meal now. I should have something small now and then the pasta later. Is that the play? I believe that might be the play, guys. So what's my small meal? There is some a tiny bit of meatloaf left. I guess I could have this somehow. A bit of meatloaf. Somehow, it's a good way to eat meatloaf. Not sure. 
Hey. Stay there, please. Um. Hmm. Or smoke salmon on a bagel. That might be nice. Or meatloaf on a bagel. That'd be nice. I think meatloaf and a bagel is quite nice. That sounds like a good idea. In which case, we're going to want some cheese. Or maybe meatloaf in a wrap. Maybe that's the plan. Or meatloaf, cheese, toast, toasty maker machine. What do you think about that, eh? Yeah, I know, I'm a genius. I don't really want, I'm not in the mood for bread. I think... I think this is the play. Now, I'm going to turn the oven on here because we're going to be using advanced techniques. My advanced technique is meatloaf goes here, mush it up a bit. Don't worry, my hands are clean. This was this is all set up before, so I made sure to clean my hands first. Mush it up a bit so it can wrap properly. That'll be good. And then, just to make things more interesting, maybe I should do this. Bit of hot sauce. Never hurt anybody, right? Got a bit of hot sauce. very spicy. That's okay though. Spicy is fine. American cheese because I hate myself. Maybe it would be better to layer it. No, I don't want too much cheese. See, so this is the reason I'm using American cheese, is because I don't really want that. Oh, sorry. The camera is very much pointed at my crotch. Oh, I need to roll this, roll this up. So, hold on, let me put it down. Yeah, that will be good. Good enough. There you go. These bits are not ideal, to be honest, but I can't seem to get them to tuck in very well. Anyway, my burrito made of just meat. <laughs> um, not the healthiest meal, but 
because I go to use the meatloaf, so I should put some vegetables in it, actually. Or just have some on the side. I'll, see, I'll think about it. <laughs> I'll think about it. What was I talking about? I was going to say something. No idea. So we're going to put this in the oven so it bakes because we want the cheese to melt. That's what I was going to talk about. I don't want it to actually taste cheesy, particularly. I just want the gooiness of cheese. I don't, and that's what American cheese is for, for when you just want the gooiness of cheese without the, the cheesiness of cheese. <laughs> so we're going to put it in the oven because right now it's cold. We put it in the oven so it heats through. We get some nice melty cheese action, and the outside will go all nice and hard. And I'm gonna actually re-roll this, I think, because I want it to. I want the the corners to tuck in better. Fuck! I'm not sure how to do this. I no longer care. I think I actually just made it worse. Look, bits are falling off. How is it falling off? No idea. Pretty sure I just made it worse. I probably oversold it, but I figured I may as well use the whole meatloaf. I don't want to hear anyone say, oh, British cuisine, British, is this British food, British food, fucking, fucking, oh shit, I got kicked due to, I forgot, I loaded into a game of CS, I completely forgot, oh shit, okay. They ain't walked into my shop the other day. She said she was looking for somebody. I said, don't we all? <laughs> my plan is to get really sleep deprived and then download Yume Tuki. So there's no place Yume Tuki. And so I'm going to download Yume Tuki. Um, and play it when I'm really sleep deprived because I feel like that would be a fun experience. Finally finishing Okitegami Kyoko no Biboroku, which, if you don't know, is a Nisio Isin light novel series about a detective girl who resembles Hanakawa in personality from Monogatari, uh, who, who, whose memories reset every time she sleeps. Um, so she has to solve every mystery in just one day. Uh, apparently the light novels are good, haven't read them. But the reason I found out about it is the only Nisio Isin's that things that have been adapted are Medaka Box, which was adapted from original manga into an anime, of which I have tried both and liked neither, uh, and Monogatari. And I'm pretty sure no other Nisio Isin stuff has been adapted, Monogatari being one of my favorite anime of all time, and I plan to rewatch it very soon. The only other thing that's been adapted is Okitigami Kyoko no Biboroku, which is this show, which was adapted into a live action drama. And it is so obviously not written to be a live action drama. It has the tone of an anime or a light novel. Like it doesn't work in live action. Case in point, spoiler alert, I'll try and give away as few details as possible. In the final episode, there's a bit of a fight scene, right? And it is so bad. It does, it's so... You can imagine this working in anime, right? It would make sense for these characters to, to, like, fight people because that happens in anime. Like, dark urban fantasy, light level type anime, big fight on the street to, as the climax of the series. Makes perfect sense would work in anime. Makes no fucking sense when you're trying to believe that real human beings would do this. Um, other than that, I actually recommend the series. 
it's quite an entertaining watch. Messi always seemed good author. Watching him... Oh, I completely forgot about um, Katana Gattari. That's the other thing he wrote that's been adapted. But that's... It's... You know the problems with the Katana Gattari. It was written in a year. Every book was written in a month. So the stories... It's weird. Of all the things to adapt by him, why that, of all things? It was like a stunt project. It was basically a marketing project rather than super serious. Like writing a book every month um or well, and they're very short books and each book is one episode so they're very i mean they're double length episodes so it's a bit of a fucking slog to get through and the ending is awful um but there's some neat concepts in katana Gassi, but I, f- I forgot about that so i just have to mention it now i'm pretty sure nothing else he's made has been adapted medaka box katana Gassi, monogatari and okitigami kyoko um which is a drama, live action drama, and it has neat concepts, but it's just so strange that they decided to make it live action and not anime. I mean, I get it on the one hand. I don't, the thing is, I don't know how much they adapted it, right? Because there's basically no references, like, you know, Nisi Orsin, he's a meta type guy, he does meta shit. There's no meta shit here at all, pretty much. That's not true. There is some meta shit, like uh, the main character being really into detective stories, not realizing that she is the main character in a detective story. Like, that's a bit meta. But for Nisi Orisin, that's incredibly tame. Like, if you've seen Monogatari, you know that's incredibly tame for Nisi Orisin. Um So it's like, I don't know if they... And also, he loves to put anime stuff. Like, he loves to show off how much he knows about anime. And he loves to, like... So it's weird that there's very little anime stuff in this. Like, it's pretty much a straightforward detective show with some romance elements. Um, so I don't know how much they had... Like, is it because they they thought, this is a popular author, um, maybe we can adapt it for a wide audience? And so they maybe removed th- th- some of the more idiosyncratic elements from the writing? Or are the original novels, the original novels aren't translated, by the way, are the original novels just like that? Are they also written for a, live, for a wide audience? Because they are light novels, by the way, the original ones. Like, they're not, they have pictures, and in the pictures, Kyoko-san, the main character, is drawn in anime style, or like manga style, you know, like like a like a light novel. I don't know why they wouldn't adapt it into an anime. Why would they do it as a live act, like... What went on behind the scenes? It's very interesting. But I do recommend it because it, if you're an anime fan, first of all, if you like Hanakawa from the Monogatari series, you have, like, if, if you're a hardcore Hanakawa liker, as I know some of you are, you basically owe it to yourself to watch this because it, it's a similar character written by the same. It's, yeah. Um, if you like Monogastri at all, I would probably recommend it. It's not as it's it's worth watching just for trying to see like real life people try and act out a Nisio scene plot as if it makes any fucking sense in real life. Um, it also has atrocious acting, which is very common for J dramas and Asian dramas in general. They all have terrible acting. Um, so the acting is terrible, not made any, not helped by, you know, what it's adapting. And the editing is a bit all over the place. It's like, it's a bit over edited. I feel like maybe there was a bit of inspiration from, actually, no, when was it made? I wonder if I can, I don't know when it was made. It it seems a bit inspired by Monogatari, the editing, basically. I'm pretty sure it was made after Monogatari because it's in widescreen, so. It probably was at least after the, the first Monogatari season, back in Monogatari came out. Um, I don't know. I'd say it's worth watching if you're a fan of Nisio Scene. Like, it's just a interesting little thing that exists. I've never watched a Jade drama before, and I probably never will afterwards. I'm just a fan of Nisio Scene and um, wanted to watch something else that was adapted from him that wasn't. Medaka box, which I don't like, and wasn't 
Katanagatu, which I've already seen, and Monogatari, which I've already seen. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to finish it before I give my final rating, because I haven't finished the final episode yet. I just wanted to point out how it's so clearly written to be an anime-style plot with the big fight scene. But the fight scene is so ridiculous in real life that it doesn't make any sense. Like, it just completely pulls you out of it because you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Finished the final episode. I have to say, you really notice how awful anime melodrama is when you have to see real actors act it out. I mean, the thing is, this is just how it is in, like all Asian TV shows. I've never watched a Korean drama, but I know that they're the same. They're probably worse, like, over-the-top melodrama, everything. Um, I, I would say it's probably not that bad, but the the animeness of it really is a, a, a nice layer of abstraction that really helps. Overall, um... Bit cheesy. They have a really, really, really cheesy ending. Like, the cheesiest possible ending that I could even imagine it having. But, worth watching for the concepts of the mysteries. Everything about the execution is meh. It's meh. But the mysteries themselves are well written. And I do love a good mystery story. The mysteries are well written. The main the, the Kyoko, the 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 main character, her she's cute. The actress that plays her, very cute. So that's always a plus. Um, the romance is fine. It's over the top. It's melodramatic. It's cheesy. Just really cheesy. But 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 it's kind of cute, I guess. Uh, and the side characters are all atrocious um, but yeah it might be worth reading or I mean watching just as a curiosity because it's not often you get to see something like that I think that's my opinion on Okitegami Kyoko no Biboroku. Why the why the I've been wondering why do smart people for, for watch my videos? I have nothing particularly of interest to say. Like I'm not actually an authority or particularly knowledgeable. <laughs> Oh my god, that was not pleasant. You don't want to be me in that situation. Oh god, what the fuck is going on inside my body right now? Really sorry about that. Rude to burp. No idea what that was. Um, anyway. What do I, like, stuff I normally talk about on this channel, a lot of stuff about philosophy and politics and history and all of this shit that I don't know shit about. Technology, I don't know nothing about it. I don't know nothing about any of it. And I know for a fact that there's dentists out there who know way more than me about pretty much everything I generally talk about. And yet they choose to watch my videos of all things. Pourquoi? 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 Por qué? Por qué es esta? I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm talking about all this shit, like, philosophy, like, oh. Oh, yeah, they start working again on next door. I don't know if you can even hear that, but loud power tools. Like, when I'm talking about the lose or something, I think I've read any of that shit. I can't fucking read. I don't know what I'm talking about. Wittgenstein? Never read Wittgenstein. I'm not really a reading type of person. I I don't retain information very well from reading. I retain information and learn much better through someone talking to me. Like, it's 
why I like generally I watch lectures on things that I'm interested in rather than reading them first hand. But that gives me only a those are normally supposed to be supplementary to actually reading the original text, but I can't focus on that sort of thing. And even if I do force myself to sit down and read for ages, I just forget it really quickly because I'm focused on reading. I'm not focused on remembering the information that I'm reading. And then if it's especially if it's something complicated like philosophy, I'm focused on like trying to understand what the fuck they're talking about. And then by the time I've done that, then I have to go to the next page, understand that. And then I've forgotten what the fuck I just read. Sometimes when I read a book, I have to reread the same sentences like five times and then I still forget them. Like, I'm, I'm not smart. I don't, I'm not knowledgeable about anything I talk about. I talk about all sorts of nonsense. I just don't know anything. I just thought I'm just uh, pretending. This is all a scam. This entire channel is a scam where I pretend to be uh, an intellectual, but I feel like it's very easy to see right through me. So I don't know why people watch this shit. When have I ever made a good point? Never. Never made a good point or well researched point. There's one time, there's like two things I know things about. I know about music and I know about Serial Experiments Lane. And I wrote a paper about it. Um, and that's probably the smartest thing I've ever written because I did actual research I had to read three books about well actually I didn't read the whole books I mostly skimmed them uh, and I wrote that in like nine days and I keep forgetting to actually upload it to the channel because it doesn't read very well because it's an academic paper like uh there's a lot of like like quotes and sources and references and stuff and it doesn't really it doesn't work very well reading out loud it's more of a reading it's it's not really structured to be read out loud either like yeah, a lot of it is building up to the actual main body you know summing up my research or explaining my research as like a a whole bunch of other shit before you even get to the main body of the text where I actually talk about interesting stuff and even that is full of references and just a bunch of shit that doesn't work so well reading out loud. <sighs> Man, I don't know what's going on in my stomach right now. I'm just full of all sorts of things. <sighs> so, if that's not even on this channel, what are you here for? When have I ever made a good point? What do I even talk about generally? Not much. Not much at all. I just talk about nonsense. All I do is nonsense. Why Why are smart people watching this? I understand if you're stupid people watching this, because then you might think, oh, he's actually smart. But smart people, who I know a lot of you are smart, I know for a fact from your comments and knowing you are on, outside of YouTube and stuff, all of that stuff that you're smart. So why are you watching this? Go do smart people things. Don't waste your time watching a six hour long video. Go do some of this, go, go do smart people thing. Go calculate a formula. Um, three divided by the total indubitably. Like that, that's what you should be doing. Superfluously, that's what you should be doing. Not watching a no thank you video. You're wasting your potential on a silly idiot who doesn't know what he's talking about. When have I ever known anything? I don't think I have. I'm going to be real with you right now, folks. I just make shit up half the time. No sources. When have I ever had sources? No sources. I was making shit up. I don't remember everything that it takes to be smart. I don't have it. I'm terrible at remembering names and dates, and I can't retain information from reading. 
<laughs> so I don't know anything really. Speaking of talking at length about subjects I don't really understand as if I'm an authority on them. In Dotesmite's, one of Dotesmite's recent videos, she mentioned super determinism. And so I guess now is as good a time as any to go on my quantum mechanics rant um, <clears throat> and explain why I hold the view that I do, the interpretation I do of the quantum mechanics. Which, if you want the TLDR, it's an epistemic interpretation. So if you know what that means, you can just skip this section of the video because you already know what it means. If you don't know what it means, I'll give you a quick and dirty rundown of what I understand of quantum mechanics, which is very little. So, basically there's an equation called the Schrodinger equation, and it, it's very good at predicting the movements of quantum, of very small particles, which would be affected by quantum mechanics. The problem is that this equation doesn't give you a nice number, it gives you a wave function of probabilities. And yet, whenever we observe particles, we never see a wave function, we just see a particle at a single point. So, what's happening in the gap between the wave function that the math says should be happening and the universe we actually observe? How is one turning into the other? And the Schrodinger equation has been rigorously tested and is very accurate and is used regularly in practical applications. Um, so we know that the math is right on that end, so why does it give us probabilities when we don't see probabilities, we see fixed particles at fixed positions, or singular positions? Terribly sorry for the noise, nothing I can do about it. Um, the two, uh, don't smite like super determinism. I haven't really read up on it. I don't, I mean, I understand uh, the, the idea behind it, but I don't understand why that solves the problem necessarily. So I'm not going to talk about that. I also don't really understand pilot waves, which is Dodsmite's other theory that she likes. But I, as far as I understand, the problem with pilot waves, I'm now, okay, I will just prove the main three theories of quantum mechanics, which are the biggest two are the Copenhagen interpretation and the many worlds interpretation and the third one lagging behind them all is pilot wave so here's why the Copenhagen interpretation is wrong Copenhagen interpretation involves wave function collapse we have absolutely no mathematical evidence or anything which would govern wave function collapse we have no reason to assume no known law of the universe which would cause a wave function to collapse when observed um, it's completely made up and it also basically assumes that humans have superpowers. Uh, it also is completely vague. What counts as an observation? Is it observation when a machine observes a particle if no human sees it? Is it observation if a cat observe, observes a wave function? Like, it's complete nonsense. No one in this day and age should believe in the Copenhagen interpretation. Number two, the many worlds interpretation. Many worlds interpretation is essentially, well, what happens between... The, uh, when you know there's a wave function and then uh, in, in the wave function every possible outcome does happen it's not that we only see why do we get probabilities but we only see one outcome well actually every outcome does happen the universe just splits into many different worlds where each possible outcome does take place and so we just observe one of those worlds right and a different us in a different universe ex observes a different outcome and so really there's no problem there, right? The problem being that this completely negates the fact that it's a probability wave. If every outcome happens, then no outcome is more likely to happen than any other because all of them happened, right? Um, so this doesn't fit the math because the math is a function of probability. So how can, it, how can it be more probable for one event to occur than another if they both occur? It doesn't make any sense. They're both. They're, it would make all of the outcomes equally probable, and so many worlds is impossible. Pilot wave. The problem with pilot wave is that you, uh, although the math does work out, you have to add in a whole other formula, just invented just to make pilot wave work. 
even though the Schrodinger equation works fine on its own. So why do you have to add a whole other equation um, to an equation which already works? This seems unnecessary. This seems like some someone's just adding their own thing on top of it to sort of wrangle the maths into working when really we already have an equation that works and we're trying to figure out why it works. We're not trying to make a whole other equation that doesn't describe the um, phenomenon we're actually ex ex uh, experiencing, right? See, the, the Schrodinger equation describes reality. The extra equation needed on top of the Schrodinger equation for pilot wave to work out only exists to make pilot wave work out. It doesn't exist to describe anything we've actually observed in reality or any function of quantum mechanics other than itself. So it seems like it's just something added on to it for its own sake rather than something that is inbuilt into the math that already existed. Okay, now... Now we've disproven all of the other interpretations, let's talk about the real interpretation. Basically, you have to think about. Uh, I like this interpretation because it's it's the it's the most boring and the most simple and the most obvious. And no one else likes it because it's boring, simple, and obvious. Like you can't do any cool science fiction shit with it. You know, with Copenhagen and many worlds, there's so many science fiction stories that rely on it for stupid purposes. Like, oh well, many worlds, and and the idea that humans have some effect on the universe by observing it. Yeah, that's all good for science fiction. Uh, the idea that, that there is no probability wave, that the particle just exists and we just didn't notice it because you haven't seen it yet, that's not very useful for um, science fiction. So an epistemic view is basically saying it's, it's very Wittgenstein. It's like the problem here is that you guys haven't understood language. You haven't understood what probability means. Probability isn't a function of the universe. It isn't a universal law. It's a function of human interpretation and uh, of the universe. In the universe, from a non-human perspective, things either happen or they don't happen. They, no object contains within itself, within any of its physical or mathematical properties, a probability of occurring. It either occurs or it doesn't according to the laws of the universe. Right? Take a coin flip. A coin flip has a 50-50 probability. But in reality, if you could, if you, the coin is just ob um, observing the known laws of the universe, Newtonian mechanics, and uh, behaving exactly according to those laws. There is no probability, it's deterministic, right? Um, the, the probability is actually just a, a way to formalize uh, how likely we as humans think something is to happen when we don't understand the entire system. Um, it's not actually measuring anything that exists externally in the universe. It's only measuring uh, a formalized version of our, how we think, how likely we think something is to happen. So, um, there is no problem um, because it, the, the Schrodinger equation does perfectly output how likely we think something is going to happen. In reality, uh, there is no let, take take it as an alternative to the Copenhagen interpretation. In the Copenhagen, there's a, a wave function, and then as soon as you look at it, it collapses into a single point. In epistemic view, um, the single point was already there, but you just didn't know because you hadn't looked at it yet. And so when you look at it, you always see it as a single point because it always it always was a single point. But before you looked at it, you didn't know where it was. You only knew a probability of where it was. That doesn't mean that it wasn't already there, you just didn't know where it was because you haven't looked at it yet. But it was already there as a single particle. It wasn't in some flux state and it didn't have to split the universe into many pieces. It just existed in its position, but you didn't know where it was because you hadn't looked at it yet. All you could do was make a guess. And that's what the Schrodinger equations do. They make a guess because you haven't seen it yet. And so when you look at it, you find out where it is, and you're like, okay, now I know where it is. There's no wave function collapse. The particle was already there. You just hadn't looked at it yet. You just didn't know it was there because you you hadn't seen it. You hadn't observed it. That is That fixes the problem with the Copenhagen interpretation of what comes an observer 
and it fixes the problem of wave function collapse, and it fixes all of the problems from every other version of quantum mechanics. There's no need for any extra algorithms or extra equations. There's no need for um, wacky concepts like wave function collapse and observers and universes splitting into many parts infinitely um, based on arbitrary events for no known reason. There's no reason for any of that. There's no need for it. In reality, it's actually just a way of talking about what humans think is going to happen rather than describing anything in the actual universe in the same way that our 50-50 coin flip is just describing how likely human thinks it is to land on heads or tails rather than describing the actual mechanics of the coin. So there you go. This just makes the most sense to me. It's boring because the answer is it's not vague. It's just the, like it was always there. It was always at, at its point. It was always at where you observe it or on the, you know, it was always there in a single point. There was no wave function existing in the universe. We've never seen a wave function. No one's ever observed a wave function existing in the universe because they don't exist. Because the wave function is just a measurement of probability. And probability is not a phenomenon that exists outside of human brains. There is there is no material um, f function of the universe, there is no property that any matter or energy or anything in the universe contains within itself that could be called probability. That, that is just something layered onto the universe by humans. In the same way, there exists a waveform of light in a certain um, frequency. Those exist in the universe and you can measure them, but the idea of blue only exists in human minds. It's the same thing, right? There exists a particle somewhere. The idea of probability only exists in human minds. That's the epistemic view of quantum mechanics. That it's, there really is no problem. You guys are just silly and you don't understand language. You can tell why I like this as a Wittgenstein person, right? It's actually somewhat... Uh, I, again, I don't really understand the why super. De uh, I don't. Really, I need to do more research into super determinism. I'm also probably butchering this because I've tried to read papers on it on like cubism. That's one of the epistemic models of quantum mechanics. There's a bunch of them that are like almost the exact same thing with minor differences in how they explain it. Um, because it's like philosophy of physics, which is a weird fucking subject that you don't want to talk about because it's all the most boring people in the universe, but they're also really smart. And they're also not boring. I don't know why I said that. Well, it's because they're not postmodern and, and cool. You know, I like I like my philosophy to be stupid. Yeah. Well, they like their philosophy to be practical. <laughs> practical. <laughs> so uh, it's a bunch of that stuff. I don't really understand it, but I've tried to read some papers. I've listened to some talks on it, and I'm pretty sure that it just makes the most like. It seems like the simplest solution. And it seems like the solution with the least bullshit. Because you're not imposing laws upon the universe to make it conform to our reality. You're saying, no, the problem is that you're, you don't understand that what you've been measuring the whole time wasn't, was, a, was a function of human experience, not a function inherent to the universe. So there you go. There's, there's, the, there's a, the epistemic view of quantum mechanics. And why it's the best. Every time, I just want to make this clear, every time I've mentioned the word postmodern in the past, like, year, it's been a joke, right? Because it's a buzzword and doesn't really mean that much. I just want to make that clear. I managed to get to the point where I'm very sleep-deprived, but... I don't think I can play Yume Tuki right now. I don't think I can do much right now. I don't think I can do much besides probably just try and sleep. So that was a wasted dream. Imagine being me. Imagine being me. You stay up all night and all day, only to finally go to sleep, 
only to only sleep like like I don't know what time is it? Fuck! When did I go to sleep? Six hours, which is six hours. Six hours is livable when you had a normal day. Not livable when you ain't. <sighs> caffeine. Caffeine, caffeine, caffeine. Crystal castles. Many, 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 many moons ago, when I was a teenager, I was very into um, uh, what, what's the word? like eight bit art, I guess. Back before it was very boring, when it was still pretty cool, I used to make eight bit drawings on my computer. Um, oftentimes with big skylines, cityscapes, pretty much, with me in them, or or something, cityscapes, because pixel art, that's what the word is, pixel art. I used to be pretty into pixel art when I was maybe 15, 14, and um, I ended up joining some, this was back when I was super into Facebook, I ended up joining some pixel art Facebook groups to see people who make cool pixel art. And through that, I ended up stumbling into a glitch art uh, Facebook group. And um, I found out how you glitch images. I wonder if I can still do it. Let's see if I remember how to do it. Because uh, I used to do it on my Mac back then, so... This is how, if I remember correctly, you have to take an image, then open with, um, uh, text edit, and then scroll down to the bot to the middle part, delete some bits, copy paste some bits. save it and then oh well that didn't turn out particularly interesting um <laughs> let's try another one this one here sure open with oh whoops i just put it i moved it to trash that was not what i meant to do open with Text edit, hello, there we go. Sometimes it will just turn shit, but sometimes it'll be cool. Um, delete a bit there, copy paste a bit here. See what that looks like. Oh, no, this just corrupted, oh, interesting. Well, stuff like that, basically. You... Maybe that's cool. No. But, uh, I probably fucked it up a bit too much. Hmm. Oops. 
back to the original. Nope, I'm still glitched. Well, whatever. You used to be able. To, I used to know how to do it by just going into the text, like the hex version or whatever. Open it with text editor, copy paste some shit. I'm pretty sure I just got unlucky because sometimes you just copy paste the wrong bit. Maybe I didn't scroll down far enough because there's a bunch of tags at the top that, like, you have to scroll to like the middle of the document before you can start getting interesting glitch effects. But I used to do that and post in these glitch art groups, right? And I actually got pretty good at it. Um, like, I started even doing very basic stuff, like I would take an image with a person in it and then using, like, this thing, what's it called, preview, I would, like, I've forgotten how to fucking do it. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, this this tool, one of these tools, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, the lasso. This was before Smart Lasso was even in there. Um, and then I would, like, outline a character... and then, like, cut them out of it, and then I would glitch the background but have the character not glitched. It was pretty cool. I, I got pretty good at it. But I was post I was posting in these glitch art groups and looking at other people's glitch art, and someone posted um, glitch the already glitched, and it was a glitch of the, lo the, the cover of Crystal Castles Volume 1, Crystal Castles 1. This one. Let me see if I can fucking... This, this cover. It was a glitch out version of this. And someone in the comments said something about the band. Because I, I thought the image was interesting on its own, right? Because it is a pretty interesting image. And so, I and someone in the comments had mentioned like, oh, I love Crystal Castles or something like that. And so I was like, what's Crystal Castles? And I looked them up, and I listened to this album, and it was, like, fucking mind-blowing, because, first of all, I was already into chiptune, so hearing, like... I was already into chiptune, and I was already into, like... Um, well, at the time, I was into metalcore, but essentially I was into punk. I just hadn't realized it yet. Because <laughs> um, all I'd heard up to that point was pop punk, Actually, no, because I was into Johnny Hobo already, I think, at that point. So I was into I was into punk, I just didn't know it yet. And so when I heard this, it was like, holy fucking shit, this is the Holy Grail. Um, and it, it was an amazing album. And then I went, obviously, I have to listen to their whole discography. And I heard the song, Do Deer, and I thought, I want to do that. And then I started making no thank you music because I wanted to make music like Crystal Castles and obviously didn't turn out anything like Crystal Castles really but my earliest music my earliest no thank you music that I never even released is actually trying to combine like punk with chiptune basically because I was trying to I was listening to a lot of chiptune at the time in fact if you go into my um which would it be? It's probably my Mixes album's long-form music playlist. And you scroll right to the bottom. This is going to take a while. Oh, no, it didn't take that long. Look, the first thing ever on my music, my Mixes album long-form, is Random Chiptune Mix, followed by Sleep Dope Smoker. And then, you know, this is also a chiptune. This is a really good chiptune album, by the way. Knife City self-titled definitely recommend them got some great tunes on here um it got to the point where i even bought an original game boy i went out there's a retro game shop in london there's actually multiple but that i went to yeah there's multiple fucking retro game shops but not a single anime shop it's fucking terrible um so i went there and i bought a Game Boy for £25, an original Game Boy, intending to make chiptune on it, because I'd made it in the computer before, but I'd never made it on a Game Boy, of course. So I'd, I'd never touched it. The Game Boy's older than me. Um, so I bought it, only to find out that 
it's actually quite difficult to make music on a Game Boy. You have to mod the Game Boy. You have to do something called a Pro Sound mod. You don't technically have to, but you probably should because the sound quality on it. Well, firstly, to add stereo, that's pretty useful because the Game Boy is mono, but also the, just the sound quality in the standard Game Boy setup is, is not good enough, really. So you need to mod it. Plus, you also need to... Um, uh, flat. You need to buy a blank cartridge and then flash a specific ROM called uh, LSDJ, which is a tracker type um, sequencer. You have to flash that onto a cartridge, which obviously requires having the gear to flash something onto a Game Boy cartridge. Cartridge, and then you have to you put that so you have to buy a blank game boy cartridge flash lsdj on it pro sound mod your game boy and then lsdj is not even it's actually quite difficult software to learn when you're not like i could probably learn it now but i i don't think i would have understood it then because i was still new to music and whatever so that basically never became a thing Because I thought the idea of using a Game Boy to play punk music is like the most punk, cyberpunk shit ever. And also at the time, actually this might have been a bit later, but at, there was a time, let me see, oh no, this is just going to be Cyberpunk 2077, fuck. I can find it. Yeah, this one. See, this was probably a little bit later, but then there was a, there was a period in my life where I basically based my entire life around this image, and he has a Game Boy around his neck, and so that made me feel like I definitely need to be a Game Boy type of person. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think I even under, really understood a half of this image, but whatever. I thought it looked cool. At the time I was basing, well, I don't know. I don't know exactly when the timeline was. I don't really remember my childhood, as I've said. Uh, but so yeah, what I'm trying to say is, if it hadn't been for the fact that I randomly stumbled across. A, a um a fucking glitch art of the Crystal Castles front cover, then no thank you may never have existed. In fact, even I even made a cover of Doe Deer once, and it's it's on Bandcamp. If you're part of the Good Person Club on Bandcamp, it's also somewhere deep, deep, deep down in Patreon. Uh, it's part of my live live set that I've never played because I don't play live, but I'm planning to. I'm telling you, you guys have once once Corona ends, you guys have to start really pestering me because I'm a I'm a pussy and I hate going outside. But you guys have to start really pestering me to start playing live because that's really what I need to be doing in life. But yeah, there you go. I'm going to show you how to make this insanely fucking thick, heavy, sick bass tone um, that I'm not going to show you because my speakers on my laptop will not do it justice, so you'll just have to wait till the album comes out. Um, here's what it is. It's two of the same bass line played over each other with a sine wave as a sub bass thickening it up and then all rooted into a compressor and distortion together. So here's how you get the bass tone. Um, you're going to want a really heavy noise gate because um, I had a lot of noise floor and I want there to be a, like a lot of contrast between the bits where I'm playing. As you can see, it's a very like, staccato riff, so I want there to be a lot of contrast between the bits where I'm playing and the bits where I'm not playing. So it's got a heavy noise gate. Then with the pedal board, it's just lit this isn't even doing anything. It's literally just this grit distortion pedal on this, these settings. It's just a heavy distortion. Um, and then we'll skip over the chorus for now. The amp, this is how you get like a doom metal-y 
it's essentially an orange amp. So it's like me, my emulation of a sort of orange setup. So you have the orange um, cabinet, and then the the amp head is this boutique retro amp. And you can see I actually basically just, you know, smiley face EQ, just duck all the mids out. Um, obviously nothing too complicated here. Uh, pretty much just gives a nice shape. And now uh, that's pretty much the same on both of these. This is actually the more basic version of it. Um, the EQ, literally, actually, I just need to duck that out a little bit so it doesn't interfere too much with the, the sub bass. And that's pretty much it, just an exciter um, to, to uh, give it some nice high frequency edge. So this one is, both of these are panned mono, right? Or panned to the center. But um, so with this, this one is, it doesn't sound that heavy on its own. It's quite nice, but it's it's not wide. So I have this second one with a really heavy chorus on it. As you can see, the intensity all the way up mix very high, which is just all really wide. And then I'm using Good Hertz mid side to um, just widen it even more. You can see it's on 200% there stereo width. So this is a really great plugin that lets you do some interesting mid side stuff. And then um, again, I need that shit. Need to, oh, wait, it's already done down here. I don't know what that EQ is doing. Uh, but then down here, I have this, which is mid only. I'm just filtering out all the lows from the mids uh, because that's really being done by uh, the other two bases. This one, I don't want it to get too muddy. And I'm also filtering out some of the high frequencies in the mids because I want to let the, the other bass deal with those frequencies pretty basic EQ I'm not doing anything complicated and then on the side I have another EQ which is just dealing with the sides again cutting out the bass and this time amplifying giving a little bit of a boost in the highs just so that the sides have a lot of some nice high frequencies all of that is then being paired with a uh, doubled with a sine wave that's just the sub bass doing the same thing it's literally just a sine wave in ES2 with nothing uh, nothing else that sine wave is apparently being run through a pedal board with nothing in it. Let me clean that up. Uh, and then all of that is being uh, summed in this final track uh, where I have some parallel compression, pretty heavy parallel compression using this overdrive pedal that's secret layer compressor and also parallel distortion. Um, uh, so it's, it also has a bit of distortion on it. That's basically just to get the sine wave and the bass frequencies of these two to sort of interact and gel. So it doesn't just feel like it doesn't just feel like a bass with a sine wave underneath it. The sine wave will actually affect the frequencies and tone of the other two bases. And so basically this one is doing the center, this one's doing the sides, this one's doing the sub, and this one's gluing them together. And that's pretty much it. And it sounds pretty depth from above. It sounds pretty depth from above 1976 or whatever the fuck that band's called. Um, and it's heavy as fuck. I'm re-watching this Doom Behind the Music talk. In my opinion, every musician should watch this talk. It's very good, especially if you're geeky, but also like for synthesizer shit and sound design. But any musician should watch this talk because the focus of the talk is about how you have to have a pretty much. I mean, it's mo it's also about how the d music for Doom 2016 was made, which is also really fucking interesting. But he. Mick Gordon, you know, if this was coming from any other person who was giving a talk, I would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? But clearly he knows his shit. And so I listen, it sounds like neoliberal bullshit, but it's actually true. He, the whole point is that you have to be comfortable with failure. And I think I am very uncomfortable with failure in every aspect of my life, except for music. For some reason, I can make, uh, I mean, sometimes I get a little dejected, as you've seen with the past videos where I've been, like, um, moaning about the state of music and not sure what to make. Uh, but I'm very, very much out of that creative block and I'm making music right now that I'm incredibly happy with, even though every day I come up with 20 ideas and 19 of them don't go anywhere. I've been trying to, I've, I've been literally sitting down and making music every day when I wake up like a fucking job, right? And it's just improves my day 
so much to actually not only be, I don't know, it improves my day a lot. But the thing is, yeah, I make, I come up, I, I get up, I have breakfast or whatever, and then I just sit down and I just make music. And I have 20 ideas and 19 of them are terrible. It doesn't matter because the one idea that's left over at the end, I run with and I push it as far as it will go. And I'm like, fuck, yeah, that sounds great. For some reason, like, with almost everything else in life, when I do something and I fail at it, I end up giving up for some reason. I'm very bad at dealing with that. So, like, I, I, if I, I, I find it hard to stick with things. If I don't get something within the first few tries, I find it easy to just get frustrated and give up and then, you know, make excuses. But with music, I'm not like that. And coincidentally... <laughs> I happen to be good at making music and bad at everything else. Which one follows from which? I don't know. I don't know which one follows from which. Um, but I wish I could take the attitude I have with music of just continuously trying again until I get something that works and stick it to every other aspect of my life. Um, I think the only reason I'm so comfortable making music is because I've been doing it for so long. And so I'm very aware of how um, failure doesn't mean failure because, um, like, there really is no failure in music. You you can make ideas that you're not happy with, um, or you can, you, like, yesterday I spent most of the day fucking with the mix of a song on the ne on my next album, um, and I'm not happy with it. I, it's it's okay. But it's um, it's really not as punchy as I wish it was. I need to. I'm gonna. I'm almost tempted to scrap the entire song because I just can't get the mix to sound right. Um, like I, 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 I think I need to seriously rework the song because it doesn't. It's not working in its current form. Maybe I'll do that now actually. But um. Yeah, for some reason, even though, like, I just keep going. It's weird. What a weird... I think that, yeah, you got you got to be comfortable failing, I guess. But for some reason, I can't manage to apply that with other aspects of my life. Like, I don't know. Very strange, very strange. So far, today has been one of the better days of my life, which, as you know, means it can only go downhill from here. I was trying... I made a song, and I went back to try and fix the mix on the song I made yesterday, um, and... or over the past, like, few days. I mixed it yesterday, and it sounded like shit. And I made some changes, and it was sounding better, but still kind of shit and I was like what the fuck is the problem until I decided to listen to it with the vocal track muted and it sounded great and I realized the problem this whole time has just been that the vocals are bad and I need to re-record the vocals which is the one thing I can't do because it's fucking 3am right now and I can't sing right <laughs> I wish my room was perfectly soundproofed how cool would that be a perfectly soundproofed room so I could just record at any time of night that would be amazing but Sadly, not the fucking case, is it? So, can't work on that anymore. Um, we've made a song. Do I want to keep working on music? Or do I want to take a... Sometimes, do I want to... What do I want to do is the question I'm asking. Uh, I think I'm going to, today, finish Index Season 2. Uh... I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. The world is free of um, challenges. This is the final step that I'm going to take in cutting down YouTube. So there's lots of stuff I could be doing right now. I have a visual novel to read. I have anime to watch. And yet, there's a bunch of shit on YouTube that I have to slog through, even though I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, before I get to do that. So this is a problem. And what I'm now going to do is go through all of my 800 or so subscriptions and unsubscribe from everyone who 
isn't I don't immediately click on their videos. I was just having fun, but I have to eat. What can I eat that requires nothing from me? What can I eat that requires nothing from me? What can I eat that requires nothing from me? Um, um, nothing from me, nothing from me. Nothing from me. Hmm. Nothing from me. Nothing from me? Pie? Mm-hmm. Not very big a pie. Woke up at ten, thirty, eleven, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven. Sleep at seven, possibly? No. Maybe. One, two, three. That's got to be right. Yeah, sleep at 3 p.m. Can't, so it's 11 hours-ish. Pizza? Either way, it's going to be baked, so I'll turn this guy on. Pizza, good idea, because it requires very little from me. Hmm, I think that might be the play here. I can't do this with one hand. Pizza. There's a problem. There's a problem with pizza, which is that pizza, whenever I eat it, I don't know what it does to me, but it doesn't do good things to me. It makes me super tense. If I eat too fast, I start heart beating like crazy, and even if I eat slowly, and I'm talking very slowly over the course of 40 minutes to an hour, um, it makes me every muscle in my body really tense. Fortunately, this is pretty early. I still have 11 hours till I sleep, which means I can afford to take a propranolol. Hopefully that should mitigate the problems. If I take a propranolol, take take away my problems, might, and then by, by the time it's late, it should have worn off. And if I want to drink, I can drink. Because the reason I don't normally take propranolol to mitigate my problems is because I am an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> I, I like to drink. And it's dang- although it's probably safe if you don't drink too much, I don't like to take risks like that. Um, and so I, I don't take it if I think that there's a possibility that I might drink later, right? Um, <clears throat> because, yeah, it's dangerous. Although it's very unlikely that it would be dangerous. I don't want to take the risk. But if it's this early, I can take the propranolol and then it's fine because by the time I'm drinking, it's many, many hours have passed. This is my Casio F91W. Why am I showing you this? Why am I showing you this? Because I've been thinking, this is the best joke in the entire video, by the way. I hope you're ready. You stuck with it for this long. I hope you're ready. (laughs) I've been thinking that I... uh, I've been thinking I should start making things that are watchable again. <laughs> you get it? Watchable? Watch. 
<laughs> I've been thinking I should start making things a bit more watchable. You know, a little bit more watchable. Because I've been making things that are unwatchable for a while now. This is the, the YouTube equivalent of noise music. Or unkyo un music. So they had various intentionalities. But they didn't compound with the realities. Some of them did, some of them didn't. It's a bit wacky. I got some things that happen the way you expect them to, and I got some things that don't. It's, I've been awake for. Wait a minute. The clocks. The clocks went back. Or forwards. The clocks went forwards, I didn't even notice. There we go, fixed. Now it's 8.22, 8.23. It's about 10 seconds fast, but whatever. It's fine, I can deal with 10 seconds fast. I intended to finish, I was like, I was so excited watching Index Season 2 yesterday, even though it's only kind of good. It's only like a 6, or maybe a 7, nothing higher. And then I was like, why haven't I watched Ghost Senzu Summer Bomb Bomba Bomb Bombai? <laughs> why haven't I watched Ghost Senzu Summer got Bomb Bonsai? Yeah. Ba Bam Banzai. What is it? Ghost Senzu Summer. I know what that means. That means ancestors. Ban Banzai. That's it, right? Ghost Senzu Summer Ban Banzai. They don't make it easy out here. They don't make it easy. Uh. I'm going to watch that, and I'm going to watch the last 12 episodes of Index Season 2. It's going to be great. I'm going to have a whole anime day. I'm going to have a whole anime day. And I'm going to read my visual novel. Speaking of which, let me turn my computer off, because it's been on for like five days now. Three days now. Two days now. You need, you need to take a break. You need to take a break. Uh... <sighs> I was like, I'm going to have a whole anime day. Woke up today. Um, don't know if that's going to happen. Don't know if that's going to happen. Because I've been awake for, for many hours at this point. And ain't nothing none of that none like happening. Ain't nothing none of that none like happening. The, the, the lack of sleepiness is beginning to affect me a little bit. And now it's time to go. This is the long thank you phase. I'm cancelling my previous idea. I'm cancelling, by the way, yeah, this phase, these assorted ramblings and this, this is the long thank you for everything since gubbins or giblets. Everything since giblets is long, long thank you. But we will soon reach the end of long thank you. Sooner than you are even ready for. And um, what comes next? Well, it was originally going to be one thing, but that thing revealed itself to be unsustainable. As I said, right at the very, very beginning of this video. And since I'm, I have now got better ideas, I can reveal to you a brief, because I'm going to cannibalize myself. I'm going to eat my own ashes, as they would say. I'm going to eat my own ashes, so I won't reveal too much, because I'm going to eat my own ashes. But let's just say uh, something about the the adventures of Thaddeus Black. That was going to be the next chapter, but that's no longer going to be the next chapter. We've got new chapters. We've got new chapters, we've got new things, everything's looking interesting at the very least. If nothing else, but don't worry, we're still a while away. Even though it's sooner than you may think, we're still a while away. Actually, it may not be sooner than you may think. It may be while away, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> Maybe it's more the latter than the former. Man, this is a very strange... I'm so tired right now. I felt good this morning, but all the time. Remember when I said I woke up 
Remember that? Remember that in this video? I woke up and I was like, oh, I only slept six hours, plus I stayed up all night, so I felt like shit. And I had some caffeine, and I felt fine, and I made some music, and it was all good. And then about an hour and a bit ago, I just, all the tiredness started hitting me, and ever since then I've been out of it. I've just been out of it. Um, incapable, no capabilities can be found here. Uh, Canceller of plans, that's me. But yeah, I've had, I had one interesting idea. Had two-ish interesting ideas. Possibly even three. I actually managed to fast today since I eating that pizza earlier. I haven't eaten anything and I'm just about to go to sleep, which means this is probably, well, what time is it now? When did I eat? I ate around 5 a.m. It's currently 2.30 p.m.-ish, so I can't count, but that was pretty good. The problem being, I actually did just have a tiny, tiny bit of chocolate, like a t one cube of chocolate, basically, just just for per well my mum bought it basically and she was like have some and i was like okay fine i'll have some since you bought it for me so kindly and so i had some and it was delicious because it's chocolate and i love chocolate but um technically that breaks my fast it's uh, like um but, but it has enough calories in it that it breaks the fast from um my body's perspective which is a bit of a shame because I guess it kind of just ruins everything I was working towards. But I didn't even do it on purpose, really. I just couldn't be bothered to eat. I wish I could just go back to how things were. I used to just do this every day like it was nothing. I would have... Man, I know what happened to me. Well, I got fat is what happened to me. Watching this new David Attenborough Netflix documentary, which is on YouTube. And... um as usual with these nature documentaries, there's a bit of environmentalist propaganda, which is fine. And in fact, it's more than fine. Make me want to go out and kill a couple of people, you know what I'm saying? Oh, by the way, here's, you know, you know, um, the, here's, you know, those, these forests, uh, these, these, um, rainforest we've been showing you in the Philippines. By the way, look, uh, oh yeah, by the way, over the past decade, 90% of them have disappeared. Here's a map of what it used to be. Here's a map of what it is now. By the way, 90%, oh, remember all those animals? Yeah, they're all going to be extinct. They're all going to die because of human activity, by the way. That's the little thing we're just going to sneak in at the end of this, by the way. No no big deal, no big deal. But yeah, we, we literally, every single one of us is responsible for this. Really makes you an antinatalist? <laughs> really make you want to kill some people. You know what I'm saying? Mmm. I'm like it. The more I drink it, the more I like it. Yeah, really make you, uh, think about a couple activities, you know, activities that one could do. But ain't no winning. Ain't no winning. That's the fact about it. It makes you mad, but in reality, ain't no winning. Humans are a natural disaster, and the same way you can't, you can't, you know, it's part of it. It's part of it. After every mass extinction, there's been a great flourish of biodiversity and complexity. So we're just causing our own. Hopefully we take ourselves with it. That's the only thing I care about. I don't, listen, 20 million species of jellyfish can die for all I care, as long as we die as well. And we're not there to hurt the next 20 million of them. Because let me tell you who's going to be okay. Most of them. Most of these little life forms, fungi, they're going to be fine. Moss, they're going to be fine. Uh... All of these little undersea creatures, deep sea vent creatures, they're going to be fine. Bacteriums, viruses, all going to be fine. 
all of these things are going to be fine. Trees, I'm pretty sure they're going to be fine. Uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about. All these guys, eh, they'll manage. You know, hey, it might be a bit tough, but they'll manage. They'll pull through. No ideal. Some of them will die off, but they'll pull through. The hardy ones, only the strong survive, and humans ain't strong. So let us all die already. Stop breeding. Gets me real mad when I see breeders. Why would you want to continue this, eh? Why would you want to continue this? It's just terrible, really. I, you know, that's one of the things. Philosophy Tube did a video on antinatalism, and it's complete cringe. It's terrible. I don't know why I ever liked that person. Because I I went back and watched the philosophy. No, I didn't actually. I watched an unlearn economics video that had some uh, like clips from a philosophy from various philosophy tube videos in it. And then I saw those clips. I was just like, "That's bad." Why is that? Like I could I it, so it was cringe. It was cringe and blue pilled. It was cringe and blue pilled. I was like, "What? Why did I like this?" So I don't know why I like that. I'm not entirely sure why I like that. But yeah, he did a video on, or she did a video on antinatalism, sorry, uh, a long time ago. Uh, I watched it because I was like, oh, philosophy to antinatalism? Oh, I hope this person is, you know, there's a person with radical beliefs. Maybe they'll be radical enough to at least give a fair, a, a fair understanding of what this philosophy is. Nope. Firstly, only cares about the one book that everyone cares about, which is Better Never To Have Been, right? Which is a stupid book. I don't like it, and I'm still an anti-natalist. It's a stupid book with a stupid argument. Um, but also, Philosophy Tube's debunk was also stupid. It was all stupid. The whole thing was stu Why did I even pay attention to that ever? Why did I waste my time doing that? Well, I could have been not doing that. It was all very silly. <sighs> and now I'm talking about it here, and now you have to know about all the silliness that happened. I'm very tired, by the way. So I'm struggling, but it's okay. Sound system going to put me back up, yeah. One thing that I can depend on. That's the thing about making music when you wake up, is that you're then kind of out of action for the rest of the day because you've used up all of your mental energy. I don't have much mental... I, I'm, I mean, I'm quite... I'm very mental, but I don't have much energy. There they go, drilling away. Making loud noises with power tools. Leave me alone. Stop making loud noises with power tools. I'm trying to sleep. Do I go with another glass of whiskey or do I go with the vodka? The vodka's cheaper, so I should probably drink the vodka. Put her hairs on your dick. One of my weird little paranoias I'm skeptical of toothpaste. What's toothpaste about, eh? I feel like it's unnecessary. I feel like when it comes to brushing your teeth. the mechanical action of, of the toothbrush that's doing most of the work, right? I feel like toothpaste is a scam. I still use it, but I can't shake the feeling that it's a scam. Why does it have fluoride in it, eh? 
I didn't sign up for no fluoride. Uh, I didn't sign up for no fluoride. What's that about? What's that about? I still do it, but I do it. With this complaint. Uh, people, I know medieval people, and before that maybe, but I know, I know people used to brush their teeth even back in the medieval, shut the fuck up, I know people used to brush their teeth back in the medieval period, with salt, and a special type of twig, I know that was the case. How come humans the only ones need to brush our teeth? Ain't no other animal brushing their teeth. What's that about? Why are we susceptible to teeth diseases? There ain't no other animal susceptible to teeth diseases. Why ain't no lions brushing their teeth? <laughs> when the last time you saw that? You never seen it because it ain't a thing. Only humans. Why is that a thing? Seems stupid to me. Sounds clearly off, but I don't know what. This will be like the fourth time where I've made a section in one of my videos, which is, man, I feel really bad for normies in this pandemic. They just don't have the tools to cope. Uh, because, so Aaron Signal, if you don't know, Aaron Signal is a like gaming analysis I guess game analysis YouTuber I think he's pretty good I've been watching him for a long time he's not as I don't know I like him I like him you know what say what you want I know some people hate him for some reason I don't really know why but I think he's pretty good anyway uh, he's made this video uh, called gaming in the quarantine years which is a bit stupid title but the video is really about how, like, he's just been holed up in his fucking room and uh, all he can have the energy to do is play Fortnite um, and other Skinner Box games because, uh, and, like, you know, he's using gaming as sort of a coping method for quarantine-induced depression and... uh like he's upset about this basically but he can't doesn't have the energy to change it and he says like oh all i do is just load up a fucking look at this this is him right this is a simulation of his uh let me hold on if i go back or oh, whatever it doesn't matter he's saying like this is my fun night alone is this two monitors one Fortnite, one deep space nine nursing a beer or shit posting on twitter i'm sorry does that not just sound like heaven? <laughs> is that not just the best? How is that not just the best way to spend your time? I don't understand. I mean, I don't like Fortnite. Well, I've never played Fortnite. I don't think I would like Fortnite from what I've seen of it. But having a video game or something to relax with, Deep Space Nine open or Mystery Science Theater 2000 with a nice beer, just hanging out. He's like, oh, I've, had, I've done this every day for the past year. Yeah, bro, I've done this every day for the past decade. It's great. I love it. What the fuck's wrong with you? I, I, I don't understand. Like, these people, what's going on inside their brains? How can they not cope? I think the thing is, it's like a... I've kind of developed the tools over many, many years to, of like mild depression, punctuated by bouts of mania, to like, how do I put it? Like, okay, so one of the things that he says is, I don't have the energy to do anything else. And I have the same problem. I've talked about it at length, at great length, that I, when I'm depressed, I don't have the energy to do anything except just watch YouTube. And it's like an unhealthy behavior. We're doing the exact same thing. He just uses Fortnite. I use YouTube. It's the same sort of thing. The difference is that I've, this has been my life for like 
at least five years. And so I've developed tools to at least twist it into a way where it's not as bad as it could be. So I don't, I try not to, I, I'm not the best. I mean, Among Us kind of ruined this for me. If it wasn't for Among Us and a couple of other channels, um, then I would only watch like good YouTube content, not trash. So like, that's basically fine. I mean, I don't like how much I use YouTube, but I'm at least self-aware enough that I know that I it's not good and I have other things I can do. I'm actually just about to stop playing this visual novel again once I finish this video. Um, and the other thing is like, when you say you don't have energy to do something, there are ways to, to get that energy. Like the, the, the lack of energy that comes with depression over a very long period of time, you can sort of not to a great extent, not to a great extent, but to a minor extent, you can learn to control it a little bit, just enough that you can do stuff that's not like just enough that you have some level of control over your own activities, barely, but just enough. So like you, the lack of energy isn't real, right? You don't physically, your battery isn't physically low in real life. Your just brain is being st stupid. And if you force yourself to do certain things, sometimes, maybe one out of 10 times, you'll find that once you actually get started, or maybe this is just for me, I don't know if this applies to everyone. So for example, if I just force myself to open up logic and just start making melodies, then there's a good chance, or not a good chance, but there's a chance that I'll come up with something and then next thing I know, I'm invested in making a song now and, oh, look, the day hasn't been wasted. Or if I just make the challenge to just, or even something that might be too complicated, but even if it's just like, if I just pick up the bass guitar. Like I have enough energy to pick up the bass guitar from over there, even in my most depressed state. And then once I've picked it up, I'll be like, well, I may as well play it for a bit. And then, then I've had like at least some very basic mental exercise for the day, right? Like if I'm playing bass, just jamming, just noodling, it's, and it's like, okay, at least I've done like weirdly that will actually leave you with more energy like expending energy in that way and actually having to engage your brain counterintuitively, it actually sometimes leaves you with more energy. Sometimes it doesn't. It's not very predictable, but that's why I'm being very careful to say you can only really control it a tiny, tiny bit. But over the years, you learn coping mechanisms or not necessarily coping mechanisms, but you learn uh, that your your brain is full of made up spooks and you can see through them. But on the other hand, you also learn just to, you learn against guilt, right? Or at least I learned against guilt. So he says, like, he feels guilty for feeling depressed when he's, his life is relatively good compared to some people who are much worse affected by the pandemic, right? And he feels guilty for just sitting there and playing Fortnite all day because it's not productive or whatever. Now, I understand that I feel guilty as well when I sit there and just watch YouTube all day. But at the same time, um, it's kind of like entertaining to me. The, the guilt is uh, very minor. It's more like... Um, Hmm. How do I, how would I put it? It's not guilt to the, it's very much internal. Like it's more like guilt, not so much so like I could have done something for the world today. It's more like, well, there goes another day, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it's the same thing. No, ask, what the fuck? There is definitely an atomizer. What are you talking about? Okay, hold on.
I think I'm just talking bullshit because I'm the point I'm trying to make is the reason I feel bad for normies is because to them these are new problems and they haven't developed any of the methods that you develop when these are old problems. Like to me and all my my real people, these are old problems. We've all solved them twenty five thousand times in our lifetimes and it's not we're confident in them our abilities, right? Because we've practiced it a lot. But to these people they have no practice. And so it's a challenging environment. I won't lie, like I'm not I mean, in my opinion, it's less challenging than the outside world. To them obviously it isn't. Uh but it's a challenging environment nonetheless. And it's like they're in the jungle with no survival skills, whereas we've lived here for a few years and we know our way around. That's really the only difference. Um I mean, the other difference is we came here voluntarily. Uh, I don't know, I feel bad for them. Like, I want to know what to do to help, but I don't think there is anything I can do to help. I have the same opinion on trap music that I have on a lot of other things, right? Which is, I like I like it, when it but I think it's, been, it's a bit, it's a bit, I'm over it. So, for example, think of it like this. Uh, I like Black Sabbath. I love Black Sabbath. Great band. One of my favorite bands of all time. Love Black Sabbath. Right? But if the Black Sabbath album, self-titled album, came out today... No, it's not necessarily that, but, like, if I heard, if I went, if I if you send me your band and you're like, oh, yeah, we sound like Black Sabbath, I'm going to be like, eh, I've, I've heard Black Sabbath before. I don't need your band because it's not going to be as good as that. And, you know, that sound doesn't really make much sense anymore. You know, it music is linked to when in time it was created. Inherently, you can't actually... Like people will want to try, but you can't unlink that because music is very intimately linked with technology, right? So music is is as much as you might want to pretend it isn't. Music is linked to errors and movements and stuff like that. Innately, you can't avoid it. Uh, like if if I. If you're like, hey, I'm in a band. You want to listen to my band? We sound, um, we sound like the Stooges. Then I'm like, I love the Stooges. Don't give a shit about your band though. Don't care. Do not, do not want to listen to you. Completely boring to me, because the Stooges already did it. Because it's not. It was relevant when the Stooges made it, and I can have in my head that it was. Like, I know the context behind it. I know the context is just as important as text, right? We all know this. We're not living in the fucking 1950s anymore. We all know this. And so I know the context surrounding the Stooges, and that makes it more impressive to me. That makes it more interesting to me. That makes it interesting at all to me. But I don't give... I also know the context behind your band that sounds exactly like them. I don't give a shit. Right? It's the same as trap music. There's a lot of many, many micro genres in trap, right? Many, many, many ones. But they all basically have the same features. It's not like trap music is rock and roll, where you can go anywhere from psych rock to hair metal to fucking sun to a hardcore. Pro- like, it's not that broad. It, it's more like metal or something like that, where metal, or it's actually, I don't even know if it's much like metal. It's more like, because metal is broader than trap. It's more like maybe techno or something like that, or house. So like house, you've got like, you've got deep house, you've got Chicago house, you've got tech house, micro house, like a, a billion different types of house music. But at the end of the day, they're all house music, and I don't. And if you don't, if you if you don't like house music, you're not gonna like any of it, right? 
same thing. The tra- like they all still have the same features. It's all basically the same thing, just split off into micro genres. Like, that doesn't mean I don't like what the good parts of it. You know, I like me some. I, I'm a big Chief Keef fan. Big um, uh, fucking fan of all the early Memphis shit. Big fan of uh, Young Lean and Blady, of course. Big fan of uh, Ethernet. Big fan of, I don't know, Lil B, of course, and Space Ghost Pub and uh, stuff like that. Obviously, there's a lot of trap music that I like. Kodak Black, Playboy Carti. <clears throat> I could. The list goes on and on. But like it's now, it's been done at this point. Like I don't have any desire right now to, to really listen to. I mean, I'm listen. I would listen to Lil B because Lil B will always be just so innovative and interesting. Right, and I'll probably listen to Chief Keith for the same reason, but I have no desire to listen to any new trap music or anything because it's I if I have to hear the fucking <clears throat> if I have to hear that again, I'm gonna fucking kill myself. If I have to hear that fucking rhythm again, I'm gonna fucking kill myself. If I have to hear another Jugger 808, and Jugger 808 is the one that goes boing. <laughs> I think I have a sample on my computer. Um, uh, it's probably in here, right? Yeah, this is a Jug 808. You hear that? If I have to hear that, ever, I think it might be pronounced Jug. I don't know, I've been calling it Jug because it sounds funnier. If I have to hear that fucking sound again, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> do no, die. If I have to see another fucking music video directed by Lyrical Lemonade, I'm going to jump off a fucking building. It's so oversaturated. Like, people have been... People were talking about Peak Trap, like, three years ago. And it's only gotten more oversaturated. I'm so bored of it. Make other music. Please. I'm doing it. Fuck you. You're cl- no one else is listening to me, so I have to fucking do it. And so I have to make my own fucking album just because I don't want to listen to any more fucking d- Jug 808s. That's the only reason. I don't want to like, listen to that. I don't want to hear your fucking producer tag. I don't want to hear any of that shit, right? Only if it's really interesting and unique. That's the only time I want to hear it. If you've got something really interesting and unique to do. And I'm not talking like, oh, we put the trap on, but we bit crush it. Oh, we put the trap song, but we nightcore. Oh, it's got a louder, it's louder than normal. Oh, it's got screaming in it. No, that's just gimmicks. If you've got something actually unique to say, like fucking Plunder does, then, then I will respect you. Then it's like fine, okay, I'll listen to that and I'll enjoy it, right? Because you're uh, actually got something unique and interesting to say, right? And it makes sense. Like you've justified the reason you're using these sounds, but. For most of you fuckers, <laughs> none of that is true. You're just doing it because that's the sound that everyone else uses. That's just the set. Sa- oh, it's just the zeitgeist. So of course you're gonna make music for sounds like that because it's the zeitgeist. Boring, boring and terrible. Die, shine. Why are things themselves? I guess this is my own metaphysics. Uh, it's pretty much just the lose with Shinto. <laughs> Well, no, really, it's just retarded. Don't worry about me. I'm just being retarded. Okay, so uh, things are themselves because they are different from other things which are not themselves, right? Uh, things, it's, things are themselves because of what they negate. This is obvious, right? So why is a tree a tree? Because it's different from everything else that isn't a tree. And it's, uh, okay, that's the first thing. Secondly, why is a tree a tree? Because um, the word tree contains, the word tree describes a family of objects with uh, which are different from everything else which isn't a tree. Okay, you understand? Good. The third aspect, a tree is different from things that are not trees. 
but there's a gap between what something isn't and what something is. There's a small gap that needs to be filled, and that is filled with that gap is not filled. We call that gap kami, in my opinion. Kami is what makes things themselves. Um, it's uh, sort of it's not anything supernatural or transcendental or anything like that. It's just the 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 invis. It's just a name for that little gap where something is itself. Um, it's just the you could call it an essence, but it's not really an essence because it's not contained within the thing itself. It's um, just a feature of reality, basically. Um, it's just a feature of reality. It's just like saying, you know, one plus one is two or whatever. Like, it's just a feature of reality. Um, I, although it may be only a feature to observed reality, I don't know. <clears throat> so the gap between the, neg the negation aspect of or the difference aspect of um, a thing being itself and then the observed positive being, constructive being, the difference there, the gap there, is that gap is kami. Um, because they are like, they are the same thing, but they are also their own antithesis or not really not really their own antithesis but what i'm trying to say is there's a gap right i'm sure you can understand this there's a gap between negation and creation there's a gap between the positive and the negative and yet somehow in the world they are the same thing because a thing negates everything which isn't itself and therefore is itself so like the therefore that word therefore is kami does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. I don't know why I'm saying does that make sense if this makes any sense to anyone who isn't me. This video doesn't have an ending, so I'm just going to do the door tier list as an ending. Okay, first up, we got revolving doors. Now, the two YouTube videos I saw of the door tier list, by the way, this is the TikTok door tier list challenge. Um, yeah, that's not TikTok. Damper doors list challenge. The, do the door, the spinning door, they put it on top. They said it's fun. No, they're wrong. Spinning doors are not that great. Um, they're not as great as they were saying they are. Although they are also not bad. And here's why. So spinning doors were invented because of skyscrapers. When you have a big building, air-conditioned building, air pressure inside, normal door. Oh, what? What's that? Oh, you can't fucking open it because of the air pressure difference creating a partial vacuum. Whoops. Whoops. Whoopsie. It's not really a partial vacuum. It's that you know what I'm trying to say. In big in New York, big skyscrapers that had air conditioning were cool. The cool air on the inside and the hot air on the outside makes it impossible to open a regular door. So they invented spinning doors that can work. That's a cool design. However, however, there's a few problems with them. First problem, the half of them, electric. Don't need electrics for a door. Doors already work without electrics. So that's just stupid. That's just waste of money and waste of power. Uh, bad for the environment. And plus, you can't even set your own speed. You know, with a typical analog door, I go through the door at my own pace. I go through the door however quick I want to go through the door. With these electrical ones... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm now fucking beholden to the door manufacturers or the door operators how fast they say I should move through the door. No, fuck you. I want to move through the door as fast as I want to move through the door. Maybe I want to take my time with that door. Maybe, I wanna, maybe I'm having a, a, a day where I'm thinking, I'm going to savor this. Oh, sorry, you can't. We've already got a set speed for you. And you may think, well, this door doesn't look electrical. This looks like one of the analog spinning doors. And even if you are correct about that, we're not even halfway through the list of problems. Firstly, the problem still applies because there's normally 50 other people using the same door at the same time. They all have their own speed. Again, terrible. But disregarding that, 
the worst possible thing you can ever experience. I don't know if you've ever experienced this. You ever tried to go into a busy building with one of these spinning doors and you've accidentally misjudged the size of the compartment or misjudged your speed and gone into a, a compartment with another person that is just too damn small with a stranger. It's the worst experience you can have. You're shuffling them. It's so bad. It's so, it's so bad. I don't know if anyone else has ever done this, but I've done this. Where, where it's like a door that's clearly made to have one person per segment, and I've accidentally misjudged it and tried to go for a two-person segment, only to be too close and personal with a stranger who definitely thinks I'm, who definitely gave me a weird look. And I'm thinking, oh, oh, whoops, that was a mistake. And now I'm trapped for the entire rotational cycle with this person. As a terrible, uncomfortable experience. Fun when you're a child, not good as an adult. We're putting them in D tier. We're putting them in D tier. Okay, next up, next up, next up. We've got the regular door, the regular household door. Now, I think these regular doors have some problems, but they also have some advantages. There's a reason they're so popular, right? But also, they're, because they're so popular, they're kind of mundane. I think this has to go in C tier, because it, it's one of the problems with it, one of these doors. Well, you know what? We'll get there. We'll get to the door problem, the, pop, the big pop, biggest problem in the door universe. Okay, next up, sliding doors. Now, sliding doors are great. Sliding doors go in A tier for me, and here's why. I used to have a sliding door, and it was fun, It because sliding doors are what they have in Star Trek, and Star Trek is a cool TV show, and there you come from the future, and in the future, everyone has sliding doors, therefore, sliding doors are cool. Secondly, they take up no space. When you open the door, you don't have to make sure there's a clear space in the, the way to open the door into they just simply slide out of the way they're space efficient they are much less bloated and therefore good uh, thirdly those are the only two things that oh i guess the third thing is that they have sliding doors in traditional japanese places and japan is where anime comes from and and being sliding doors are good next up the barn door i've never seen one of these in real life I've never into I didn't even know these existed until I saw this tier list. Um so I'm just going to I'm just going to have to put it in the question mark segment although looking at the design it seems pretty terrible. So maybe I just put it in F because it seems like a sort of door that no one would, but I I can't really judge it as I've never used it. So I'm going to put it in the question mark section because I've never I've never I've never seen one of these doors in real life. However, I don't know I've also never seen some of the other doors in real life, so maybe maybe this actually maybe I judge it based on a, a hypothetical conclusions, in which case um, it seems bad. So we're going to put it in F tier. It, it's it's kind of aesthetically pleasing and rustic, but um, I think on a practical level, it doesn't seem like a very good design at all. Okay, next up, next up, hidden um, ceiling doors. Firstly. Does this even count as a door? What are they called? Attic doors? Those sorts of things? Is this even really a door? Or is this like a, a trap door? Like in Minecraft, this would be... This is horizontal. It would be a trap door, not a regular door. The ones that the ladders come out of. You know the ones I'm talking about? I guess they're kind of neat. I've always actually kind of liked the way that the little mechanical thing that makes ladders come out of it. That's kind of neat. Um... Often covered in spiders, though, because it's, it's in the attic. A bit spooky. A bit impractical. We're going to have to end up putting this in C tier because it has equal amount of advantages and disadvantages. Okay, next up, a screen door. Screen doors are good because in the summer, you can have the door open but the screen door closed and then bugs can't get in, but air can get in sometimes. Um... That's really their only purpose. So they're like a regular door, but they have a slight advantage, which is that they let air in in the summer, which is good if you live in a hot 
climate. So we're going to put it in B tier, just slightly above C tier, because that's where the regular doors are. Okay, next up, dog flap door. Dog, dog, dog. Uh, next up is a secret door. Secret doors are really cool. You've got to love a secret bookshelf door or something like that. There's no denying that that's cool. That's also going in A-plus tier. I feel like that's obvious. Um, and then the final one, these weird fucking doors. You know the ones I'm... I don't know if you can even see it on the video. These fucking newly invented doors. Do you know the... Are you going to focus? Are you going to focus? No, we're not going to focus. There we go. we got to focus. Do you see the one? I, I, I gotta go, go on YouTube and see if I can find because you may not know the type of door I'm looking at. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on YouTube and look up cool door, and of course it's the first one that shows up. See, this is what the fuck I'm talking about. See this? This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, this. Do you see this? Do you see this? Shut the. F I don't want to see your face. I just want to see the door. I just want to see the door. I just want to see the door. There you go. Nope. Door. Come on. There we go. That's the door. Okay. Like, that's kind of sick, right? That's kind of fucking the coolest thing I've ever seen. Right? Like, kind of, low-key. However, I have some problems with it. Namely, my problems are this section and this section. This seems like the ultimate finger trap. This seems like I'm going to get my dick stuck in that at some point, and it's just going to be the worst thing possible. Like, come on. That's just a that's a health and safety hazard if I've ever seen one. Um... The other thing is, I feel like it takes quite a lot of effort to, like, open and close this. Like, look how many fucking joints this door has. Look how many... It has a two, two rotating joints, then one... Well, each of these have two hinges, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has eight hinges. All of these are going to need to keep oiled to make it... Otherwise, it's just going to be ridiculous to open... This yeah, this is a shit door. I'm sorry. It looks cool, but it's completely impractical. I I'm, I'm gonna put it I'm gonna have to put this mm, it might even have to go in F tier. Because it's not only bloated and over designed, but also dangerous. It's a, it's a, it's an ultimate example of function over form I mean form of blah, 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 form of a function. Like, it looks cool, but it's just worse in every way than a normal door. What practical advantages does it give you that a sliding door, for example, doesn't? There, there, are there nothing. Nothing at all. It's just bad. And so that's what we're doing. This is the door tier list. Uh, thanks for watching this video.